Heroin Survival Volume 2 Prologue, Part 1, Vagabond Arc Ash Crowned Princess of Slaughter 2, Chapter 3, Ash Crowned Assassin, Prologue. Dot. Depressing. It was a corridor with ornamented high ceiling. The sunlight was pouring from the wide window. The girl was being led by a maid through the corridor while sighing inside her heart. Several months had passed since Princess Elena's recuperation was over. This time it was a young lady of Margrave Dandel. Clara who headed to the capital to visit the palace. There were some problems that happened during Elena's recuperation and Dandel House almost got asked to take responsibility, but the royal family also didn't want to publicize the fact that an unmarried princess almost got kidnapped, and it was also a fact that the attempt was foiled before it succeeded, so the matter wasn't pursued any further through political adjustment with the royal family's side. Even so, although it couldn't be said that it was related with this case, a gap that was like an unseen crack was created between Clara and Elena. The two were really close as though they were biological sisters before this, but then Clara regained the memory of previous lives and learned that this world was the world that became the base of the Ottome game falling in love on the silver wings. She realized that she was a villainess who appeared in the game and that Elena was also a villainess like her. Because of that she was on her guard against Elena which was realized by the sharp Elena. As the result it was Elena who kept her at distance. Even so the greatest cause must be the maid who had the same pink hair color like the games. There was no proof that she was the heroine. But because there was just too much similarity. It caused Clara who had avoidance toward the heroine to react with rejection toward the maid. It was unknown whether that played a part or not, but after that the maid got sent to the territory of Baron Salis that was even more remote than Dandel. In the end the maid's whereabouts became unknown after she fell into the hand of the mysterious person that caused a ruckus there. Clara felt bad for the girl, but she felt relieved at the inside that the girl had vanished. That must be why she got careless. She had a chance to meet Elena before this where during the flow of the conversation she gave her condolence because Elena's favorite maid was died. Elena suddenly flew into a rage like a raging fire. It's impossible that Arya will renege on her promise with me. Since then it was like Elena was ignoring her. Clara got severely scolded by her mother because of that. She then got told to repair her relationship with the princess. But, this time Clara visited the palace not for that. Three girls among the fiancé candidates of the crown prince had been selected to be the official fiancés including Clara. She came to the capital in order for the fiancés to be introduced with each other. But, why did that introduction was depressing for her? Dot. The daughter of the Margrave house, Lady Clara Dandel has arrived. The heavy door was opened along with the voice of the butler who had guided Clara until here. As she stepped inside one of the palace's VIP guest room, Clara saw that it seemed she was the last one arriving. The other two fiancés were already inside and relaxing. A girl with faint silver hair was relaxing while drinking tea on the nearest table. She smiled gently and nodded at Clara when she noticed her. Clara knew about this girl because she had talked with her several times in events like Noble Party and the like. She was Patricia Fewdale, a daughter of Fewdale House. She was born from the second wife of Duke Fewdale. She was two years older than Clara and the Crown Prince but apparently the first wife didn't have a daughter of suitable age, so the Duke House squeezed her into the candidate list at the end. The three ladies who became the fiancés all had equal standing with each other. That structure wouldn't change until the Crown Prince graduated from the Magic Academy. Until that time the three would be evaluated in their disposition before they got their standing decided. But even if they couldn't become the main fiancé who would become the first queen later on, the remaining two were promised the position of the second queen and third queen, because of that it was required for the fiancés to be friendly with each other, but in the case of the current king, because he made a daughter of a Viscount house who wasn't even a candidate to be his first queen, the main fiancés only became the second queen. From there, it became possible that the other fiancés would only become concubine who wouldn't get involved with the country politic and even the children that they gave birth to would have the lowest rank in the order of succession. Because of that two fiancés of the previous king withdrew from their position. In such situation, there was no way the two queens could work together with each other. The king thought of how to repair that relationship, and as the result, it caused the number of king's children who currently held the right of succession to be few. If the crown prince fell in love with the heroine this time too, it would possibly lead to the same result. At that time Clara too would be condemned as a villainess so such things shouldn't matter to her but. She would become unable to do anything if she acted so pessimistically. She would have no problem getting along with the daughter of Duke Fudela's fellow fiancé. She was someone who didn't even show up in game. In the first place she was never fully given the education to become queen seeing that she was just a daughter of a second wife, so even her family shouldn't really expect her to become the first queen. But, the other fiancé e. The daughter of Leicester House, 
a count house that had produced head royal magician for generations, the girl who was a year young than Clara and the same age with the heroine possessed all six elements and vast mana in the game. By the end she would definitely become the greatest enemy standing in the heroine's way, so that apostrophe s dot dot the worst. The most wicked villainous, Carla Lester dot dot dot. Darkly wavy jet black hair that looked like it swallowed the sunlight, sickly white skin, eyes that were surrounded by black circles that made her eyes look like they sunk in. That girl last boss who was considered as the equal of the Demon King in the Ot Home game was staring back with a fixed gaze toward Clara with fiery purple eyes. Heroine Survival Volume 2 Chapter 1 The Magician's Surly Disciple Shijua Inside a gloomy forest dot dot under the light rain falling from the sky. A giant spider that made its nest in a rocky area that was untouched by rain threatened the enemy that appeared before itself. A giant spider had a large torso that reached a meter in size, and if the length of its legs was added, then its huge size could reach nearly three meters. Its ecology wasn't really different from a normal spider, but it had extremely developed muscle and tough shell in order to support its huge size. It sometimes even devoured goblin or kobold using its powerful sticky string and paralyzing poison. Gashan, a jar of unglazed pottery that was made thinly using daily life magic hard was thrown. The jar broke and its inside was splashed over the spider's nest. Shea, the giant spider was enraged by that and shot its sticky string, but that enemy ran around inside a delicate distance where it was possible to dodge, through several jars that had been prepared beforehand wetting the spider web even more. Finally the giant spider's legs slipped off the wet strings. That enemy knew from her knowledge. Originally living thing like spider or insect couldn't possibly grow this big. It could support that huge body on the ground only because it was a monster that strengthened its body and string using mana. Even so, it still felt unnatural that thin strings that were laid out midair could support that heavy body. That enemy noticed from investigating the spider's old lair. A normal spider's web used a non-sticky web for the spider to walk on it and sticky web to capture prey, but the all the strings that giant spider produced were sticky. That enemy observed the giant spider she discovered and realized that the giant spider didn't go out hunting when it was raining. The content of the jars was just water but the sticky strings that got splashed by that water would have its stickiness drastically reduced. Shijia, the giant spider finally became unable to support its giant body and fell from the web to the ground that was wet from the drizzle. The enemy didn't miss that chance and launched a strange throwing knife that had diamond-shaped blade attached on a small ring. It stabbed the giant spider's body. The giant spider swung around its legs threateningly when it realized it was attacked. But unlike a small spider, a giant spider's legs had heavy weight. They snapped to the wrong directions due to the falling impact. The enemy noticed that and attempted a close quarter combat. The giant spider also responded to that and fired its sticky strings, but the strings that were fired from the ground with its posture half broken flew to the wrong direction. Even so there was just one string that flew accurately at the enemy. It was blocked by the wet cloak the enemy wore before she quickly discarded it. Her pink hair that was covered in ash got wet by sweat and rain. It glittered like silver wings. https colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io01.jpg The enemy quickly leapt forward at the same time when she discarded her cloak. Without stopping she stabbed her black knife deeply into the giant spider's head. Shea. Even so the giant spider still bared its poisonous fangs toward the enemy even with its head stabbed. But the enemy calmly pulled out the knife while while gouging the wound on its way out while taking distance. Thrust. Battle skill was unleashed in that instant. The giant spider that possessed this area as its turf got its head cut off and its life dispersed. Dot dot phew, ooh, the battle was over. The girl sighed under the light rain to cool down her flushed body. The girl managed to defeat the giant spider just as planned. She needed time to prepare to fight this monster for the first time but she was able to defeat a rank 3 monster without any serious injury. It was a fine job. Dot dot water. She washed off the sticky web that was clinging on his cloak with water while tearing it away. He rolled the sticky string around a tree branch and put it inside a specialized bag that she carried. If this sticky string was processed with alchemy, it would become high quality glue that could be used when creating book for example. However what the girl needed was the spider's head and torso. The giant spider's fangs contain paralyzing poison. It was a dangerous substance that would render anyone unable to move for several minutes even if they only got a bit of it injected, but that poison would become usable after being processed by applying it on a weapon. The girl stuffed the giant spider's head into another bag. She then tied the spider's torso with straw rope, wrapped it with her wet cloak, and lifted it up. The spider's torso weighed more than 20 kilograms, 
but it didn't surpass the limit that she could carry if she used her body strengthening that had reached level 2. She traversed the familiar forest's undulating ground step by step for almost an hour before a small house made from mud with small field around it came into view inside the forest. She put down the giant spider's torso outside the entrance, washed her cloak with water from the well and dried it outside. Then she opened the door with her two bags. A faint medicinal smell entered the girl's nose as a young woman's voice called out to her. Dot. Surly disciple Aria, don't enter the house while being covered in mud. I'm back, Master Sergura. Dot. Aria, Alicia, race, human dash rank 2. Magic power, 158 160 25 up stamina, 92 105 25 up. Strength, 5, 6 endurance, 6, 7 agility. 7. 8 Dexterity. 7. Short Sword Skill Level 1 Martial Art Level 2 Throwing Level 2 1 Up Strength Control Level 1 Light Magic Level 2 1 Up New Darkness Magic Level 2 Non Elemental Magic Level 2 Daily Life Magic Times 6 Magic Power Control Level 2 Pressure Level 2 Stealth Level 2 1 Up Night Vision Level 2 1 Up Search Level 2 1 Up Poison Resistance Level 1 Simple Appraisal Overall Combat Strength 128 With Body Strengthening 144 30 up heroin survival volume 2 chapter 2 the forest magician looks like the spider doesn't manage to have a bite of you surly disciple did you deal with it properly i did it just as instructed i showed master the spider's head and sticky string that were stuffed into the bags master frowned a bit seeing that you crushed one of its eyes couldn't you defeat it more cleanly i'll do better next time master grinned when i answered like that obediently she then patted my head roughly well it's a good job no matter what if a rank 2 can hunt a rank 3 monster. We're going to process the torso first, so wash your dirty feet first before bringing it to the processing spot at the backyard, surly disciple. Roger, master. Master went to the back of the house with the two bags. I returned to the entrance and washed my dirty feet before lifting up the spider's torso. The season had changed and four months had passed since I tumbled into master's place. Now I'm eight years old and have grown a bit taller. Who is this person who I called master? Why am I living deep inside the forest like this? I need to go back to four months ago after that fight in order to explain it. I jumped into the strong current of the river's rising water in order to shake off Graves' pursuit. I used hard just moment before I entered the water, changing the dirty maid uniform to be an improvised life boy. But I still couldn't rest easy. I curled my body and dived deeply without resisting the strong current's flow. I continued suppressing my presence desperately until I gained some distance. My chance to survive was low. I managed to turn my uniform into life boy, but I lost direction of which was up or down inside this darkness of the night. The strong current toyed with my small body and mercilessly robbed me of my stamina. And then most likely there were monsters inside the water. There were few high ranked monsters that would approach the bank and attack people but the inside of the water must be teeming with low-ranked monster. I didn't know whether monster could do activity inside this violent current, but I would be helpless if I got attacked in my current state. I sharpened my mind and focused in using stealth. I used my search and night vision in full force to at least learn my direction. The night vision that used the reflection of magic particle was hard to use inside this violent current. The night vision that was looking using color was also incomprehensible because I was inside water where everything was blue colored. That was why I used both search and night vision to at least gaze inside the dark water the whole time. Then while I was in the verge of choking and put between the interstices of life and death, my vision suddenly opened and I managed to grasp my direction. My face broke out the water surface for just a moment and I sucked in air. If I became able to differentiate magic particles color even inside water then I should be able to see the living thing swimming in the water. I expanded my search's range and accuracy while keeping that in mind, felt a presence that felt like a snake approaching me from the fish swarm swimming at the bottom of the river, and immediately cut it down with battle technique, thrust. I could fight even inside water. I could also take a breath if I understood my direction. In that case the only problem left was my stamina to keep enduring until the river's flow slowed down. Fortunately the effect of the mana recovery potion was still remaining inside my body. I squeezed out light mana from the magic stone in my heart and suppressed my stamina's exhaustion and the decrease of my body temperature as much as possible. I wouldn't give up. I still couldn't die. There was a chance that Grave might harm Elena in the future. So I had to obtain the strength to surpass and defeat him without fail. Even while I rejuvenated my body with light magic particles, I used mana control to cover my body's surface with water magic particles and attempted to camouflage myself as much as possible. How much time had passed since I was carried by the water flow? When my mind turned hazy and my concentration was almost cut off, 
the river's flow finally turned gentler together with the sunrise. I cut another snake that attacked me and carried its corpse with me as I managed to get back on land after several hours staying in water. My body was freezing. My stamina and mana were also mostly exhausted. I would easily lose if monster or animal attacked me in this state. I dragged my powerless body and hid myself inside a thicket. I used stealth while single-mindedly waiting for my stamina and mana to recover. During that time, if I didn't circulate the little mana in my possession to strengthen my internal organs, I would surely die from cold. A few hours later, I used heal on myself using my slightly recovered mana, made fire, grilled the water snake's corpse, devoured the meat, and then focused myself completely on recovering my body. Dot. A whole day passed before I finally could move my battered body properly. My mana had recovered earlier than my stamina and I healed all the wounds on my body with cure. Dot dot I thought it was Sarah who told me to never leave any wound remaining on my body. I wondered if my life was targeted by the order of that organization or if it was just Grave's arbitrary decision. Either way, it didn't matter as long as Grave was in that organization. I chose the path of separation from them. I'd become strong and kill Grave. If anyone got in the way of that, I resolved myself to turn my blade toward them, even if it was Sarah or Viro. But, what should I do from now on? As long as that organization that was connected to the nobility existed, it felt like it would be dangerous to enter a large city. At best I could only stop by at a village or small city. Even so I should avoid other place than the countryside. The same with the adventurer guild, I couldn't use them until the heat on me died down, so it was necessary for me to grope for a new way of living. Right now I was near the border so perhaps going north from here and cross the border was a feasible choice. However, I still had a single prospect left. First I checked my condition before taking action. Perhaps because of my battle against grave and my struggle against death inside the water, my throwing, stealth, night vision, and search skills had leveled up to level 2. Throwing must have leveled up because of the fight versus the water spirit and because recently I had kept using only throwing. Putting aside stealth and search, Human should only be able to obtain night vision until level 1. It became level 2 light be the result of me combining the original method of night vision with my unique color sight. I almost got guild, but I should just consider it as good thing that it became a nourishment for me to grow. First, in order to hide myself and prepare, I used my leveled up stealth and search while running through the forest along the river. I headed toward the simple base that I previously created in the forest. When I arrived at the simple base in the forest, I discarded my maid uniform that was in tatters and washed off the remaining mud on my body. After that I changed into the tunic and trouser that I was using during my travel to here, and for the last I wrapped a shawl around my neck to hide my face. I had lost all of my weapons except the black knife, the other thin knife that I received from Sarah and the steel knife from Feld were in the simple base. I stored them on my waistband and my boots. I didn't have throwing knife, but if it was now that my throwing skill had become level 2, I should be able to manage somehow. With that thinking, I threw the steel knife as a test. It stabbed into the tree trunk without problem. The money that I was hiding, the salt and portable food, the dried medicinal grasses were put into the bag where I stuffed my clothes and I shouldered the bag. My destination was two days of walking through this forest from here. At the end I used hard and boiled water in a clay jar. I put salt into it and drank up the hot water to replenish the water and salt in my body. Then I started running soundlessly inside the forest that was starting to turn dark. Stealth, night vision, search then daily life magic. With them I wouldn't find too much difficulty even inside a forest. I also encountered goblin and wolf midway, but there was no high ranked monster that could discover me when I was hiding. Dot. Two days later dot dot at that location that I headed toward based on that woman's memory inside the knowledge, I discovered a single house that was made from wood and stone and mud. The garden had become slightly bigger compared to that woman's memory. The weeds were somewhat increasing but there was no mistake that this was the right place. I tried knocking the door lightly but there was no reply from inside. I dismantled the trap on the door using the information remaining in the knowledge and stepped inside. Dan. There was such sound as a strange shaped knife pierced the door. Dot dot who's there? Entering someone else's house without permission like this, you really don't know any manner aren't you brat? From the table located at the back of the house, a woman wearing a robe that looked like the picture book description of a magician toyed with a strange shaped knife while sending pressure at me. Dot dot strong. I can't accurately analyze her because her figure is hidden by the hood, but even just from the feeling of paralyzing pressure, she should be stronger than level 3. I come to return this. With a minimum movement so as to not provoke her, I showed the handwritten her book in my hand by waving it around. Seeing the book, the pressure that was placed on me vanished. In exchange that woman's magic teacher emitted a faint anger while scoffing. Ha, 
Are you that stupid disciple's acquaintance? How is that stupid disciple who stole money and potion from my place doing? Has she died already? I killed her. I answered her calmly with a dispassionate tone. The anger vanished for an instant from the woman and silence filled the room. Dot dot I see. It must be a very idiotic way to die. I'll give that book to you. It should fetch you some money if you sell it. Go home already. Dot. It seemed that she held a bit of feeling as a teacher toward a disciple even for that kind of woman. Originally I only planned to return this book but, right now I have a more important business with this woman. I want to learn sorcery from you. Dot dot I told you to go home right? Nothing good even will happen if you get involved with this kind of old hag living this far from human settlement and can only raise a stupid disciple. Her voice still sounded like the voice of a young woman, and yet she called herself an old hag. That woman knew really well the reason for that. Is that because you are a demon? Silence fell once more in that instant. The next moment, a killing intent that froze my body is thrown at me. Dot dot who told you that? Did that stupid disciple blab at you? I don't remember raising her to be that stupid though. Dot dot what do you think I should do to someone like you who know about that? If I didn't have any experience of feeling the killing intent of high-ranked person from Feld, Viro, and Grave. I would surely faint or lose my fighting spirit, but, I'm not scared although I'm trembling. I'm feeling threatened but there is no fear. I want to learn sorcery from you, dot 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 you, who are you? When I stared straight at that woman's teacher and said the same words again with the same dispassionate tone like before, the killing intent slackened and her atmosphere changed into a faint astonishment. It will be a long story. Various things happened after your disciple attacked me, when I hinted that I wasn't the aggressor but the victim. That woman's teacher let out a deep sigh and stood up from her chair. She seemed to accept my words. Come over here and tell me everything. I'll at least brew you some tea. That woman's teacher said that while taking off her hood. She looked like she is still in her thirty. Now I can see her lustrous skin that is black like obsidian. Her silver hair and long ears that stretched out from her hair. Dark Elf. It is said that their skin color came from selling their soul to the evil god of darkness. The Dark Elves who are living at the west coast of this continent are called as the evil race in this continent. Call me Sir Jura. What's your name? You can call me Arya. The large scale war was already over, but even now the evil race is still in the continuous state of dispute with the southwest countries that are centered around human race. Why is this woman who is a dark elf living in Claydale that is located at the southeast edge of the continent? Even that woman's knowledge contained no information about that. But, such thing doesn't matter for me. I only wanted even more knowledge and the strength to overturn fate, nothing else. Dot. I talked about how that woman attacked me in order to take over my body, then how her knowledge accidentally flowed into me from the magic stone that had been grafted with that woman's mind. To be honest, the thing about this art home game whatever isn't something that I myself really understand so I can't explain about it. But when I revealed how I feel, that I want to avoid following the odd fate of becoming a noble, Sergiura seemed like that she also has some ideas from the past about that woman's action. She nodded deeply and fell into thought before she leaned back on her chair while pointing her thumb at the passage behind her. For now, you can use the room back there. It was that stupid disciple's room and right now it's half turned into a storage but, you understand if it's you right? Dot dot. I tilted my head a bit to show that I don't understand. Sergiura grinned in response. I'm saying that I'll train you. I'll make you strong just as you want so prepare yourself. Surly Disciple. https colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io02.jpg. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 3. The Days of Draining. When I got outside from the entrance, the falling rain is stopping. I carry the giant spider's torso that is tied with straw rope on my shoulder, past the garden that is planted with few vegetables and various types of herbs and carried it until the processing place. Surly Disciple. Put that on the table. I'll only teach you the method, but you'll do it yourself, Roger, Master. First is the legs. I placed the giant spider's torso on the table, then I cut off the from their joints using the knife for dismantling. Master nodded after I cut off the first leg, then she also entrusted me to deal with the rest while she took out the giant spider's head from the bag. Then she began the work of taking out its eyeballs. It seems that the spider's eyeballs can become a powerful neurotoxin if it's allowed to ferment. But I haven't learned until that far so I'm not getting involved with that work. Master is a sorcerer, but she said that her true occupation is an alchemist. Until now I have been doing things like boiling medicinal herb or poisonous grass by imitating her. But I'm also learning the way to create potions bit by bit. Also I misunderstood but, it seems that there is no skill for alchemy. To be more precise, the skill of mana control is necessary because mana is used to refine the medicine. 
but I was told that the most important thing for alchemy is the amount of your knowledge and precision. By the way cooking is in the same category. It looks like there are skills for cutting ingredients and judging ingredients, but they are only useful to make it harder to fail in cooking. What decide the cooking's tastiness is the ingredients and the sense of the cook. Have you finished with the preparation? Yes. After I nodded. Master cut open a giant spider's stomach with a cleave and put in the chemical that had been prepared beforehand at the mucus that is the base for forming the string inside the body. This mucus will turn into string the moment it touched air, so from here it has to be processed quickly. Now, with that signal I made a small cut on my palm with my knife and dripped that blood into the spider's body. My blood and chemical reacted and the yellowish-white string base changed to red. After that I patiently stirred that mucus using a wooden stick. After a while the stick still became dyed dark red and a lump of fiber is finished. Dot dot well, good work. The result is also good because of the fresh ingredient. Master said that after she inspected the lump of fiber, I too sighed in relief hearing that. Other than my circumstance, I also told Master about my fighting style. Master's appearance is of someone at the middle of her thirty, but as a dark elf who is called as evil race. It seems that she has actually lived for more than 300 years. She hasn't told me the reason why a dark elf like her is living in this country like this, but Master said that not only she can do sorcery and alchemy, she can also fight as a scout. Even that strange shaped knife that had small ring with diamond shaped blade attached on top of it was something that Master used in the past. She is lending around 10 of them to me. Type-wise, it was something similar to the kunai in that woman's knowledge. But there was almost no part for holding with that knife. It seemed that the way to use it is as a hidden weapon by putting your finger through the ring part and hide the blade in your palm. But, as expected the field of combat that Master specialized in isn't close quarter combat, but sorcery. It seemed that she is level 4 in light and darkness, and she has obtained as far as level 5 in fire and wind. Furthermore Master is using magic instead of sorcery as though it's only natural. I thought that sorcery is widely used and magic is an old skill that has become obsolete, but according to Master, apparently anyone who research sorcery will one day arrive at magic. Most likely it's only one among several hundred sorcerers, but a magician definitely exists among that number. I'm glad I was able to learn that at this point of time. If I don't know, it might become a fatal blunder for me when I'm facing a magician. After being taught that much, I can't keep saying that I can't expose my hands to her. On the contrary, I should display all the weapons in my possession to her and beg for her teaching. My weapons that drew Master's interest were Illusion and Pendulum. She was especially interested with how I mixed blood with string and manipulated it with mana. She then said that I should carefully select it what kind of string to use. And so in the end I decided to use a string that is made from the material of Spider Monster. But, the best kind of material to use in that case is apparently Arachne. However such item rarely appear in the market. And so this time I ended up using the string of giant spider that is living around here as the material. As a material, giant spider's string is moderately good, but when processing monster string, Master taught me that the ingredient's freshness is more important than the monster's type. All the strings that giant spider shot out is sticky. But it could be processed to be a tough string without stickiness if a chemical is mixed with it while the string's base is still inside the spider's body. However although monster string is tough, that's because the monster's own mana is flowing inside it. It seems that mana will get in my way if I try to manipulate the string with my own mana. I'll be able to control that string to some degree if I mix my blood to that ingredient, but I'll need a cauldron worth of blood for that. The master thought up an idea. The idea is a brute force technique of mixing my blood into the monster mucus during the processing time so that the material will get familiarized with my mana. Furthermore that method will be difficult if it's not done within several hours of the monster's death. I spent more than one month to search for a giant spider and finally hunted it successfully. After that you will pound that fiber with a stick while unraveling the string bit by bit by yourself. If you also pour your mana into it during that time, the flow of the mana will become even better so don't slack off. Got it. Bring the string to me when you finish making it. I'll process it to be fire resistant with alchemy. Yes. Now then, let's eat first before that. Obviously it's the disciple's job to prepare meal, so prepare it quickly. Master liked to nag but I don't really hate it. On the contrary, she accepted suspicious people like that woman and me to become her disciple so I thought of her as a soft-hearted person instead. I don't believe other people, but dot dot I'm thinking that it's fine to also trust Master just like how I trust Elena. Dot. Clean. I cleaned up the processing area and began preparing the ingredients at the kitchen. During these four months, I too had finally learned the spells of light magic level 2, clean and treat. As expected as someone who is researching sorcery, Master knew a lot about sorcery vocabulary. I learned the vocabulary for light and dark element until level 3. 
Then I was given the task to compose the sorcery myself. Through that I finally became able to use the spells until level 2. A sorcery's composition is something like a sentence that is created from a completely unknown language with only its vocabulary and the meaning taught to me. The sentence's meaning will become completely different just from different ordering of the vocabulary. So in order to create a new sorcery, the only choices are to create a short sentence using few words, or spending a lot of time to diligently research. But this time I somehow managed because there was a base sentence. But it seemed that Master is dissatisfied that I'm just memorizing it. As an additional task, I was ordered to shorten the sentence if I understood the word's meaning. I still can only omit one or two words. I'm able to shorten the sentence only a little after one month working on it. As the result my light sorcery's level increased and changed into light magic. But that isn't caused solely by shortening the light sorcery spell. But also because I correctly understood the sentence's meaning. Unlike sorcery. My close quarter combat skills haven't increased in level except for throwing. I think it's not only because I have been using nothing but throwing, but also because my body growth is insufficient. Even though my body is growing from the increase of my mana capacity due to my sorcery related skills, I still haven't reached that phase yet. There are still various problems with my sorcery and close quarter combat. But right now I should prioritize preparing the ingredients rather than thinking that treat in this world. There isn't a way of thinking that sickness is caused by microbe that cannot be seen by naked eyes like in that woman's world, even so it's considered that dirt is producing unseen poison that become the cause of sickness. That knowledge was spread by the holy church several generations ago. Now even the commoners knew to wash the ingredients and in their body to prevent sickness. I don't only use clean but also treat to finish the preparation. Then with a stupidly huge kitchen knife that looked more like a hatchet. I began dismantling that ingredient dot dot the giant spider's leg. I split the outer skin that was like a shell and took out only the muscle part. I swung down the kitchen knife to cut it apart into bite-sized parts. Then I boiled them with a strong fire together with ginger and herb root. I added water several times and made it boiled over while adding even more herb after the smell had been reduced to some degree. After boiling it for around one hour, I replaced the broth, added medicinal herb alcohol with strong sweetness and chopped root vegetables. Boiled them all until they became soft, adjusted the taste with salt and pepper while at the end I added a bit of lard. With that the stew of spider meat is done. Dot dot surly disciple. We have deer meat right? Why are you using the spider? Master murmured with a heavy tone when she saw the finished stew. It's a waste not to use this. It's all the same as long as it's nutritious right? Perhaps I need to teach you about the common sensitivity of human from the beginning. That stupid disciple was really stupid but... She could at least make a decent meal. I cooked it properly based on the method in my knowledge but, the boiling wasn't enough. The precious protein source cannot be wasted. Master sighed deeply seeing me biting off the sinewy meat with force. Dot 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 you're going to practice light magic after we finish eating, so finish it quickly, Roger. Dot. Master taught me two new unique magic. It's a level 2 light magic and a level 3 dark magic. The dark magic is the sorcery that I thought up and Master reconstructed for me after she checked it. But as expected with my current skill and mana capacity, I still can't use level 3 dark magic. As for the light magic, I somehow managed with the learning itself with the application of dark magic, but this magic's usage is far more difficult than learning it. Let's go block this properly. Fire arrow. I got out to the garden and took my stance. Then master fired fire arrow at me without chanting. It's a level 1 sorcery. But fire sorcery has high attack power. It's even possible for it to kill instantly if it hits somewhere bad. But I'm not allowed to avoid this attack. I pointed my palm forward the instant the fire arrow was fired. I focused my mind while constructing the magic's composition. Shield. This magic converged light particles with the same principle like dark magic. It formed a shield of light with the shape of a round plank. Master said that this is an original magic that was taught to her from her teacher. This shield can block attack magic that the enemy fired. But. Its flaw is that it only produced a shield with the solidity of a glass because it used light particles to form the shield. It will break if it blocked sorcery with physical destructive power like earth or ice element. Pashi. Master scolded me the moment she saw that the shield that I created deflected her fire arrow. The mana that you put into it was too big. Feel the sorcery's capacity and adjust your strength. Another fire arrow is shot. I matched the shield's mana with it. This time the shield is annihilated with the sound of breaking glass. If you sense that the mana you put isn't enough. Parry the magic by diverting it, Roger. This sound of glass breaking isn't an actual sound but an auditory hallucination that only I heard. I could hear it is the proof that the mana I poured into the magic was insufficient. It's a level 2 magic, but theoretically it can defend any kind of sorcery depending on the amount of mana you put into it as long as it's not against physical type magic. But, 
with my current skill and mana, it can only defend against level 1 attack sorcery at best. Against level 2 attacking spell, not only the shield will get smashed, I'll also receive damage. If it's impossible to block then the only way left is to parry. In fact the shield has the actual physical defensive power of a glass, so if I try then perhaps I'll be able to parry something like a knife with this. But to do that I need the skill of parrying magic itself using shield or sword to do such feat. Focus the mind in constructing the magic. Ascertain the type of magic that the enemy fired and its amount of mana instantly. Put the appropriate amount of mana, and change your method of defense. Just doing one step of that process is already difficult, but here I have to do all them simultaneously. It's something next to impossible to do. Furthermore maintaining the shield after it's invoked also consumed mana so I need even more training to be able to use it skillfully in an instant. Even so if I can use this perfectly, it should become a formidable weapon in battle against sorcerer. Dot dot study it yourself later. Good grief, it's really tiring to keep up with a brat. Dot dot you alright? Master ended the training when my stamina and mana have decreased until below half. It's not because she is being considerate to me, but because master's stamina consumption rate is fast despite her high stamina value. A brat shouldn't be considerate with adult. Also. The sorcery on your hair is unraveling. You should remember its effective time with your bodily sense. Yes, the ash that is smeared on my hair in order to hide its conspicuous pink color isn't real ash, but illusion that was made with dark sorcery. It was just as Viro feared, the luster of my hair increased along with the increase of my mana. A normal ash can't hide my hair's shine anymore. When I consulted the master about that, she taught me several sorcery words and gave me the task of changing my hair color with illusion. I had completed the sorcery to change hair color more or less, but the words ordering apparently didn't form a proper sentence so its mana consumption was too big and the effective time became short. And so I gave up on changing my hair color and performed an illusion of directly showing ash using darkness particles. With that I succeeded in lengthening its effective time and suppressing my hair's luster. The result strayed from the task that master assigned on me. But she gave me a barely passing score because apparently that kind of improvisation is important for magic. Dot. The training ended and night came. Under the light of the magic lamp that is using magic stone to function, I pounded the spider string's fiber with a stick while unraveling it to turn the lump into string. Master is drinking a homemade medicinal herb alcohol in small sips while talking to me about that woman who attacked me. That stupid disciple first came here when she was 16 years old I think. She was already stupid right from the start. She suddenly came here one day and asked me to teach her sorcery because I have the role to help the heroin. When fighting the evil race, can you believe that? She asked that to me who is from the evil race you know, dot. So that woman was already like that from the past, dot dot or rather, from the very beginning huh? To be honest, I couldn't understand almost all of that stupid disciples nonsense. But, she was just too delusional while acting so full of confidence. That excessive stupidity made me pitied her. That was why I made her my disciple against my better judgment. Did she train seriously? She did it seriously. That was her only good point. But you see dot dot her fickleness was so horrible that in the end she was only half baked in everything. But, to think that stupid disciple managed to create such odd magic stone using the failed method of a past sorcerer to make a toad learn art. She might actually had real talent, frog. So she tried to steal other person's body using such vague method. But whether it was a coincidence or not, she managed to create a magic stone that was imprinted with her own mind based only on such vague information. So her talent dot dot no, her obsession must be out of the norm. However it was a misfortune for that woman that the directions of her efforts were all directed toward the wrong ways. Time is passing slowly inside this peaceful forest. There are things that I have to do. However my life with master Sergio here made me felt the warmth like a family that I hadn't felt since my parents died. I trained in sorcery and magic, learned alchemy, hunted monster, and trained my close quarter combat skill. One more month passed as I lived such life. Then, a mysterious visitor appeared at this house inside a forest that no ordinary people should know about. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 4 Visitor That day, the spider string was finally finished after I spent a month to process it. Its thickness is around 1 mm with a total length of 40 meters. Such amount might feel a lot, but a single pendulum will use around 8 meter of string. I have two pendulums. Taking that into consideration, I only have the spare for three times replacement, so I can't waste this string even for a little. When I didn't have string control skill, manipulating the string only gave me a 10% increase in accuracy at best but my accuracy had increased from obtaining the skill. The modifier was around 20% increase using string that had been familiarized with my blood, but with this monster string I should be able to obtain even greater accuracy. And then more importantly is the toughness of monster string. With just cotton thread, 
Grave could easily see through it and cut it no matter how much it had been strengthened with mana. Of course even this monster string can't block a blade, but it should be really difficult to cut this string when it fluttered in the air. Master taught me while I processed the monster string to be preserved from decay and be fire resistant. At the end I tied hidden throwing knife on the string in exchange of the blade that I lost. Then suddenly Master raised her face and turned her gaze toward the entrance. I also followed her gaze. I sense someone. Dot dot erase your presence surly disciple. For now you go hide at the back. I'll go meet this person. Roger dot dot Master. During these five months. No one had ever visited this place. But now a presence that seemed to be a human appeared. According to Master, she has an acquaintance peddler who showed up here only once a year to deliver items like salt or material, but it's still not the time yet for that. Furthermore this person outside managed to approach unnoticed until this house is surrounding even though both Master and me have searching skill of scout. Skill as a scout doesn't equal as being strong but dot dot this person isn't someone ordinary. I obeyed Master's words and entered the room at the back. There I raised my presence while quietly peeking outside from the door's gap. Dot. Dot dot come in. After Master Sir Jura called out to the other side of the door. It opened soundlessly. A tall man around thirty showed himself with the light outside behind him. The man has dark blonde hair and shallow smile that looked refreshing. He bowed his head with a gesture that looked like an actor. Long time no see, my beloved teacher. Are you well? Dot dot I never thought of you as my disciple. What are you here for, Dino? Master spoke coldly. The man she called Dino shrugged with an affected air. I have become the head of Northern Frontier District's Assassin Branch Guild. So I came here to give my greeting and also with a slightly troublesome job in this occasion. I'm thinking to ask for help from my beloved teacher Sir Jura. Are there so few decent people at your place that you need to use a recluse like me? There won't be any need for this if the opponent is normal, but this time the target is a skilled adventurer wannabe. The damage at our side will also be big if we try doing this job head on. And so I wish to make a request to you. Dot dot I already washed my hand from the assassination business you know. It seems that Dino is someone from Assassin Guild. What kind of relationship Master has with that kind of organization? Why is Dino who is the head of an Assassin Guild called Master as his teacher? The reply Master gave must be within his expectation. Dino lightly nodded with composure and spoke of words that sounded like something he has prepared beforehand. War Demon Sergura of Evil Race's army, Eastern Frontline. If it become known that you are still alive even now, then surely the Knight Order will mobilize in full. For someone of your level, a mere rank for adventurer party should pose no problem at all shouldn't it? Dot. Dino threatened Master with a smile. This is something that I never heard about but, from what Dino said, Master must have killed a lot of enemies in the battlefield a long time ago. I don't know the reason why Master left the Evil Race army. But, must likely master join the safest place that was the underworld in order to escape the evil races notice. Also dot dot there is one more person here correct? Looks like this person isn't that strange woman who lived here before but, you took another disciple didn't you? As a senior disciple, it's practically my duty to look after my junior. Dino. Dino even tried to drag someone uninvolved into this matter. Master released her killing intent in respond but his smile that is like a mask doesn't waver. Must likely Dino knew that Master can't afford to make the Assassin Guild her enemy. Master should be stronger strength-wise, but this person is the Guild's leader regardless of anything. Even if by some chance Master got violent here, he must have at least prepared something to escape beforehand. And then if he got away after Master has bared her fang, Assassins will be dispatched not only after Master but also me her disciple. The way of fighting of sorcerer and assassin is different. Their position would become reversed if the assassin managed to get away. No matter how overwhelming an individual could be, Master is already unable to continue fighting for long against an organization as an opponent. Knowing that, Master glared at Dino while gritting her teeth. Dot dot this is the last one. Do you understand? Yes, but of course. I will never ask for the unreasonable for my beloved teacher anymore. Then about the target's information. Dino sported a distorted smile as though he has obtained pleasure. He began to talk, but, he stopped the dot. I will listen to that talk. The two's eyes opened wide seeing a child me suddenly coming out of the room and interrupted the adult's talk. Surly disciple, back off from this. Master raised her voice because I disobeyed her words and got out of the room. However I too have no intention to back off here. I'm the one who is at my limit because my existence is being used as shield to threaten Master. I ignored Master's words and stepped forward. I placed the whole body of the man called Dino inside my field of vision while talking to Master. Master, you can't fight anymore right? You, Master became at a loss for words at what I said. Dino narrowed his eyes with interest at our conversation. Who? So you are my junior. Are you a male, or female? Is that important? If it's just a job of killing adventurer, 
then I should be more suited for it rather than making Master brute forcing it. I'll do the job in Master's place. What are you saying? Master instantly forgot that Dino is here after hearing my words. She pressed me. A brat shouldn't poke their nose at adults' talk. Do you understand what's going on? This man came here with a request to kill people dash. It's just a matter of probability. Master never said anything but must likely her body isn't in a state that can fight properly. Master is stronger than me or even Dino. But, Master can't fight for a long time. Even if Master succeed in defeating the target, as someone who can't openly enter inside Human City, the chance of her coming back alive is lower than if I'm the one fighting. That's my evaluation. If the opponent is a person, then I'll be more likely to survive rather than Master who is in this state. That's all there is to it. A brat like you is saying that you can do something like assassination? Rank 4 adventurer can't be compared with some random guy that you can find anywhere. Certainly a rank 2 like me defeating rank 4. Furthermore more than one of them will be difficult. Dino is trying to make use of Master also because assassin will have bad compatibility facing adventurers who are strong individually and also in a party where they will cover each other's weakness and won't let their guard down. The possibility is high that I'll have the table turned on me even if I go, but a child will be able to lure the opponent to let their guard down with their appearance, and a child also has their own way of fighting. Besides, I'll still become stronger. Dot. Master turned speechless from my words that I said as I met her gaze straight. Although I'm a kid, I have obtained quite the experience and slipped through bloodshed. Knowing that, although Master can't accept it emotionally, Rationally she understood that I'll have the higher chance to survive because if the opponent is human, I'll be more capable to make them let their guard down compared to her. And exactly because she knew me that she also knew that I'm still in the middle of growing. Can you kill a person? Dino who had been staying quiet until now while listening to our conversation looked at me with a gaze of doubt. However, I felt like I can see the muddy black joy that is slumbering at the depth of his eyes. Good dot dot he surely wouldn't doubt if he is this distorted. No problem. I won't die. I also won't let Master die. For that. I have resolved myself that I'll even lay my hand on unrelated people if it's necessary. All right. In that case, I shall entrust this job to you brother as a fellow pupil. However, do you mind if I have you kill someone else before that to obtain experience? Just as I thought, Dino easily agreed and looked at me with a smile of joy. I'll kill if it's my enemy. I won't hesitate to kill if someone became my enemy. But, will the Assassin Guild make me do a stupid job like killing an innocent citizen? When I sent Dino a gaze of scorn that expressed that. Dino noticed that meaning and made a shallow smile. Rest assured, we aren't homicidal maniac. We choose our target strictly. Besides, all the jobs that had been requested to my beloved teacher Sergio were targeting non-virtuous people. I shall ask you her favorite disciple to deal with the same trashes like her. I'll judge that myself. People who the Assassin Guild got requested to kill would either be an irredeemable trash or an extremely good person. I don't think that there can be an adventurer who is a virtuous person. But apparently Master 2 would never accept that kind of request from the start. Then, please take this. Come to the place that is written here before the appointed day. Well then, my beloved teacher Sir Jura, let's meet again at another chance. Dino handed a paper scrap that is used as memo to me. It's written with brief location and time. After that he said farewell to Master and returned unexpectedly easily. Dot. Dot. Dino's presence vanished completely and there are only the two of us in the living room now. The master looked at me with a conflicted expression. The way master talked is like a bad person, but she is actually a good and soft-natured person. She must be regretting of getting swept by the flow and didn't stop a child like me to get sent to such danger. Someone who doesn't know anything would think that I would definitely die if they thought normally. But I have no intention of dying. If it's impossible right now then I just need to get stronger. For that I decide that I'll even use the malice that Dino directed at me to get stronger. That's why there is no wavering in my heart. I simply stared back straight forwardly. Master sighed in resignation seeing that before vanishing into her own room. Dot. It would just trouble me even if we brought up the matter again at this point so I'm glad. I also returned to my own room and changed to the traveling attire that I wore previously. Then I stuffed the knives and new pendulums in my possession into my bag along with the poisons I had been creating. It will be evening soon, but I guess there is no need to easygoingly eat dinner before departing. In the first place I was just a rootless street urchin. I was always prepared to fight any time so it doesn't take me much time to prepare. I exited my room with my stuff. There I found Master who should be shutting herself inside her room waiting for me at the table. Surly disciple, talk with me for a bit. Got it. I sat on the table while keeping up my guard just in case. Master sighed deeply again seeing me like that and lined up several items on the table. I won't stop you at this point. You aren't a kid that needs to be protected. From here on Arya. I'll respect your will as a human. After saying that, 
Master started talking about herself. Master seemed to be born in a family that had quite the high standing even among the evil race. Her parents died in war against human race and Master became the evil race army's assassin in order to keep her young little sister alive. After that she continued to fight for dozens of years, learned powerful sorcery, and became feared by the human race and also the evil race. At that point, Master suddenly realized in a battlefield more than 50 years ago, that she had nothing. Even the faceless enemies had their own family and life. She remembered that she herself had family. From the Master learned the meaninglessness of her act that continued to kill enemies just because she was ordered without even understanding that. At that point when she had raised my achievements, she was able to entrust her little sister to a proper family. In order to not let her little sister follow the same way of living like her too, Master feigned her death in a battlefield and left the evil race army. It must be because Master had such past that she sympathized even towards suspicious people like that woman and me. But, although Master could escape from her meaningless fate, no race would accept her because she was an evil race, and so her only choice was to live in the underworld where might made right without regard of what kind of race they were. Assassin Guild is a part of the underworld. At that time, Dina was the son of the leader of the Northern Frontier District's branch and Master once trained him in sorcery. Listen well, because this is important. I became unable to fight for long not only because I had been fighting for a long time, it was because of this. Master poked at the area where her heart is located. Master has four mana elements. It's widely considered that the more elements someone has, the more outstanding they are. But looking at history, most of such heroes didn't live long. It wasn't because they got killed by someone because they became hero, but the heroes died because magic stone was formed in their heart. That was what Master said. There won't be any big problem if someone only has three elements. But, for great people who are overflowing with talent, the more elements they possessed, the bigger the magic stone would swell up and their body would get ruined and became unable to live until old age. Master who was four elements also became unable to fight for long anymore because she had forced herself in fighting too much. If I remember right, Elena also has four elements. She said that her body broke down because her mana was too powerful. But if Master's story is true, wasn't the true cause was that her undeveloped heart couldn't endure her enlarged magic stone? Perhaps human body goes through rapid growth from the increase of mana is an evolution in order to reduce the burden for the heart. That's what I'm thinking. If it's just four elements, then it feels like the owner can still live with respectable lifespan as long as they don't force themselves, but more than that and they will die quickly. But it seemed there is a magician lineage that even knowing that still force their children to have a lot of elements in order to display the excellence of their noble house. Similar to that, gift that is obtained from dungeon and the like is also a power that originally too much for human body. So apparently using such power excessively will reduce the lifespan drastically. Master said that even I have a chance to obtain such thing, I absolutely must not reach for it. Dot dot as expected, any story that sounds too good to be true must have something hidden behind it huh? Also, a parting gift. What Master gave me as a parting gift is the equipments that she used in the past. The equipments that were made from cloth had become mostly unusable in these 50 years. But her short boots and hand guard that were made using monster leather regained their luster just from being wiped with cloth. They're a bit too big for you but bear with it. They are made from the skin of a monster called Night Stalker so they have excellent sound absorption property. Also a leather of high ranked monster can gradually regenerate using water moisture and the wearer's mana even if they're damaged to some degree. Look, the opposite side of the boots is also regenerating right? That's not all. The boots also contain several gimmicks. I think they'll be useful for close quarter combats. Other than them there are also a hand guard only for the left hand that has magic steel inserted inside it, and a small crossbow that can be hidden on the body though its range is short. After that master handed me potions and deadly poisons from her stock along with a poach made from monster skin that she used in the past. Survive no matter what and find your own meaning of life, surly disciple. Yes dot dot master dot target. Confirmed. A young man closely observed the child who came out from the house. He was observing Sir Jura's hideout inside the forest from among the trees. This man was an observer from the Assassin Guild. His combat strength was low, only rank 2, but he had level 3 search skill and level 1 farsight skill. He was specialized in observing target. His task this time was to observe whether Sir Jura as well as her disciple would flee or not. Although even if Sir Jura escaped, as a dark elf she was unable to slip into human society. But this time it was her disciple who accepted the job. This man's main duty was to observe whether she would do anything strange or not. Dino didn't trust Sir Jura and her disciple right from the start. He didn't think that Sir Jura would oppose the Assassin Guild. But, he considered it was possible that she would secretly let her disciple escape. 
What? The figure of the child who came out of the house suddenly vanished. His level 3 search skill was faintly sensing her existence, but the man's monitoring could only display its true value when combined with his farsight skill, so his accuracy decreased when she vanished from his sight. Even so the man's search skill sensed that the child wasn't following the animal track that was heading to human settlement, but to his direction. Don't tell me, she noticed my presence here? The target must be on her guard due to Dino's visit but it should be difficult for a normal search skill to find him when he was hiding inside a dark forest from this much distance. The man held his breath and waited until the child's presence veered away from his location and he sensed her to be several dozen meters away from him. He felt relieved that it was just his imagination and sighed. It was at that moment he noticed the blade that headed toward him. Question mark. He quickly lifted up his face and dodged the blade. But, the next moment, the string that was attached to the blade he dodged entwined around his neck. He then got dragged behind and fell from the tree. Phew. The man fell head down and stretched out his arm to land on the ground. Just a moment before his hand touched the ground, his arm was kicked from behind and he landed on his head. Crack dot dot the sound of neck and bone breaking resounded in the man's brain. He fell face up and looked up to the sky with his neck still bending at the wrong angle. His eyes were reflecting a child looking down on him with a cold gaze. Why was she here? What was that presence that passed through him before? As the man who was heading toward his death pleaded for such questions to be answered with his eyes, a knife tore his neck without mercy. The child Aria confirmed his death. After that her voice leaked out chillingly into the darkness without any wavering in her expression. Dot. Now all of you are my enemy. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 5 The Town with a Chapel As I thought, Dino had left behind an observer here just as I predicted. Master can't go against the Assassin Guild. Part of it is because she can't fight continuously for long. But mostly it's because a dark elf like Master will find it very hard to obtain a safe place in this human country. Perhaps escaping is possible for her, but for that she will have to rely on the underworld society again. But I'm different. A human like me can escape to anywhere, or I can blend into a settlement somewhere and hide there. That was why Dino ordered his man to monitor this place. It wasn't to cut off the choice of escape for me and made me do the work, but to make me a hostage for tying down Master. Dino had never put his expectation on a child like me from the start. That was why. Dino easily accepted me to be Master's replacement because he was planning to tie me into the Assassin Guild as hostage against Master. Dino is harboring a distortion in his heart. I could see inside his eyes, the happiness he was feeling from using me to corner Master mentally. Although he is that distorted, at that time Dino was too understanding. Even I wouldn't believe that a child could do something like assassination even if that child is a disciple of a sorcerer. That was why I thought that Dino was definitely placing an observer here, and as I thought, there was one here. It was a pain to locate him because he seemed to be someone specialized in observing, but if I knew that someone was definitely there, it was possible to search him for someone like me who could see mana particles in color, just in case I used an illusion reimage shadow to make him let his guard down while approaching him with stealth, and used pendulum to finish him off. I expected that he wouldn't be a combatant, but I was lucky that I could finish him before he made a ruckus. I am hostile against the Assassin Guild. I still don't want Master to know about that. I only collected money from the man's corpse, bled the corpse to lighten its weight, then carried it into an area where wild animals lived and dumped it there. After that wolf or the like should clean it up, bones and all. Let's depart. I have spent five months in this forest and the early summer season now has become the end of autumn. I have become eight years old and my height has grown again. Now I have the appearance of an eleven years old child. The girth and weight of my body are still lacking but, at least my speed is approaching an adult. If it's now I should be able to fight an adult better than before. Not only my body, my hair has also grown really long, but I never cut my hair short other than when Master tidied up my hair for me. I braided my long hair and wrapped it around my neck so that it won't get in the way. Later dot dot Master. I don't know whether I'll be able to go back here again. There is also no guarantee that I'll be able to return. That's why, I had already finished my farewell with Master. Even so I only said those words at the end before shouldering my baggage and started running to the direction where I previously made my simple base. I'm not heading directly to human settlement. Five months has passed so I think the monitoring of the organization that Grave belonged to must have been relaxed, but it will be better if I don't let my guard down yet. But there is still just one thing left for me to do before I departed from this territory. It will be winter soon, but Claydale Kingdom that is located at the south won't become so cold that snow will fall. Even so now it have become the season where it will be harsh to not make fire when camping. But those who can use body strengthening won't fall sick even then. I ran through the forest for two days while using stealth and night vision and search, 
Then I arrived at the simple base in the forest that I'm feeling nostalgic about. More than half of it is almost buried under dry leaves, but it's better than remaking it from zero. I used a tree branch to sweep away the dried leaves, replaced the rotten sticks, and kindled bug repellent grass. During that time I headed to near the river and gathered clay before returning to the base and started making something. Dot. The next day, I walked inside the city at night while hiding my face with a shawl. I checked for a rumor with a peddler outside the city and confirmed that I properly made it in time. I'm glad that I made it in time before the season turned dry in earnest. Master had also guessed that there is still around half a year of time extension but, it's also possible that she guessed wrong. That thing should be unable to move in order to heal itself, even though its existence had been whittled until the very limit and tormented with extreme hunger that things should be struggling in its state of apparent death in order to live. But if the air began to dry, then even that effort would reach the limit. I have guesses of where it is right now based on my experience last time. It will attack again in order to regain its strength. I slipped into the darkness of night while using water at the waterway near Salis residence to pour water filled with mana into it. I can sense it detecting the mana and approached here rapidly. I'm here to settle things. Water spirit. Dot. Low ranked water spirit. Magic power. 135 503 overall combat strength 148 533 status madness weakened dot exclamation mark it's alive as i thought graves battle technique broke its shell that prevented its evaporation but spirit wouldn't perish that easily dot dot grave really acted unnecessarily the water spirit is possessing a corpse of stray dog that died from drowning the corpse is bloated up it controlled the dog corpse to attack me Perhaps because it doesn't have any spare strength to use magic! Exclamation mark. Hard. I used martial art to dodge the water spirit's attack and used a small slingshot to launch a sphere that had hard applied on it! Question mark. What I used this time is a ball made from clay with size around 2 cm. In the battle last time, I learned that I just needed to whittle down the water spirit's mana. There is no need to be fixated with weapon. I dodged the water spirit's attack while accurately firing the balls at the water spirit whittling down its existence its movement is slow it's weakening dot dot as i thought i wanted to finish the fight with my own hands at that time but i can't possibly leave this water spirit alone and exposed those siblings to danger besides i also have a reason for defeating it with my own hand i said that i'm not fixated with using weapon even so i made just one small clay knife my combat skills had grown drastically from real battle where i put my life on the line i had continued training during these five months and even defeated a giant spider but none of my skill leveled up however i'll have your life as my nourishment i put away the slingshot and held the clay knife in my right hand then i met the water spirit head on i had seen that technique several times with my eyes i saw when varo used it to defeat mountain bandit i directly tasted that attack when that female thief used it i poured mana in order to engrave that technique that is engraved in my eyes into my soul i don't falter against the water spirit that rushed me from the front and activated it believing that i definitely can use it double edge the level 2 battle skill of short sword skill, double edge activated and smashed the drowned corpse's fangs before piercing its forehead! Exclamation mark. The battle skill smashed the water spirit's defense, and the mana of hard that has earth element pierced its core. It raised a voiceless death rose and a lot of water overflowed from the drowned stray dog corpse. The water spirit's mana dispersed and at the end a glittering magic stone fell like a drop of tear. Dot. Aria, Alicia, Race, Human Dash Rank 2, Magic Power. 112 165 5 up stamina, 92 110 5 up, strength, 6, 7 1 up endurance, 6, 7 agility, 8, 10 1 up dexterity, 7, short sword skill level 2 1 up martial art level 2 throwing level 2 1 up strength control level 1, light magic level 2 darkness magic level 2 non elemental magic level 2, daily life magic times 6 magic power control level 2 pressure level 2, stealth level 2 night vision level 2 search level 2 poison resistance level 1, simple appraisal, overall combat strength, 143, with body strengthening, 162 15 up, dot, dot, with this can the water spirit return to the spirit world. I grasped the mysterious magic stone that the water spirit dropped while looking up to the night sky. I won this battle and obtained short sword skill level 2. Short sword art level 2 will be a necessity in the battles ahead. There was a need to obtain it without waiting for my body to grow, 
but the level wouldn't go up if I just faced ordinary opponent. That was exactly why I forcefully increased short sword skill to level 2 by cutting a special existence like a spirit and unleashing the battle skill with a desperate resolve. Originally it was difficult to obtain close quarter combat skill level 2 when you are less than 10 years old, but I finally got my hand on it. However, I can't keep basking in the achievement forever. Although there is a bit of distance, my use of mana and battle skill drew attention. I can hear voices coming from the direction of Salis house already. I immediately used stealth and hid myself in the darkness of night. As I turned my gaze just a little, I saw the siblings, Maria and Rodi peeking out anxiously from the terrace of Salis mansion's second floor. Dot. Although I thought that they should be okay, I'm glad that I can confirm it with my own eyes. When I decided to leave this place because all my worries here has been taken off, I could hear Odie's voice whispering Aria. I left the city of Baron Salis while it was still night and headed toward my destination. I did my best to not pass through the highway. I avoided traveling during the day as much as I can and traveled during the night. I went back the path that I passed on my way here half a year ago from Dental, and after ten days I arrived at the territory of Count Haydale. Count Haydale has two large cities. One of them is a city where Count Haydale's residence is located and the city is booming with commerce. The other city is booming with industry where a lot of craftsmen are living. The important facilities like Adventurer Guild and Merchant Guild are located at the city where the Count is living, but my business is with the other city where the craftsmen are living. This city straight is how it's neatly divided between the suit side where the craftsmen are living and the north side that is the industrial zone. The morning and evening are pretty lively with craftsmen all going and returning from work, but the city is unexpectedly filled with silence and tranquil during the noon. A part of it is due to the presence of the chapel located at the boundary between the residence district and industrial district. This chapel is the largest building even in the North Frontier district. That chapel is the only building that soared high in this city where there are only short buildings lined up. It's radiating a certain kind of conspicuousness. That chapel is none other than my destination. It can also be called as the headquarters of Northern Frontier District's branch assassin guild. Looked only from outside, it made me doubted whether this place is really related with the assassin guild but it matched the memo that Dino gave me and what Master told me. I had heard directly from Master about this place, but the memo from Dino doesn't tell me about the place directly, but the method to contact a guide. I'm hiding my face with Shul but I don't really use stealth inside the city, because using stealth in a situation where I don't know where the people are and what organization they belong to is like walking around while announcing your own identity. I spent a day looking around the city. Then the next day I visited the area that is selling food and daily life necessity. I tossed a silver coin at a beggar in a back alley there. Guide me. Dot dot until where? The beggar caught the silver coin that I threw really fast with one hand. He slightly raised his dirty eyebrow and replied with that word. Until the graveyard. Dot dot come. The beggar soundlessly stood up and walked ahead. I followed several steps behind him. This beggar is the assassin girl's guide. Most likely he isn't just a guide. But he also doubled as the lookout of this area. He has the combat strength around level 2. The leader told me about you. You're really just a kid huh? Dot dot you won't check? The feudal lord here won't catch us. Even if you are a spy from other territory, it will be you who get dragged to the execution stand if you do anything suspicious. I see. Dot dot so the feudal lord is also in cahoots. We're here. You go alone from here. It's the 6th of 88. That place is a huge underground cemetery that we reached by going down the stair beside the chapel. I walked inside the darkness that is only illuminated faintly by a cheap tallow lamp. I entered a small room that has 88 written on it and opened the sixth coffin. There I found a stair that continued to further underground. I went down from the through a cramped passage that felt suffocating until I found an open space at the end. When I stepped into there, a young woman wearing strange black dress turned toward me and grinned with crimson lips. I've been waiting. Dark Elf's Little Apprentice Heroine Survival Volume 2 Chapter 6 Assassin Guild What greeted me at the Assassin Guild underground the chapel is a girl in strange dress, sitting on a table that seemed to be created from scraped rock. She seemed to be at the middle or the late of her teenage years. Her skin is surprisingly white with a well-featured face. Her long black hair are arranged to look like a spring at both sides of her face. The black dress she is wearing has over-the-top decoration. It's really similar with what is called as goth lily in that woman's knowledge. You are that evil race's disciple right? It looks like you have quite the amount of mana, as to be expected from a sorcerer's disciple but, I wonder if you can kill with combat strength of that level. Though it seems like you can at least serve as a knife-throwing target. Just like how I'm observing this goth lily woman. She seemed to have analyzed me and insulted me with her crimson lips. Who, you senior, sweet rookie, be careful with the way you speak. I hate a brat who don't know their place, so I might kill you by accident you know? Dot. Dot. Goth lily woman race, human, magic power, 
115 120 stamina 173 177 overall combat strength 242 with body strengthening 297 dot she is strong despite her appearance with this value it feels like that she should at least have one element in sorcery but I assumed that her fighting style is that of a rank 3 light equipment warrior or weapon thrower. Normally it's rare for someone who isn't 20 years old yet to become rank 3, so if she has this much combat strength at this age, she must be very skilled. But, this is the guild's assassin. What's wrong, is the dark elf's disciple can't even give a greeting properly? You, it seems that your appearance is not that bad, so I don't mind to make you my pet if you're to my liking you know? The shape of the goth lily woman's grinning lips distorted. She kept sitting on the table as she pointed her well-polished black leather shoes toward me. Is the greeting that this woman meant refer to lick my shoes? Of course I don't plan to do anything like that, but after that I'll definitely get into conflict with this woman. Dot dot no, perhaps that's her intention from the start by provoking me like this, I think. I can't win against her if I fight her head on. Perhaps I'll be able to win if I used all of my tricks but, I don't want to expose my hands right now. Now then. What to do? This kind of person would only get even more carried away if I acted humbly. Even so I don't want to cause a problem in my first day just because of that. Era, what are you doing over there? A voice suddenly came at that timing. The goth lily woman turned around slightly toward that voice. I too turned my gaze toward that direction while still keeping my attention to the goth lily woman. Dot dot Dino, I'm not doing anything. Then, what are you doing in this place? I got nothing to do, so I thought of giving some pointers to the newcomer. That's all, Foo Foo. Is that so? The one who appeared was Dino who became the leader of this branch assassin guild. From their talk, this goth lily woman Kira seemed like she came here whimsically knowing of my my arrival in order to meddle with me. Apparently even though this is an assassin guild, not all its members are taciturn professional. Kira's expression kept changing frequently with whimsy before the pressure that she was radiating until now vanished. She then smiled sweetly. Impression-wise, this guild seemed similar with other guilds where carefree people gathered. But the people here seemed excessively strong-willed compared to adventurer. Dino slightly frowned at Kira's attitude. He might be thinking that it would be pointless even if he questioned her any further. He avoided pressing at Kira and turned his gaze toward me once again. Welcome, my fellow apprentice. The Assassin Guild welcomes you, Arya. Dino spoke a welcoming sentence with an exaggerated gesture like a stage actor. Then the job? Dot dot you are so stoic for a brother disciple of mine. Well. I'll have you gradually relax more as time passed. First I'll show you around this place. At this time there should be other guild members being present here too. You can just let me do that in your place instead Tilda. Kira cut in from the side with an ingratiating voice while smiling at me. But this woman, she had been directing faint killing intent that only I could feel several times since Dina turned his attention at me. Assassin dot dot or rather, she is more like a murderer for pleasure. Why is someone like this in the assassin guild? Could it be? This kind of murderer is more common here compared to professionally trained assassin. Dot dot annoying. Both of you, stop quarreling. Private quarrel is forbidden inside the guild. There will also be punishment if you draw out your weapon toward fellow member, so be careful both of you. Yes. It seemed that Dino noticed Kira's provocation. Kira only gave a casual reply when she was rebuked for that. She hopped down from the table as though she was only going for a stroll. Shoo. She came swinging with a knife that came out from her sleeve along with the momentum of her drop from the table. It's a playful strike that isn't even using body reinforcement. I dodged it with a minimal movement of averting my face. I didn't even have a drop of trust for Kira from the start. There is punishment meant that there are people who would do something like that. All of this woman's action and words can't be trusted, but she is reliable in a sense because of that. I believe that Kira would try something. I made several predictions based on the knowledge that something is coming. Kira's knife grazed my cheek slightly. At the same time I also left a shallow graze on Kira's cheek using my hidden weapon. So, she must not have expected that counterattack, as both of our blood scattered in the air. Kira leapt back to take distance from me. I kept her within my sight vigilantly while talking to Dino. You aren't going to claim that I'm in the wrong here right? Dot dot it can't be helped. As expected Dino can't give the order to not counterattack when getting attacked. He sighed in exasperation. My dot dot my face is scratched. Kira moaned in a low voice. Killing intent oozed out like thick mud from her whole body. This ash covered shitty brat. How dare you against this me? Kira brandished her knife in a blurring speed. Kira. But... Dino's angry yell stopped Kira who is about to attack me again. If you're still going to continue, then your opponent will be me you know. You have been making problematic actions since some time ago but, if you're going to cause another problem, you will become a purging target next. Dot dot su. Although she looked furious, 
as expected she is still not crazy enough to go against the assassin guild. Even so Kira doesn't give any reply to Dino's statement and kept glaring at me wordlessly with eyes that are filled with hatred. Dino sighed again seeing Kira like that and turned once more toward me. Aria, you also shouldn't answer the provocation of others. Well then. I'll give you a light tour of this guild before talking about the job. Got it. I wiped the wound on my cheek with my hand and started walking deeper into the guild following Dino who said that he will show me around. Behind me, Kira's hatred-filled gaze kept clinging at me until our figures vanished from view. Dot. In the end I caused a problem but dot dot that woman was really troublesome. I wondered if her face was really that important for her but, I guess just the fact that her important face was wounded by a kid like me must have injured her arrogant pride. It will be really troublesome if there is only that kind of people in this guild, but during the light tour, I almost saw nobody else. There isn't really anybody here. Please don't group this guild with Adventurer Guild or Thief Guild where even beginner can join easily. We're different from the hypocrite adventurer scout or the foolish thief who is driven by their greed. Dot dot surely the scout and thief will also say the same thing about the others. Based on the job characteristic of assassination, only people who have received special training can become Assassin Guild's member. Special technique, special ability, only people who can kill their fellow human can reach the gate of the Assassin Guild. Dino said, the number of adventurer in this Claydale kingdom is tens of thousands including the rookies. As for Thief Guild, if beggars and criminals in the slums are included then the number will be even greater than that. But, for Assassin Guild, it seemed that even in this whole country there is no more than several hundred of them due to the peculiarity of a job. The Assassin Guilds also have observers and cooperators in every city that are hired by money but, those people who never killed will never visit this guild. But, there is no accurate number of assassin. There are also freelancer killer out there, and there are also assassination squads that the nobles raised on their own. But, the biggest cause why their number can't be grasped accurately because there are some who hid themselves after finishing and surviving a job and some who died for real. According to Master, the number of branches of this country's assassin guild can be counted with two hands. It seems that this northern frontier district branch is also in charge of the assassination of the area including Dandel, but according to Dino. Even this branch doesn't even have a hundred of people who can be called members who will show up in here. Even in a guild with this few member, if you search then perhaps you will be able to find someone who can use Kira to treat Kira's face. But even I can't heal her wounded pride, nor do I have any intention to do such thing. Dot. There are few people here but, even so I'm feeling a few gazes from the darkness as I'm walking. I'm being watched. They are trying to evaluate me. Am I really useful? Can a kid do something like assassination? What is my weapon? How much is my combat strength? And then can they kill me? I'm feeling such gazes evaluation me. Is something the matter, oh brother disciple of mine? It's nothing. Dino's lips slightly smiled. Dot dot I already knew but, this person really has bad personality. Is that so? Then. Let's talk about the request that I originally was going to ask our beloved teacher to do. After going around for a lap, we arrived at a place that seemed like a break room with chairs in it. The Dino started talking about the job after we are seated. The assassination target is a party of four adventurer pretender, the mercenary of Twilight. I heard that they are a rank 4 party, but actually the rank 4 is only the leader while the remaining members are rank 3. Those guys are called as adventurer pretender because they aren't proper adventurer but recidivists of embezzlement. Adventurers sometimes received request to gather precious material or item. But these guys, in case the requested items has greater value than the request fee, they would claim that they failed the request before absconded with the items. But this time they tricked the wrong person. Their client this time is a noble. Apparently these guys collected the family heirloom that the noble requested before running off with it. I thought that the noble should just persecuted them as criminal and asked the adventurer guild to take care of this matter. But it seemed the collected item itself is a kind of item that will be bad if it become known by public. In respond, the noble client requested the assassin guild to recover the item as well as their assassination for revenge. First, just as I said at the beginning, I'll test you to see whether you have the capability to complete this request or not. I'll put my trust in you if you can assassinate them. But, if you fail or run away, I will ask Sir Jira to take responsibility in your place you know. What's the test? Dino threatened me slightly with words and pressure. Even so my expression is unchanging before that and I asked back dispassionately. Dino made a theatrical shrug seeing me like that. The client is a former adventurer. The assassination target is a trio of adventurers, but it has come to light that their actual profession isn't adventurer. They are members of Thief Guild. That former adventurer got attacked by those thieves in a certain place. He got into a trap and his lover who was his childhood friend got killed. In order to catch the culprits, he pleaded his case to the city guards, but due to the peculiarity of that place, they judged that there was not enough proof and the culprits weren't charged. The client, 
The former adventurer despaired toward the surface world and made a request toward the Assassin Guild even if he has to be burdened with great amount of debt. He wished for the death of those thieves. That place is a place that nobody will approach and it won't be strange for anyone to die there. Those thieves are a band of robbers who specialized in rookie hunting inside a dungeon. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 7 New Determination My first job from the Assassin Guild is the assassination of the rookie hunter thieves who disguise themselves as adventurers. Their party name is Fang of Blade. Before when Master is still working with the Assassin Guild, she had an agreement with a previous guild master that she wouldn't accept any request from bad people, so it seemed that similar type of job is also passed to me. But, Dino kept this agreement because he must dislike the effort that he would have to spend to erase me in case I failed to assassinate some innocent commoner, got caught, and leaked information. I would be captured if I failed in killing a commoner, I would be killed if I failed in killing bad people. As someone who is responsible for keeping the organization's secret, what Dina will choose is obvious. This is a test but you will be paid for it. I will give you ten times the reward if you safely accomplish the request. This is the advance payment. Dina flicked with his fingers several coins. I caught them from the air. Dot dot the advance payment is three golden coins. A single golden coin is the same with a month's salary of a youth who has just started working. A young couple with child can live for a month with two or three golden coins, so 30 golden coins are big money that is the same of a yearly earning of commoner, but that amount feels dubious when I consider the need to stake my life against three thieves for it. But, considering that the guild is taking half of the request fee, that means that the retired new adventurer must have taken a very large amount of debt in order to pay for this request. Also there are weapons at the right room at the back. They are things that were left behind by past members and collected equipments that still look usable. You can use them freely if you can make use of them. Roger. Dot. It seems that this underground assassin guild is formerly a coal mine that had been remodeled. Its size is quite vast. Also the chapel on top of it was apparently built for the people who died in mine accidents several hundred years ago. Currently it's also a bit popular as tourist attraction. The air of underground coal mine tended to stagnate. But I'm feeling a faint air current so there must be some vents at several locations here. I see almost no light like lamp inside here. Perhaps it's to prevent the air from stagnating but perhaps also because most of the members have night vision. Dot dot though I think there must be another reason. Dot dot light. When I arrived at the room where weapons are stored, I cast light to look around. Certainly there are weapons here, but this place is more a storehouse rather than an armory. Most of the weapons being kept here are covered in dust with rust on their blades. I guess this is the best that I can expect from the memento of dead assassins. There isn't anything decent here. Even so there are throwing knives and metal stick that functioned like whetstone here so I am taking them. Then a voice suddenly called out from the room's entrance. You, there ain't anything there except junks right? Are you the ash-covered rookie? Dot dot who? I am feeling a presence approaching. But, the presence is approaching really boldly, so I am waiting on the spot for it instead. Me? Call me Guy. Nice to meet you, ash-covered. Dot. Guy race, human. Magic power, 1995 stamina, 255 270. Overall combat strength, 251 with body strengthening, 294. Dot. A Cruzian youth with tan skin is there, giving me a friendly smile with his white teeth exposed. His age is around 20 I think. His combat strength isn't that much different from Kira, but if his combat strength is that high with this mana value, then his physical ability must be simply high instead of his battle continuation capability. In that case, although his combat strength itself isn't that high, his strength in real battle must be equal to a high class rank 3. Even so, guy dot dot ha. It's a name for male that is common even in this country, so although it feels like it's easy to remember, it also feel hard to remember. But more importantly, Ash Covered, you got into a quarrel with that Kira right? I could hear her voice even from here. So Kira's voice when she yelled Ash Covered shitty brat reached until here. It's not like I'm offended from being called Ash Covered dot dot or rather. It's possible that guy who introduced himself with a name that can be found anywhere, and perhaps even Dino and Kira are using a fake name instead of their real name. This man called Guy is giving me the impression of a decent person in this guild. I don't know whether he is actually decent for real or not, and it's impossible to call someone as decent when they are doing work like assassination, but putting aside whether he can be trusted or not. He is surely a better person than Kira. And, what is your business here guy? I was wondering what kind of fellow this rumored disciple of Sir Jura. Though I didn't expect that you would be this young. I think you've noticed already but, there are few decent people here. Especially the sage and Gaudo. 
don't come near them. After all many of our comrades until now had fallen victim to them. Sage. Guy told me various things when I unconsciously muttered that name that is obviously not a person's name. The sage is an old forest elf whose age is nearly 500 years old. He is a shaman who is researching curse. He had put curse on guild members before under the pretext of experimentation and drove a number of people to death without leaving behind proof. And as a forest elf, he apparently considered Master who is a capable dark elf sorcerer with hostility. There seems to be a possibility that he will harm me who am Master's disciple. Curse her. Master's lesson also contained that topic. It's a type of sorcery that can harm the target or restraining their action from afar by carrying out complex ritual. According to Master, she said that it's an impractical field that doesn't worth the effort for preparing it for the result. Dot dot I see. This is why Master is harboring such revulsion. I had also heard from Master that there is a shaman in the Assassin Guild. There is no way Master can like sorcery that specialized in inhumane method. Both of them must hated each other for their way of using sorcery. Other than that, Guy also told me about other people who I should be careful with in this guild. The Dwarf Battle Junkie, Bazooka Shaga, the assassin who used darkness sorcery, Shadow User Radar, misleading with lies and beautiful face, Kira the Delight, the old elf shaman. Sage. But the most troublesome person is the one whose name came out together with that sage, the condemned Gaudo. Dot dot can't you hear the faint growling voice even from here? Dot. I thought it's the sound from the vent holes, but, after being told that, certainly, it can also sound like a creature's growling. He isn't a human but beast. He doesn't have the intellect for proper assassination but, that guy only came out for purging a guild member. He, I see. Dot dot Kira easily backed off after being threatened with purging was because of such reason. Well, there won't be any problem as long as you don't get near. Dot dot come to think of it, have your job been decided already? Dot dot Rookie Hunter Thieves. Oh, uh, there is also that kind of job, isn't it? It's a troublesome job and yet the fee isn't that high, so such job often get put off. But dot dot you going to be okay? I'm not making fun of you, but. It's a difficult job for a kid's first mission right? I won't know unless I try. Well, I guess. Be careful so that you won't die right at your first job okay? In Assassin Guild anybody useful will be used even if it's a kid. After all even just a single nail can kill an adult as long as they let the guard down. But in this business, the highest mortality rate is at the first job so be careful out there. Dot dot got it. Guy left behind those encouraging words along with a friendly smile. He left the weapon storage with a light footstep while whistling. I don't really get him but, thanks to him I learned most of the general knowledge of this place. I don't know how accurate his information is but, I'll use it effectively as basic information. Dot. Dino has prepared my personal room in this guild. But right now I'm still not planning to use it. Even while I was conversing with Guy, the observing presence and the suspecting hostility toward me never ceased. Death will always coil around me just by staying here. Besides this underground base has a slightly unpleasant smell. I went out of the Assassin Guild that very day and departed to the destination without meeting anyone. Dot. Currently my target. The Thieves Fang of Blade are located one week east from the territory of Margrave Dandel. It seems they are using the city of Count Centre's territory that has a dungeon as their base. Dungeon huh? There is information about it in the knowledge, but it's my first time visiting one so I sorted the information inside my head. Originally the word dungeon meant underground prison on the underground of a castle, but in this world the word meant ruin or labyrinth that is haunted by monster. Being haunted by monster doesn't meant that a monster settled down in the dungeon but that a monster literally haunted and fused with the ruin. It's said that this monster is an ancient hermit crab that was transformed into monster by magic particles. Just like how a hermit crab put on shell to protect itself. The monster used cavern as its shell and invited living things into it so it can live by taking those living things mana and life force. In order to obtain mana and life force efficiently, the monster needed to make the living things inside it to fight and lose their life. For that apparently dungeon evolved until a stage where they even absorb knowledge from the residual thought of dead living thing, skillfully draw monster with low intelligence, and refined items that interested human using or and the like. And when it came to the three largest dungeons in this country, it's said that the residual thoughts of humans there had grown to become spirit that would bestow gift to those who reached its deepest level, but that kind of place is being managed by the country so it's difficult for thief to approach there. Because of that they generally used medium scale dungeon as hunting ground like this time. I visited a city and purchased the necessity before heading to the territory of Count Sentry. My route is going south for a bit from this territory of Count Haydaland and to Dandel territory. From there I'll head to the east and travel for a total of 10 days. I think I can arrive in around one week if I hurry but... I'll also train during the travel so this is my limit. My strength is still insufficient. I trained in the fundamental undermaster, 
but my experience so that it got reflected on my skills and status are not enough. In master and my schedule, I would train intensely in the basic until I turned 10 years old, and gradually made it become reflected in my status and skill after that, but then this unexpected situation arrived and I could only leave the forest while still weak. But I shall consider this as a good chance. By stumbling into master's place and putting myself under her protection, I became able to get a proper sleep for the first time since several years. But that was a spoiled attitude of a child. Without me noticing I was getting dependent on master's goodwill like a normal child. Master got a bad mouth, but she noticed my condition and put a child like me under her care. But, that was no good. I finally noticed that it was no good. During the five months of me getting spoiled by Mater, my growth was clearly slower compared to the first three months at the beginning when I couldn't even get a proper sleep. Let's put myself in an extreme situation once more, mind and body to retrain myself. In order for a mere child like me to oppose grave and protect my important people, I have to go through training so intense that eroded my mind and soul. Thanks to Master I also managed to patch up my knowledge that was full of hold to some degree. She also taught me the required technique and weapon. I'll save Master. I'll save Elena. I'll obtain strength so I don't need to run away from fate. To accomplish that, I have to continue going forward without stopping for even a step. Fortunately, the Assassin Guild is providing me with things that are scarce to find in that forest. Powerful enemies with capability to kill me. They can be used for my training. Dot. I rushed through the forest at night while suppressing my presence. I'm not going through road of stopping by at city. The forest at night is a training ground. There are animals and monsters with higher status than me here. I hid myself, searched for enemies' presence, ascertained them with my discernment, saw through the darkness, used all my physical abilities and dashed through the darkness polishing the techniques that my body learned. Gajur, a hobgoblin suddenly appeared. I encountered it right in front of me inside the dark forest. Both of us were surprised for an instant before I pushed down my emotion to the bottom of my heart before the hobgoblin can come to its sense. So, I let out my breath and struck the jaw of the hobgoblin with the palm of my glove that had magic steel inserted. I vanished from its field of vision. Even so the hobgoblin turned around. I slipped under its arm and put the string of the pendulum that I launched at the same time around its thick neck. Gar? I can't let it catch sight of me. I tightened the string around the hobgoblin's neck. The hobgoblin panicked from feeling the pain that it can't comprehend inside the darkness. After I circled behind it, I pulled the string while kicking the back of its head with the heel of my boots. Without pause I made my body floated and tightened the string with my whole body weight. Dot dot you dot dot gar. The hobgoblin suffocated and fell. Then I finished it off by stabbing the black knife from its ear until its brain. Dot. I don't hold any grudge at you. You were my enemy because of this encounter. That's all there is to it. Dot. Aria, Alicia, race, human dash rank 2. Magic power. 158 175 up stamina, 123 130 20 up, strength, 6, 7 endurance, 7, 8 1 up agility, 10, 12 2 up dexterity, 7, short sword skill level 2 martial art level 2 throwing level 2 string control level 2 1 up, light magic level 2 darkness magic level 2 non elemental magic level 2, daily life magic times 6 magic power control level 2 pressure level 2, stealth level 2 night vision level 2 search level 2 poison resistance level 1, simple appraisal, overall combat strength, 171, with body strengthening, 190 28 up, dot. Master taught me that combat skill doesn't grow from physical ability only. The precise location of blood veins and internal organs. What is the correct position and what kind of attack to neutralize the enemy? If you understand those, it will become easy whether to kill or let your opponent alive. Skill doesn't grow only from technique, but also from knowledge. That was the reason the image me could obtain skill and became able to fight in just several months. While I'm moving, I continued to train my mind and body the whole time. Ten days later. I arrived at the territory of Count Sentra that is located at the east side along the coast. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 8 Rookie Hunter dot dot Welcome Kaling dot dot The bell that was attached on the door rang. The middle-aged shopkeeper frowned slightly at the appearance of the entering customer. This place was an apothecary that was ran by an alchemist. Although this place was called an apothecary, it didn't only sell medicine to treat humans' wound and sickness. It also sold herbicide or poison to kill mouse and it also sold things like alchemy ingredient although not much. That customer was wearing a worn out cloak that covered their whole body. The hood was also covering their face. But some customers occasionally also came here to buy dangerous medicine or substance, so the shopkeeper thought that this customer also that kind of customer. No matter how suspicious the customer was, the shopkeeper couldn't afford to be picky, especially the type of customer that came with their face hidden. 
In some case they might be a servant of a noble who intentionally wore dirty outfit to disguise themselves, so the shopkeeper was scared that carelessly driving them away would cause retaliation to him later. Are you selling monster material here? Well, I do but dot dot I am not selling anything other than alchemy material you know. If you want something rare, go to the adventurer guild or merchant guild. From the voice the customer might be a young girl. She shook her head at the shopkeeper's words and ordered materials that weren't rare in this city and materials that were rare but still sold even in this shop. You look young. But are you an alchemist? That's a really unusual assortment of item you are asking for. If you don't mind, can you tell me what are you going to use them for? The shopkeeper took out the ordered items from the back of the shop before he asked due to his curiosity as a fellow alchemist. The customer who was walking toward the door after paying the cost stopped for a bit and turned around a little. They are just for exterminating bugs. The territory of Count Centra is a main road on the route that connected the capital until the neighboring country Gordor Duke Dam. The territory's capital is very thriving although not at the level of Dandel. Is it because it's near the sea? There is a faint strange smell from the city. I realize that it's the smell of salt from my knowledge. My traveling outfit and cloak has become very dirty due to my training on the way here. Normally I'd infiltrate the city from the slum district or some other spot, but this time I'll also stop by at the Adventurer Guild so I cleaned my body with clean and entered the city from the front gate by paying a silver coin. I guess I'll need to change my clothes too before long. Even after cleaning my attire, the city guard at the gate still looked at me funny. That's just how tattered my outfit has become. Either way I need to dress up a bit better in order to lay the trap. First I pulled down my cloak's hood low to cover my eyes and looked around at the condition of the city. Most of the city's main facilities are located along the main street. And then the adventurer guild will be at the side of the merchant guild no matter the city. My targets are thieves who hunted the rookies. Most of their crimes are carried out inside the dungeon, so I need to obtain the dungeon's information from the adventurer guild. But there is something that I have to do first before that. To kill time until then, I buy things like soup and the like from food stands while also talking to the stall owners. From the M I learned that there is only one dungeon near here and bug monsters are living there. Even if you call it a dungeon, there is nothing there that can become a local specialty here from hunting bugs like that. There isn't anything good there? No. Not completely. I heard you can harvest medicine ingredient from the bug's organs. It's disgusting but it made medicine's price to be cheaper so that helps. It can't be considered as local specialty though. He, in this world, living thing that is strengthened by magic particle won't get sick easily. Even so the commoners can still get sick quite easily, but most sickness generally is treated by drinking nutritious tonic and sleep. That means. Such ingredients can be harvested from the insects of this dungeon. In that case perhaps there are usable insect materials here. I asked at a shop of an alchemist that can be trusted and headed toward that direction too. Dot. After buying alchemy materials, I slipped into the city at night and waited until it became dark. I arrived at my destination just before the first bell rang to signal that it's midnight. It's the biggest church in this city. The place is opened for the whole day. I entered inside the empty confession room and sat on a wooden bench. There I waited for the time. The clock tower's bell rang once. I confirmed the faint sound of a magic tool's key being unlocked. I crouched and lifted the seat that shouldn't be able to open. I collected the paper bundle inside and left behind several silver coins as the information fee. Then I returned the seat back to its original position before leaving the church immediately. This is a big city so there are still people even at this kind of time, like in the bar. But there is nobody that can be seen around this area where the church is located. I stared at the street that should be empty and let out a small voice. Tilda. I erased my presence and entered the slum. I found an abandoned building and read the document that I collected in there. This document contained the target's information that was investigated by the contacts here. The last date of the document is two days ago. If it's just that long then this information can be considered as the latest. The rookie hunting thieves. The Fang of Blade had downed themselves in the Adventurer Guild here from the dungeon that is located two days from here. Their cycle of work is rotating around a week where they would dive into the dungeon for three days and resting for three days, including the travel time. They would search for their next prey during that break time. The requirements of their prey are low-ranked adventurer who doesn't number more than two. They would steal money and equipment from the nicely dressed targets while those with nice appearance would get kidnapped and sold as slave with the intermediary of the guild. However, even if they are unable to find any prey that fulfill their requirements, they won't overdo themselves by targeting any random person. In that case they will do the activity of normal adventurer so that the people around them won't suspect them as thief. Even so because of this time's client accusation toward them, their evaluation in the adventurer guild has worsened. Even so there is no definite proof so they don't get punished. Rather some of the rowdy adventurers even sympathized with them thinking that they got suspected by the wrong accusation of cocky beginners who took on more than they could chew. That's what written in the document. Because of the adventurer guild suspecting them, 
there is a chance that the Fang of Blade will change their base of operation, so it's desirable if they can be taken care of quickly. Dot, 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 fire. I burned the paper before leaving the abandoned building. I have decided what I'm going to do to some degree. The rest depended on whether I have the strength to carry it out or not. I also found one other thing that I have to deal with but, in order to settle things including that, I sneaked into the shed of a private house and began making something. Dot. The next day, after I cleaned my body with clean, I visited a second-hand clothes shop that seemed to be good that I found during my stroll around the city yesterday. I entered inside as soon as it opened. Welcome. A young woman who seemed to be the shopkeeper froze seeing me entering the shop as soon as it opened while wearing slightly dirty cloak to hide my appearance. Dot dot uh. This is clothes shop for a girl you know, it's alright, I'm a girl more or less. When I pulled down my hood and showed my face to the slightly bewildered shopkeeper, she blinked repeatedly. I've erased the illusionary ash on my hair. It seemed that in this state I at least looked like a girl and the dubious looking shopkeeper finally smiled again. Are you a traveler? I thought you were a street urchin because you're dressed like that. If you want the same type of outfit like what you're wearing right now, then we also have clothes for boy here although we don't have that many of them. Look around as you please dot dot or oh, that's what I want to say. However there is still no other customer here so I'll help you look. After realizing that I'm a child, the shopkeeper changed her speaking tone to match by speaking informally. I myself am not really knowledgeable about clothes so her offer really helps me, but it's not like I want to buy kitty clothes. Do you have clothes that can make me look feminine? My purpose for buying clothes is to dress as woman. Describing it like that sounds strange because I'm woman by nature, but this time I'm planning to especially dress up femininely. There are two types of second-hand clothes shop. Shop that resell cheap clothes worn by commoner, and shop that sell moderately good second-hand items from wealthy merchant or low-ranked noble. This shop is the latter and they have quite a lot of merchandises. With the shopkeeper's recommendation, I chose a stylish light green dress that is easy to move in. To match that I also chose high-laced cloth boots and a new cloak. Although the shopkeeper grimaced at the tattered clothes that I'm wearing to here, she allowed me to change inside the shop. When I came out of the dressing room, the color of the shopkeeper's eyes changed. Dot dot can I? Fiddle with your hair for a bit, I guess. Do you also want to try some makeup? Just a little is fine. Dot. The female shopkeeper is breathing roughly for some reason. I got handled a lot by her and it took an hour after that when I finished with my shopping. I'm feeling slightly tired, but for some reason the shopkeeper is smiling in satisfaction toward me. Dot. When I entered the Adventurer Guild after finishing all of my preparations, the slightly noisy atmosphere quiet down and gazes of the type that I also felt on my way here are directed toward me. The majority of this city's adventurers will either hunt monsters outside the city or head to the dungeon in order to obtain magic stones and materials. Even so the guild is also providing manual labor work at the harbor that pays quite well and bodyguard job, so many adventurers showed up at the guild in the morning to check the request. But, only adventurers with good reputation can accept the profitable job. The low-ranked adventurers accepted dangerous jobs in order to obtain reputation and died. The Adventurer Guild also doubled as a meeting place for adventurers who lost their comrade from such event or those who wanted to search for member to form a new party. Previously, when I entered the guild together with Viro, the atmosphere felt like some adventurers would pick a fight with me if only Viro wasn't at my side but this time the type of gaze toward me indifferent from that time. Welcome to the Adventurer Guild. Do you want to make a request? I want to register as Adventurer. I'm a level 1 light sorcerer. The receptionist's face slightly twitched at my statement. The sound of commotion is spreading through the guild. One of my reasons to visit the Adventurer Guild is for fake status and name. There is a risk of Graves' organization looking for my previously registered Adventurer name. They should be thinking that I'm dead but, it's better for me to keep vigilant and I can use the false name and guild card from here as disposable thing. And then the other reason is to lay the trap. The reason the receptionist's face twitched because the number of sorcerer among commoner is few and there is a risk of young light magician to be treated as disposable by other adventurers, but that's exactly why this will become a bait for my trap. Please come over here. The receptionist said that quickly with hard tone and grabbed my arm to drag me to the back. As expected. She lectured me for announcing my ability inside the guild and the danger that would follow me because of that, but it's already too late. I understand. Then please give me the examination. Why you? I understand that she is worried for me but, I also have a reason why I can't withdraw here. When I asked for the examination with a conduct that I learned from my maid training, the receptionist looked like she wanted to scold me again but, as a guild staff she can't refuse my request. After that I used Cura Healer Guild Staff's Waste Pain and I became Rank 1 Light Sorcerer Rania without incident. From the start even Aria is a fake name but, 
I won't be troubled no matter how many fake identity I have. For adventurer who want to become famous, registering multiple times is simply pointless but, using fake name is only natural for people of the underworld. Dot. Then please wait for around 9 hours. The slightly displeased receptionist told me that, to wait until the tag that will serve as my guild identification to be finished, I'm looking at the wall where there are only heavy manual labor works like road building and the like remaining. As I'm doing that, there are scrutinizing gazes that felt like they are looking all over me being directed at me. Right now I'm wearing light green dress and high laced boots with a thin cloak like a mantle covering me. My hair is down and I'm holding an old staff that is used by sorcerer. There is a knife hanging on my waist and a leather bag hanging on my shoulder. With that the appearance of a beginner magician who is ignorant of the world is completed. My height has grown even more and I have the appearance of an 11 year old child. Thanks to the shopkeeper of the second hand clothes shop working hard for some reason. She gave me her seal of approval that I looked like a 12 years old or a 13 years old who is at the small side. I used one golden coin for this disguise but, I'll be able to use it again for later, and the shopkeeper also gave me a large discount so let's just consider it as a gain for me. Dot. There are these persistent gazes on me, but there is no sign of anyone approaching me. I tried to have the appearance of a young lady of a low ranked noble but, perhaps I should dress more roughly than this. But. I already registered with the guild and gathered this much attention, so I can't dress another way at this point, so perhaps I'll need to wait for several days. Dot dot as I'm preparing myself for such possibility, a hesitant voice called out to me from behind, H hey, you, are you by any chance alone? Dot dot yes, when I turned around toward the voice, I saw that it's an adult dot dot no, a young man who might be younger than that, he is perhaps around 14 or 15 and accompanied with other people of his age. We started being adventurous since this summer, but, all of us are vanguard and none of us can do any sorcery, why yep, if you want, how about joining us, dot, dot dot hey miss, my deepest apologies, they aren't my target, I faced them fully and lowered my head to apologize so as to not cause any offense dot dot but, there is no response, I wondered what's the matter and lifted my head, there the young men are frozen with red faces, dot, and no, that's, really, just what's the matter with them? When I tilted my head quizzically, the young man who called out to me first started to look flustered and gathered the attention from other adventurers too. Dot dot did I anger him perhaps? Perhaps I immersed myself in the young lady role too much and acted too politely? But there, oi brats, you are bothering the lady the, the one who said that and rebuked the young men are three adventurers who look to be in the middle of their twenty. One of them put himself between me and the young me. The other two grabbed the shoulders of the young men and dragged them away from me. The first young man looked overwhelmed facing the adventurers who clearly looked stronger than his group. Even so he doesn't back down. W we are, proper adventurers. If you are adventurer, don't try making that kind of strange pass with the girls. Go outside and hunt some goblins. One of the adventurers lightly glared at those young men and drove them away. They went away reluctantly while looking back several times, even so they went out of the guild quietly. After seeing them off, the short-haired man who spoke up first made a reassuring smile and spoke to me with a tone of consideration. Miss, that was a disaster huh? It's dangerous for a pretty girl like you to be alone. But, it's fine now. We have chased them out. Not all adventurers are like them. Those guys are also still young so forgive them. The remaining two also smiled really nicely and used nice sounding words even while psychologically leading me to think that being alone is bad. Dot dot thank you for the help. I quietly bowed my head and showed them the business smile that I learned from Sarah. I'm not really good at making this smile, but it seemed the men interpreted my awkwardness positively as me still feeling scared. Are you nervous? It's alright, there is no need for that anymore. But, those guys, they looked like they were really fixated with this young miss. Is she going to be okay? Yeah. There might ambush her again outside. One of them spoke reassuringly at me even while the other two were talking worrying things as though they were having idle conversation. Is that so? I slightly frowned to look as though it will be troubling if what they are saying is right. Then the first man made a refreshing smile and gave me a suggestion with a line that sounded like something that he has prepared beforehand. Then if you like, how about coming with us for today and tomorrow at least? We don't mind even if it's only until you can be really sure that you're safe. A a nice idea. That one, we ourselves won't need to worry to death in that case. The three smiled cheerfully as they said things that are convenient only for me. I pretended to think for a bit before nodding a bit with an apologetic look. Dot dot if that won't be a bother then, can I ask that from you misters? A short haired man with one handed sword and a shield. A red haired man with a hand axe and a bow. A man with shaven head carrying two short swords. Their features matched with what was written in the document. Dot dot I hit the jackpot this time. 
the three people that made up the adventurer party Fang of Blade had become famous in the adventurer guild. Of course not in a good way. All of the young adventurers who got involved with them became missing in the dungeon. Death was always right nearby inside the dungeon, and there were many beginners who lost their life there due to carelessness, so the adventurer guild also couldn't question the matter too much. But a young man who once partied with another young woman accused the Fang of Blade of attacking them in the dungeon, so the situation changed. Even so no corpse remained in the dungeon after the monsters got to it. With no proof, they couldn't be charged but, in exchange now the Adventurer Guild was suspecting them. To think that man could reach the Adventurer Guild with that injury, things were going too well for us until now. We should just kill them and take only the money without getting too greedy thinking to sell the woman. In the end that woman also died to allow that man to escape. Guess it's time for us to leave this city soon. We're going to get purged by the Thief Guild if we stand out too much yeah. The three were thieves who belonged to the Thief Guild despite being adventurers. They weren't being undercover or anything. Their membership was legit in both guilds but their main profession was thief. But, their thief type skill was meager and so they were just low ranked thieves. That was why they weren't doing robbery in the city where skill was necessary, but got the idea of hunting rookies in the dungeon to get money. Thief generally didn't kill ordinary people because the thief guild disliked when a case got too big. Even so it was a grey zone when the crime scene was in a dungeon and the victim was adventurer. But this time the Thief Guild was also keeping its eyes on them because they got suspected in their crime. It will be better if we move to somewhere else but, do we have enough money to keep us going until things get back on track? You spent too much money, are you still paying the guild's share? Either way, it will be hard unless if we earn a bit more. To change location and start doing work from beginning again, it would be necessary to pay money to the branch of the Thief Guild in that area. Such expense would be painful for low ranked thieves like them. In order to earn the required money. They decided to do several more jobs here but, a different problem came up with that choice. The number of jobs they could do in this place was only one or two more times at best. The amount of money they could get from killing rookie adventurer didn't amount to much. In order to save enough money, the best way would be to kidnap girl but, their skill was insufficient to capture someone without harming them. Until now they didn't really care even if the amount of money they got from selling to the guild was lowered because their kidnapping victim was injured to some degree. But if they wanted to earn some amount of money in short time, they couldn't give injury that would leave scar to their victim. But, their combat strength was only around rank 2. If an adventurer resisted them seriously even if she was a woman, it was possibly that they would have to kill the woman like before. But, one night while they were worrying about that, a thief called out to them as though he knew about their difficulty. You guys, do you want some sleeping drug? It was a Cruzian man with tanned skin. They never saw him around here before but, that man showed them the symbol of Thief Guild. It seemed that he didn't have enough money for the offering to this area's guild branch, so he asked them if they wanted to buy his drug. He would sell it for cheap. The cost of three silver coins was painful to their wallet but, it was far cheaper compared to the deduction to their payment for the doctor's bill to treat their victim's wound that would leave behind scar. They ascertained the effect just in case, and then they thought that they were going to use this drug. Then they would have to pick a prey that could definitely sell for a high price. The next day they visited the Adventurer Guild for the sake of looking around and found a girl there. Dot. That girl was Rookie Sorcerer who came to register with the Adventurer Guild. Furthermore she was a light sorcerer who was rare to find outside the Holy Church and she also had nice appearance. She instantly gathered the attention of the adventurers inside the guild. No. She was already naturally drawing people's eyes from when she entered the guild. She was still too young to be called a woman but, even so she was a girl with atmosphere that caused people to follow her with their eyes. It was understandable for those young men to be captivated by her. Most likely this girl was from a well-to-do family. Although she was wearing a cloak and carrying an old staff, they could feel her good lineage oozing out from her conduct. Looking from her attire, she seemed like she had money on her and her look was also nice. She was still too young to do that kind of job but, Educated young girl could be sold expensively to noble of certain taste. Her price would jump even higher if she could also use light sorcery. Perhaps she was really ignorant of the way of the world just as her appearance suggested. After they helped her from the young men who hounded her and gave her consolations that were nice to listen, she fell for their honeyed talk and agreed to accompany them for several days just like a stupid little girl. The girl's name was Anya. 12 years old. They asked her to show them the tag of adventurer guild that she had just received and confirmed her name and her status as a beginner sorcerer. Seeing someone with bad reputation like them approaching her, the guild's receptionist apparently warned her but, it seemed that ignorant little girl had gotten into some kind of discord with that receptionist at the beginning. They somehow made use of that opening and successfully brought Anya with them outside. Dot. You must have an interest with the dungeon if you chose to become an adventurer right? Want to try entering there? Rookie adventurer couldn't easily enter inside a dungeon. Because other than knowledge, things like lantern, 
portable food, blanket and the like for staying the night were also needed. A chance to enter a dungeon with the accompaniment of senior adventurers to guard them was something rare that might never come again. When they gave her such invitation, Anya hesitated for a bit before she nodded slightly. Dot. So cute. It wasn't like they were lolican. But seeing Anya nodding without saying anything much, perhaps because she was feeling embarrassed from being treated like a princess by several older men, it caused a natural smile to form on their face despite being kidnappers who were going to kidnap and sell her. The distance from this city until the dungeon was around half a day of walking. It was still noon but. They would arrive at the evening if they departed now. At that point Daniel wouldn't be able to ask to go home. And thinking of the risk that a pursuer from the adventurer guild might follow, they decided to hire a fast carriage to carry them until the dungeon. This looked like they were running away from the adventurer guild while taking her away, so they might not be able to do any more job in the city after this but, even after paying the carriage fee. They should be able to earn enough if they sold someone like Anya. The atmosphere that this girl had was enough to make them thought like that. It seemed that from the start Anya wasn't a girl who liked to talk much. She often only stared at the scenery outside even inside the carriage. But her face seen from the side that was giving off an ephemeral atmosphere made them hesitate to even call out to her. She looked like a single flower that was blooming at a high place beyond their reach. She looked adorable but she didn't have a dazzling beauty like a beautiful princess. Her personality was quiet and she also wasn't acting particularly charming. Even so the mysterious atmosphere around Anya made adults like them to be unable to tear their eyes away from her for some reason. Even though they knew that this girl was still just a child. This girl was hiding an enticing devilishness inside her. If the girl kept maturing like this, how many men she would lead astray in the future who would sort for her hand even if they had to discard their fiancé and status for that. Such thinking crossed their mind for an instant and sent chills to their back. The three were staring wordlessly in fascination at the way her sparkling pink tinted blonde hair fluttered by the wind. When Anya suddenly turned her gaze toward them, her jade green eyes caused their heart to jump inside their chest. Are we the yet? A a a, just a bit more. Dot. Their destination. The medium-scale dungeon came into view. It was thought that this dungeon first appeared around 300 years ago. It still only had 30 floors constructed. It was a dungeon that was relatively suited for beginner. It seemed that it was originally a natural cavern, but its transformation into dungeon caused the passage to be wide and flat, and the rock surface shined faintly. The structure was becoming easier for human to enter and for monster to settle down. Most of the monsters that appeared here were insect type like caterpillar and the like. The monsters had no attractiveness other than their magic stone or organ that could be used as medicine, but conversely, there were still unexplored parts here and there were also a lot of blind spot that no one wouldn't visit. Anya, over here. There is a good hunting place here. Keep it a secret from anybody else okay? In order to put the girl into the trap, they passed the first floor of the dungeon where there were many witnesses and guided the girl deep into the second floor. It was difficult for people with meager combat strength like them to capture their target unharmed but this time they had sleeping drug. They were putting the drug into her drink bit by bit during break time and meal time. They didn't put the drug in all at once because there were cases when the target died when they were given the sleeping drug too much at once. But, although they had mixed the drug once at the lunch and in her tea when they took a break, there had been no change at all with Anya's condition from the start. Dot. Did he put in too little? The short-haired man he glanced at Anya who was following behind him without any vigilance at all. The red-haired man who used Bao was the one in charge of administering the poison. He was a playboy but, he shouldn't be a man who was interested with kid or a man who blundered in his job because of that. But the way the red-haired man kept talking to Anya as though to attract her interest irritated the short-haired man. Don't tell me, he isn't getting serious with her isn't he? He wondered if the red-haired man was getting too concerned with the girl and failed in administering the sleeping drug. How serious that man was getting with this girl. The girl was still a child. Dot dot but, if only he met this girl ten years ago. Dot 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 no, five years ago, then perhaps he would be walking the path as an adventurer under the sunlight instead of being a trivial thief like this. The man unconsciously averted his gaze from the girl when such thought settled inside his chest. Then he saw that the man with shaven head was also making a frown in displeasure while watching the red-haired man. Don't tell me dot dot this guy too? The short-haired man shuddered at Anya's devilishness. Could it be, that the two might be thinking of not selling the girl but monopolizing her for themselves? Ten years ago dot dot the three who had just left their rural town were overflowing with hope. They were looking toward the future just like those young men who hounded Anya in the guild. However before they realized it dot dot they had given up in living a decent life and preyed on other people. If those young men could form a party with Anya, they might be able to go to a radiant adventure. But such thing wouldn't possible anymore for them. Even if dirty people like them stayed together with Anya, a bright future would never come to them. 
But was that true? Was that really the case? It was hopeless with the three of them. But, if it was just one of them, it still wasn't too late. Dot dot it was possible to start over if it was just one of them. Rather than handing Anya to these men who could be so easily led astray by her devilishness, it should be better if it was him who got the chance to start over with Anya. A A. When he looked at Anya, his eyes were dazzled by that radiance. His chest tightened painfully just from looking at her. When he looked at nothing else by Anya inside his hazy thought, the red-haired man who was looking at Anya in the same way like him suddenly fell on his knee before falling unconscious. What's wrong? That guy. Did he get punished from having wicked thoughts in his mind? The man with shaved head walked toward that red-haired man, but he too fell on his knees when he took his first step and his body pitched forward. I see dot dot so this guy also got wicked thoughts in his head. The short-haired man thought that with his hazy mind, these dirty guys tried to monopolize Anya for themselves so they got punished. The god was watching. The god was giving him the chance for a start over. His chest felt painful as though it was constricted. His field of vision turned dark and he could see nothing else but her. Amidst that, Anya who was shining inside the light reached out with her hand toward her. The short-haired man fell on his knees as though to pray to God. WH dot dot at, like that the short-haired man fell. He couldn't comprehend why he was falling. Did they step on a dungeon's trap without noticing? But it's fine, with Anya who can use light sorcery here, she would be able to heal him even if it's poison. The short-haired man stayed down on the ground while reaching his hand toward Anya, looking for help. But, reflected in his eyes wasn't an angelic smile that would grant mercy. It was her looking down on them expressionlessly with a chilling gaze as she unsheathed a sharp black knife. Inside a small room in the dungeon. I finished off the three men who can't move from poison by slitting their throats. To prove the completion of the request, it should be enough to hand the three's tags to the client. It looked like I was able to finish them off surprisingly easily, but the cause was that they let their guard down against me. I dressed like this in order to make them careless but, I wouldn't be able to defeat them this easily if they suspected me even for just the slightest bit. These are three led me to a place where no other adventurer would come on their own so I can just leave it to the monsters of the dungeon to take care of their corpses. Now then, Hyun, a blade was thrown at me from behind. I bent so low as though to crawl on the ground to dodge it. The crescent moon-shaped sword passed above me and stabbed into the earth wall of the dungeon. Dot dot how about coming out already? I stood up while calling out to the darkness. There the air slightly wavered and a man appeared as though he was oozing out from the darkness. Dot dot strange. I was really confident with my stealth but, since when did you notice me? The one who appeared was the Cruzian youth who taught me a lot of things in the Assassin Guild. Guy. Most opponent could be killed easily if they were targeted the moment they were careless when they finished their job. I could dodge that attack easily because I was on my guard against it from the start. From the church last night. So it was from the start huh? You are? I don't have any confidence now. You can be confident. You were hiding properly. Even so it wasn't at Viro's level. Besides because he was skilled with it, the shape of human was probably visible to my eyes. Even if I'm told that by a kid. Guy scratched his head somewhat in frustration while looking at me with a cold gaze. And. How did you sense my attack just now? Even if you noticed me, was it really possible to suddenly dodge after getting abruptly attacked like that? Forget about that. What's your intention? What was thrown at me from behind was a weapon called Scimitar that guy had. I managed to dodge it but, I would die if I was unlucky. Don't tell me, it was in exchange of greeting. You aren't going to say that right? No way. Guy grinned and pulled out a second scimitar from his waist. He twirled it on his hand. It's a request from Kiera. She told me to give you a painful experience. She can't move because Dino is keeping her eyes on her, so I'm here in her place. As expected. He isn't thinking of going as far as killing me seeing that I'm a hostage against Master. No, if it's Kiera then she might try to do so but, that's why Dino is keeping his eye on her. What? Ash covered. You ain't surprised? I was acting as a friendly older brother really well right? Guy yourself aren't surprised aren't you? Did you notice my gender? Ooh. You're completely different when you dressed the part hey. I too would be totally fooled if I didn't know. Well, ordinary people might not notice it but, even if it's a kid like you. But when you have grown until that big, those who are sharp enough will still notice. The position of the waist between man and woman is different. He. I didn't know that. I'll use that as reference. Even so, you finished the job too damn easily there. It seemed they were also poisoning you. And yet it was them who got killed with poison. Hopeless. Guy approached and kicked the thieves corpses. He stopped moving just a step away from my range, with the corpses lying between us. Even though I gave them really expensive sleeping drug that has no smell and taste. These damn incompetents dot dot. With poison resistance you can endure poison to some degree, and if it's sleeping drug then I can guess what is its ingredients somewhat. I wondered how could these guys had such strong poison but, if it was because of guys involvement, 
it gave me a glimpse at just how serious Kira was. Well, you ran out of luck because you are too capable like this. It was your misfortune that you caught Kira's attention. Even she will be satisfied if you got a big scar on your face, so just quietly let yourself get scarred. Just remember from now that a brat shouldn't put on air too much. You wanna live long right? Guy took a stance with his scimitar and gradually let loose his killing intent. This man's mana was low but his status was purely high. He was a troublesome opponent to get into a head-on confrontation with. I don't care about that but dot dot I haven't mentioned the reason why I wasn't surprised and could dodge the surprise attack just now right? Um, guy stopped moving for a bit from my words while taking a stance where he could attack any time. You see, I strengthened the magic that I have been using the whole time since several minutes ago. That's because I believe if it's that woman, she absolutely will try something. Ha, huh? dot dot a, a, guy was about to take a step forward while making a puzzled face when he fell on his knee and raised his voice in confusion. W what? Don't tell me dot dot poison. Guy glared at me with a bewildered gaze because his feet suddenly can't move. Since when? You shouldn't have any time to use this kind of powerful poison. Guy too must at least have poison resistance if he is an assassin. Even so poison should still work on him if it's a powerful one so he should be on his guard against me who used poison. Powerful poison also has strong smell or taste, so it can't be mixed with food. It's possible to smear it on weapon, but Guy hasn't gotten attacked yet. That was why Guy misunderstood that I gradually administered the poison to the rookie hunters with a way like mixing it into their food. Why is my feet can't move dot dot shit? It's the nerve poison that master created. It's really effective even though you have poison resistance right? If he has no poison resistance. His mind will also become hazy just like the rookie hunters and even his internal organ should stop functioning. Conversely because he has poison resistance, Guy couldn't notice the poison at its early stage. If it's poison then I have been using it the whole time. I threw the porcelain jar that I brought with me as spare. The thinly created jar broke in front of Guy. This is, you realized, it's an insect scent gland but you have experience or sniffing it right? This liquid has bad smell but with a faint sweet scent mixed in. I purchased it from the alchemist's store. It was an item that was made from processed scent gland of a monster caterpillar that it used for marking its turf. In this dungeon, this smell can be found anywhere. Diluted it can become agricultural chemical and undiluted it can also become monster repellent. I used this monster repellent to avoid the monsters that could get in the way of the assassination. And then, if there is a smell this strong, then even poison with strong smell won't be noticed if it's spread out thinly. Ash covered dot dot you. Don't tell me. Guy noticed what I did and opened his eyes wide. You are saying that you were spreading poison even knowing that you would also get poisoned? Master's poison is powerful. It's not something that can be endured even if you have poison resistance. But I know about the poison's substance. Even now I have been using treat the whole time. It won't have any effect if I don't understand the poison's ingredients, and its effect is a weak one that can only erase the poison gradually but it's possible for it to treat the effect of a vaporized poison if it's used immediately. Even so I would get violated by the poison if my focus wavered, and it also caused me to be unable to fight properly, but I staked my life into this gamble and won. Guy realized that and glared at me in astonishment. Ha ha dot dot are you sane? Using poison that also affected yourself. Are you touched in the head huh? I'm aware. Dot dot oi, are you serious? You are seriously going to kill me? I was just going to hurt you a little and then consider everything to be water under the bridge you know? Do you know what gonna happen to Sir Jura by doing something like this? Dot. Just like how I'm a hostage against Master, Master is also a shackle that binds me. That's why Dino and Guy are thinking that Master and I can't go against the Assassin Guild. But, Guy, you're an assassin and yet you apostrophe re dot dot naive huh? What? I threw another jar at Guy. Thinking that it's poison, Guy swung his sword with his upper body that can still move. He tried to repel away the jar without breaking it. Gash on, you. The tip of the pendulum that I threw at the same time with Guy's sword damaged the jar. It then got smashed by Guy's sword and the content is scattered. It's not dot dot poison. What? This smell? The poison I spread in this room should disperse soon. I can add more but dot dot there is no more need for that. So Guy might notice something too. I don't attack Guy and backed away deeper into the room. I pressed my back on the dungeon's wall, used stealth and folded my arms while watching. Guy panicked and began to struggle. 10 seconds dot dot 30 seconds dot dot I don't need to count until 100 when I heard the sound of ground rumbling. The short tempered monsters couldn't even wait until the poison dispersed and approached near. Ash covered. Are you? Insane. If you do something like this, you'll seriously turn the assassin guild into your enemy. Guy desperately tried to escape from the point where the chemical was scattered, but he couldn't even take three steps away. What I first scattered was monster repellent that was collected from monster caterpillars scent gland, 
but scent gland doesn't just produce scent to drive away external enemy. It will be only at a certain season but, the female also use this scent gland to call for male. When this liquid that was created from female scent gland is mixed with a monster repellent, it will produce an intense pheromone type scent. And then it should call for the males in the dungeon. This is my trump card that I created knowing that this is an insect type dungeon. Die in this place. It's pointless even if he used stealth. It's only a little bit. But that liquid has definitely gotten stuck on Guy. A lot of monster caterpillars appeared and flooded into the room. They found Guy and he fought back with his scimitar. Although his legs can't move, someone as strong as Guy won't be troubled by mere monster caterpillars even if there are several of them. But, what if dozens of them appeared? Furthermore the poison will circulate even more inside his body the more he moved. The monster caterpillars are also attracted by the smell and rushed closer one after another. A.S.H. covered. At the end Guy raised a scream of resentment and threw his scimitar at me. I dodged it and it stabbed on the wall. I used it as a stepping stone and jumped until the ceiling. Away from the floor that is going to be crammed with insects soon. I stabbed my hidden weapon on the rocky wall and clung at the corner of the ceiling. Dot dot ra. At the end Guy reached out with his blood covered hand and muttered something. While grotesque noise of bone and flesh breaking is resounding. I turned toward Guy and answered his last question even though I don't know whether he still has any consciousness or life remaining or not. Dot. From the start my prey is all of you. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 9 Omen of Battle Dear Grandfather. I wish to discuss something with you. Can you by any chance give me a little bit of your time? The royal capital of Claydale Kingdom. In the Prime Minister's office in the palace. The room's owner belt far Melrose glared at his grandson who visited suddenly. Ahead of his gaze was a young boy with strawberry honey blonde hair that was faintly tinged red. He didn't even flinch against the gaze of his grandfather who was the current Prime Minister. He put on a smile that was as sweet as his hair color. Mihail Melrose. He was the first son of Melrose House's heir and this year he would become ten years old. Perhaps because of his strong mana, for these several years he had grown until he looked like he was thirteen years old. If he was a commoner, with his sweet look that he inherited from his grandmother and charming smile, he was becoming a hot topic among the young maids who were working in the palace. The heir who was Belt's son and Mihail's father was ruling the territory of Margrave Melrose in the place of Belt who couldn't leave the capital because of his work as the Prime Minister. Mihail was in the capital even though he wasn't even in the age to enroll into the Sorcery Academy it was because he had the friend role for the Crown Prince as a candidate to be his aide in the future. Just like how the young lady of Margrave Dandel, Clara filled the role as the playmate of the first Princess Elena. Several children from good social standing were also gathered around the crown prince as his playmates so he could form solid connection with them as the future king, but even among those children, it was talked that Mihail together with Rockwell Dandel who was the eldest son of the Supreme Knight Commander and also the big brother of Clara were in especially good relations with the crown prince. You're really a slippery fellow. I'm used to dear grandfather's glare after all. In the first place the people of Melrose House also don't have the trait to be considerate to others too much. Dot dot I guess. Belt understood that he himself and his big sister who married to Carl Fan Empire were also like that. His lips frowned while he wetted his lips with the tea that was brewed by his butler Rose. The people of Melrose house that was formerly a royal family of a country had such side to them for good or bad because of that they could also offer their opinion to the royal family without hesitation but such side sometimes also made them to become liked by the royal family just like with belt and mihail come to think of it she was also like that thinking back now his daughter eloping without any consideration of her standing might also because such trait of Melrose House came out thickly inside her, at the very least he was aware that his daughter wasn't suited to become the queen. Are you talking about the dear aunt that I sometimes heard came up in talk? The old servants mentioned that she was a beautiful person, and I also once saw her portrait that was remaining in the mansion. Dot dot there is also a rumor, that a girl who might be my cousin was found. Dot dot where did you hear that from? Mihail spoke of a rumor that was only known by very few people including the royal family. Belt glared at him, but he only smiled gently and dodged the question. Most likely he had his own information network even at this age. Taking that into consideration, he might be more suited than Belt's son, his further to become the prime minister when the crown prince became the king. But Belt sighed at his grandson who was maturing too quickly. We will observe for several years more to see about that. Dot dot and, what do you want to discuss with me? Before that, I want to tell about this matter to dear grandfather's ear only. Dot dot got it. Oz, as you command. Oz who was standing by at a corner of the room bowed his head to Belt and Mihail before leaving. Even he who was a knight in the dark side couldn't hear this talk. Just what could it be? Dot. Is it fine now? Thank you very much, dear grandfather. I think you have guessed already but. 
This is about His Highness the Crown Prince. Mihail talked that the Crown Prince recently seemed to have interest toward life in the streets. That interest itself wasn't anything bad but, apparently the Crown Prince wished to look around the capital not in his capacity as Crown Prince, but stealthily together with his friends including Mihail. There were guard posts everywhere in the capital to maintain the public order. The guards were also patrolling, so there would be no danger unless in some unusual circumstance. With such good public order, it was possible to even see young lady from house at the level of count to go shopping in the city, although as expected she wouldn't be alone. But they could do so by bringing only three guards at minimum and a maid. But, the crown prince wouldn't be allowed to do that with his standing. Even though it was at the royal capital, the crown prince would at least need to bring around ten of the royal guards with him and reserved a high class establishment just to go shopping. Wanting to look around stealthily meant departing to the city without even being accompanied by a decent amount of guard. This must be the influence of the first queen who was formerly a viscount's daughter who liked to behave with abandon. Dot. Really, what a troublesome person. Setting aside the official function, the first queen was said to be still relying on the second queen for the political duty. Belt grumbled about her inside his heart. Mihail also sensed his grandfather's mood and continued with the story in order to end it quickly. As expected, even I can't allow that. I made his highness agreed to bring several guards with us. But he had apparently heard from somewhere about the case that happened during her highness the princess's recuperation. Although it was ended only as an attempt, but the abduction was still allowed to happen. Because of that his highness is feeling disapproval for a guards from the dark side outside the palace. I see, certainly that was a blunder in the dark side organization's part. No matter how short of hands they were, high-ranked knights of the dark side like Sarah had checked the background of anyone around the royal family, and only trusted people accompanied the royalty. But after the case was investigated, it was found out that Grave who had worked for nearly 30 years for the royal family had changed the personnel assignment and intentionally loosened the security around Her Highness the Princess. When he was young Grave had a radical side in him to a fastidious degree, but it was thought that it was because of his devotion toward the royal family. In fact for more than these 10 years his radical side had quietened down. Nobody could understand why someone in the royal family faction like him would do what he did. No comma dot dot guess he went out of control because of that fastidiousness of his. Grave even abandoned the mission of confirming the identity of the pink haired girl that Belt ordered him to do and vanished. There was a report that girl was attacked by a monstrous person and went missing. Belt was feeling discomfort with his granddaughter who was just found. He sent Grave to his mission because he wanted a material to confirm his suspicion but, he had no way to search for a child whose life and death wasn't even known. Sarah's grandfather Hosea was also capable, but perhaps his eyes were clouded when observing Grave because Grave was the orphan that his friend left behind. Mihail made Oz left also because he didn't want to criticize Oz's grandfather in front of him. Mihail dot dot if it's you then you should also can remonstrate his highness right? I don't know about that. Besides as someone who I will serve in the future, it'll be troubling as His Highness is raised in sheltered upbringing and is ignorant of the world, you impudent kid. And, what do you want? Yes, His Highness has also known the faces of all the capable dark sides knights. And so, I want to ask dear grandfather for permission to have a tour of the royal capital, and it will also be great if you can lend us several guards who are knowledgeable about the city and doesn't belong to the dark side. Knowledgeable about the city huh? They could also order capable knights to serve as guard but the royal guard that had a lot of high-ranked knights couldn't be said as knowledgeable about the city. And with ordinary knights, although they might be knowledgeable about the city, it would be troubling if they brought the crown prince and his friends to suspicious place like Bar for example. Dot. Come to think of it, those fellows said that they would return to the capital shortly. Belt recalled that and rang the bell near his hand. He called out to his subordinate outside the door. Someone. Send a messenger to the guild. Make a request for the adventurer party rainbow sword. Dot dot you are faster than expected. Although low ranked, assassinating three thieves should take longer than this. It seemed that a month is far faster than expected. When I returned to the headquarters of the branch assassin guild of the northern frontier district, the branch head Dino showed a surprised expression at me. Although he knew of my combat strength, I'm just a child in the end so he must be thinking that I would either take much time or fail. But in reality I finished the job in three days after arriving, so I could return even faster if I wanted, but seeing that I was in a dungeon already I went hunting monsters for a bit there. In that dungeon, rank 3 monster would appear individually starting from around the 5th floor. Fighting rank 1 or 2 monster at this point wouldn't really serve as training for me in spite of the danger. That was why I purchased the map of lower floors from the guild and forcefully advanced to the 5th floor using stealth and search. A dungeon is a monster. The inside is a place that doesn't conform to the rule of the surface. The inside is filled with stronger magic particles than the outside. Thanks to those magic particles the monsters could keep active even if they only eat the minimum amount. 
But perhaps that's why they are always hungry and monsters that have tasted human will become extremely aggressive. I'm lacking in fighting experience. I had somehow survived fighting stronger enemies until now, but in fact the number of battle I had experienced can be counted in two hands, so I dived into dungeon alone and accumulated battle experience there until the very limit of my stamina and rations in order to become stronger. I stopped at fifth floor because going any lower will force me to face multiple enemies at the same time and because rank 3 that operated solo wouldn't come near me anymore. I didn't mention anything about that to Dina here, but in order to make appraisals result on me to be vague, I covered my whole body with a cloak. Dino looked at my appearance with suspicion while letting out a light sigh. He then took out a small leather bag from his pocket. Well, it's fine. Here is the promised payment. Also you have nice timing. An information about the aforementioned mercenary of Dawn had just come from our contacts so I'll also hand it to you. Dino handed the payment 30 gold coins and the target's information to me. I had used up most of my money so this is a nice timing. I fought really recklessly, so I bought another clothes and cloak for replacement until my remaining money had decreased to several silver coins only. I put the leather bag of gold and coins in my pocket and checked the document that I had just received. I flipped the bundle of unbleached papers, skipped the individual information and looked at their current situation. Dot dot the capital, sometimes has passed since then so they have left this north frontier and headed to the capital. Most likely they are planning to hide in the large dungeon near the capital until the heat on them cooled down. Another dungeon again. They are adventurers after all. Pure assassin isn't really good with that kind of place. Dino was implicitly saying that this is the reason he asked Master to do this job, so I should just give up. If possible it will be better if you can finish them off while they are in the capital, but that will be hard to do in the capital where the security is tight. We have no contact there. So perhaps we should send one or two people to there. There is no assassin guild in the capital. The assassin guild is one of the branches in this country. If there are branches that means there is the main one. I vaguely thought that it must be in the capital, but it seems that I'm wrong. When I asked that question, Dino shrugged with an exaggerated gesture. My beloved brother disciple. That is a troublesome matter, although we the assassin guilds are the same organization. We are not a monolith. It's not like we are hostile with each other but our relationship with each other are more like worthy rivals with the same objective. I see now. Each branch isn't fighting each other but they are still competing to get works. No. Perhaps it feels closer like when a large company helped a long-term employee to establish a branch of the same shop with separated management, where in the end the branch got estranged from the main store. The Adventurer Guild also feel like that somewhat, but with the Assassin Guilds they aren't even sharing information with each other. It feels stupid to me, but this is a welcome news for me. Now then. The talk is over. I put the documents in the inner pocket of my cloak and turned round. But Dino seemed to still have a business left and called out to me at the end. By the way, Guy left several weeks ago and he hasn't contacted us even until today. Did he show up at your place? There is no way I know anything about that. Guess so. Dino said that and shrugged before leaving. I stared fixedly at his leaving back. Am I being suspected? Most likely the fact that the observer that was watching over Master also hasn't been contacting back also influenced it. But Dino knew about my combat strength before this. He should be thinking that I can't possibly beat Guy. In addition many assassins are egoistic individuals who often goes off on their own. It's possible that Guy just suddenly vanished on a whim. Dino must be unable to interrogate me too excessively and simply asked a leading question. The people of this guild should have also appraised me when I first arrived. That was the reason why I obediently followed Dino when he showed me around, to show that normal human wouldn't grow rapidly in just several months. Doing appraisal also consumed mana and mental strength so usually nobody would use appraisal on the same person again unless something drastic happened. Dot dot that's exactly why it can become an opening that I'm taking advantage of. Dot. My business in this guild is already over, but I have no intention to carelessly rest in my room here. I checked it just in case but, there must be some kind of contraption there anyway, so I looked around inside the guild here one more time before leaving. I'm not sensing people really clearly inside the guild, but that's because almost all of them have stealth skill. But, if search at the level of mine can still sense them, there shouldn't be that many people who can sense me when I'm using stealth seriously. Even so when living in this kind of environment, your stealth and search will get trained whether you want it or not. That must be the reason why even though even though there is nobody here who looks visibly strong with high combat strength, there are people with great skill. Amidst that, I didn't feel the presence of Kiro inside the guild. Perhaps she is outside or doing work. She is a troublesome person to encounter, but it's troublesome because her being out of sight like this also feel ominous. The other troublesome opponents inside the guild are the Shadow User Radha, the Berserkashaga, and the Shaman the Sage, I guess. From her title, 
I think it will be hard to find Radha. Conversely Shaga isn't even hiding his violent presence and give off a strong presence. I feel that it will be dangerous to approach his attack range without any countermeasure, but in order to confirm his appearance, I quietly stole a glance at his back figure from a distance. That place looked like a canteen with wine cask and food scattered every which way. At the back, there is a dwayne clad in full body armor that seemed to be made from magic iron silently gulping down wine while keeping a tight hold to a halberd made from magic steel. His appearance made me think of a wounded beast that would bear its fang to anyone who got near. Nobody will be able to approach him like that. Nobody will ever think that someone like him is an assassin, even so Dino and the previous master kept him as member here. That goes to show just how high his combat strength in close quarter. I left that spot before Shaga could find me. Then I stopped walking just before I stepped inside a certain spot inside the guild. There is something. That place is different from the other places. The color of magic particles that my eyes can see is strangely mixed with each other. It's showing a chaotic coloring that sent my heart into anxiety. Dot. An unpleasant feeling. I muttered inside my heart while my face unconsciously grimaced. Is this dot dot a curse? While I'm standing still without being able to step any further, I noticed there is an old man wearing robe, staring fixedly at me from the darkness of the passage ahead. Dot. We stared at each other wordlessly with a distance of ten odd meters between us. Then the strange color of magic particles slowly approached toward me. When I also backed away to keep the distance, the old man who seemed to be the sage slightly narrowed his eyes. When I continued opening the distance, the curse doesn't come any closer and returned back to its original position. I see, so the sage's fighting style is passive. It's enough for now to just understand that. Without stopping I left that place and after confirming that nobody is following me, I wiped the sweat on my forehead and sighed, dot dot so elf can also grow old. Having narrowly escaped death, I muttered something trivial as I immediately walked toward the deepest part of the former coal mine that is the branch assassin guild of the North Frontier District now. As I got deeper, I can hear the low growling voice that sounded like a beast, mixed with the wind that blew from somewhere. I knew even before approaching there, my legs don't want to go there and became heavier. Surely nobody will draw near here, because they can feel that death is waiting if they get closer. Someone who can't even notice that won't have the qualification to be here. I pushed down my heart that is about to get scared to the deepest part inside me and walked forward step by step. Then I found a beast in chain at the end. Locked behind thick bars that are as thick as a woman's arm each. The condemned dot dot Gudo. Gudo raised a low growl at my murmur and lifted his face. Dot. Gudo race. Magic power. 167 186 stamina. 531 546. Overall combat strength. 1381. Dot. He is nearly three meter tall and long distorted arms that are nearly two meters long. His whole body is wrapped in bandage that is stained with filth. There is fiendish light dwelling in his yellow cloudy eyes. He suddenly tried to assault me. Gagan. The chains that are fastened to the rock surface are stretched until the limit. Guda glided on the thick iron bars so hard they almost bent as his claws cut through the air a few centimeter in front of my nose. The chaotic mana that I saw at the sage's area is clinging on Gaudo's whole body. Most likely the sage is binding Gaudo's freedom with his curse. This man isn't just a mere animal. He might be insane but, I caught a glimpse of the skill that is burned in his soul from his movement. Most likely he is reduced to this from drug and sorcery and curse. When I tried to touch the fingertip of his arm that he stretched as though looking for something, he got shocked instead and pulled back his arm. Nobody will approach near you. Nobody will look straight at your appearance. Nobody will ever think of touching you. I stared straight into Gaudo's cloudy eyes while speaking to him with a small voice. Dot. Wait there. I'll prepare a worthy stage for you. HTTPS colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io03.jpg. Aria, Alicia, Race, Human Dash Rank 2. Magic Power. 162 180 10 up stamina, 132 145 15 up, strength, 6, 7 endurance, 7, 8 agility, 10, 12 dexterity, 8 1 up, short sword skill level 2 martial art level 2 throwing level 2 string control level 2, light magic level 2 darkness magic level 2 non elemental magic level 2, daily life magic times 6 magic power control level 2 pressure level 2, stealth level 3 1 up night vision level 2 search level 3 1 up poison resistance level 2 1 up, simple appraisal, overall combat strength, 213, with body strengthening, 236 42 up, Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 10, Journey to the Capital, the Rank 4 Adventurer Party, Mercenary of Dawn. The members that formed it are a Rank 4 Warrior, 
Daggett, male, 31 years old, blue eyes and red hair, rank 3 heavy warrior, Randy, male, 29 years old, brown eyes and thinning blonde hair, ran 3 scout, former hunter Duncan, male, 30 years old, blue eyes and black hair, ran 3 sorcerer, grinder, light and water elements, female, 26 years old, black eyes and brown hair, Daggett's lover, they are my targets, they embezzled the requested item that they should collect and ran away with a necklace that is a family heirloom, the noble that they tricked requested the assassin guild to assassinate them and recover the necklace, family heirloom ha, huh? I unconsciously touched my mother's memento inside the amulet pouch, on my chest, if I'm in opposition against the assassin guild, there is no need for me to do this work, but with a contact of a guild coming to keep watch, I can't slack off. Dot dot I'm glad that they are scoundrels. The mercenary of Dawn headed to the large scale dungeon near the capital because although their party has few members for their rank, they have good balance and depending on their equipment, it will be possible for them to stay in the dungeon for a long period. It will be difficult for me to chase after them alone if they dived until the deep floor. To deal with them safely, I should deal with them in the capital or in the city at the south where the dungeon is located, but if I can't catch up to them there, then my only choice is to aim when they return for resupply. Even so as expected. The most solid plan will be to do it inside the dungeon. The public order in the capital is too good, so it will be dangerous in a different sense there. But if it's in the dungeon, my life will also be at risk, but the same will also apply to my targets. An opening will show more often the more dangerous it is. It's my bad habit to think too much about a lot of things. But, if I imagine various situations and prepare countermeasure beforehand, I'll be able to take action immediately when things actually happen. Even so right now I should take action first rather than thinking too much about things that are still far off in the future. My assumption and hypothesis will change completely depending on the environment and situation at the actual site. I need detailed information in order to heighten the precision of my thinking and assumption too. Dot. I stayed in the neighboring city of the Northern Frontier District's branch for three days to prepare using the Adventurer Guild and the shops in the city before departing to the capital. I couldn't find out who my contact will be even after investigating during those three days. I think they will contact me at the actual site but, what I wanted to know is how many contacts there will be. As long as they are there, I won't be able to take any strange action. Even if I dispose the contact, but if there is more than one contact and I let them get away. My betrayal will be exposed. I can only pray that at the very least the contact is someone who I can defeat easily. There are two routes to go to the capital from this territory of Count Haydale. First is passing through the main route along the sea from the territory of Count Centra where I worked last time. It's the relatively safer road that Elena used before. And then the other route is going straight to the south from Dandel, through the valley of a mountain district. It's dangerous but I can arrive faster with this path. If I used exclusive high-speed carriage like Elena. I might be able to arrive faster using the main road along the sea, but, I will take one month by walking and riding the stagecoach stationed along the way. It's not like carriage can't pass through valley but, even so ordinary carriage and traveler doesn't pass the because of the bird type monster's frequent appearance in the valley. Only a major company guarded by Dandel's garrison guards will pass through the once a month. Even commoner can come along if they buy the ticket that is issued by the merchant guild, but it's really expensive if one doesn't care about the required time. Normal traveler usually will use the safe route, but, the route I'll use is the dangerous valley. I intentionally choose the dangerous path in order to become stronger in short time. After that I spent another 10 days and passed through several territories of nobles who are the dependents of Margrave Dandel and went south. Then I arrived at a territory of a baron that is close to the mountain district. Even a free person like me won't need to pay that much money to enter a city unless it's a big city. Even so I paid one silver coin as the passing fee at the last city and entered inside. There I purchased food and other necessities. After that I asked for information of monsters in the adventurer guild of that city. The guild here is a desolate place where there are only hunters bringing in monster material when they defeated monster by some chance. The staff who taught me a lot about the monsters here also grieved that this city only has few dedicated adventurers. There are several types of monsters that appeared in the valley, but as expected a subjugation force will be dispatched right away if high ranked monster like Griffin appeared so its appearance hasn't been seen for these 10 years. In the first place Griffin will target horse. It should prefer to hunt something like deer rather attacking walking traveler. When passing through that valley by food, the small and medium sized monster will become the problem. There are falcon type monster named Windbird that tore apart its prey with outrageous speed before preying on it, and crow type monster giant crow that like to catch traveler and bring them back to its nest for food. Those two types of monsters frequently appeared. The small Windbird is a rank 1 monster. While the medium-sized giant grow is rank 2, 
but according to the Adventurer Guild's hypothetical difficulty level. The Windbird is categorized as Rank 2 while Giant Grow is Rank 3. The reason for that is simple. That's because the location is at the valley where there are a lot of obstacles and open sky. It's difficult even for Adventurer with Rank 1 or 2 bow skill to hit them. Even Rank 2 or 3 Warrior can't attack unless the monster come down. To have a proper hunt, Sorcerer who can use offensive wind sorcery is necessary, and even then it's difficult to hunt the monsters unless with a party that can prepare shield for protecting the Sorcerer. Dot. Normally that is. Dot. Early morning in the next day, I avoided people's gaze and stepped into the valley while the sky is still dark. I'm passing the bottom of the valley, but its width is only around 10 meters at best. The steep cliffs at both sides are around 50 meter high. The place is a bit dark even when it's afternoon. But, it's safer to walk here when it's dark as long as you have a way to conquer the darkness. The enemy are monsters so they will attack if they feel my presence, even so perhaps because of their bird eye, their search range narrowed when it get dark. On my way until here. I traveled while training my darkness magic, but it's still difficult to activate it and I'm still training. Even now while I'm walking through the valley, a monster finally found me when it became noon and the sun shined down on the valley from directly above me. Dot dot it came. I heard a faint sound of something slicing through wind, then an instant after that my search skill caught the presence of something small approaching. I reflexively twisted my body backward and dodged while swinging my black knife as the thing passed me. But that presence's owner also rotated to dodge the blade and swiveled to the sky mockingly. The falcon type monster wind bird attacked human not on its own by in swarm. As expected it's hard to hit flying opponent with knife. If it can move like that, then hitting it even by throwing knife will depend on luck. While I'm thinking that, the second wind bird attacked from the side. Its speed is like arrow. It will be hard to sense them with sight if I fight them properly but wind bird's speed will drop only for an instant when they attack. I focused my search so that I won't miss that instant and threw my blade to the wind bird when it attacked again. The wind bird rotated in the air to dodge that blade, but I matched its movement and controlled the string of the pendulum that I threw. Gajur, the wind bird whose wing is cut by the pendulum's blade crashed on the ground like arrow. I didn't inflict a lethal blow, but it won't be safe after falling to the ground with that speed. I also threw a pendulum from my left hand in a curving trajectory instead of straight. It cut apart the wing of another windbird that attacked me. I don't stay in one spot and dodge the windbird's attacks with complicated footwork and taking them down with the pendulum's drawing an arc through the air. I paid no mind even when my aim missed. It's good enough if my blade's hit accuracy reached 30%. But, even if the blade is dodged it's meaningless if they also don't dodge the string I controlled. The giant spider string that I strengthened with my mana can't be cut even by the windbird's claws. I cut their wings or entangle them with string. I took down nearly 10 wind birds in several minutes. With that the rest stopped approaching me and circled around on the sky. One of them fired wind-colored magic particles at me. The name wind bird isn't just for show. These things can use level 1 wind sorcery wind cutter. Wind type sorcery has good speed and they are also invisible, so it's hard to dodge, but my eyes that can see the color of magic particle can dodge as long as there is enough distance. With the magic power value of wind bird, they can only fire once or twice at best. If they fire twice, they will run out of mana and their speed will drop drastically, so wind cutter can be said as the wind bird's trump card. One wind bird ran out of patience seeing me continuously evading and attacked me while firing wind sorcery from close range. Shield. A shield of light around 30 cm in size is created on my left hand. I made the shield came into contact with the thickest part of the approaching green colored magic particles and parried it by holding the shield diagonally. Without pause I cut the wing of the wind bird that came straight at me with my black knife. Then the remaining wind bird flew away to the sky to escape. Ga. The next moment, as though to replace the wind birds, a piercing cry reverberated through the valley. It's unknown whether the wind bird escaped from me or got scared because this game. I heard the cry together with the sound of wings flapping. A black bird with huge body that reached 4 meters with its wings spread out swooped down as though to cut through the darkness of the sky. Dot. Giant crow race, large bird, difficulty rank 2. Magic power, 6973 stamina, 212 215. Overall combat strength, 145. The giant crow caused a gust of wind with its wings while heading straight at me. I threw the pendulums in my hands in order to meet its charge. But, the pendulum's blade only grazed its black wings a little. The intelligent giant crow saw that and directed its sharp talons toward me in ridicule. Gua. In that instant, I took out a new pendulum on my palm and dodged the talon while winding the pendulum around the giant crow's wing. 
The giant crow flew to the sky in panic. I controlled the string with string control and hindered it. Gua, the giant crow shrieked angrily and flapped its wings to drag me to the sky along with the pendulum's string. But, I don't let it. I pulled the string even stronger to hinder its wings flap. I also quickly knocked the heel of my boots together so that blade shot out from it. Then I kicked it on the ground like a wedge. The boots that I received from Master is something that she used in the past. It has a mechanism in them. If they got impacted from a certain direction, Small blades will come out from its front tips and the heel. I fixed myself on the ground with the heel blades and pulled the string with my body reinforcement in full power throughout my whole body. My rank on the whole is still rank 2, but several of my support skills has reached level 3. Using magic power control level 3, I circulated mana through my whole body, and with pressure level 2 I stopped the giant crow's movement for just a moment. Duh. Even though I got dragged across the ground through the inertia that left the ground gouged. I used all my strength and slammed the fearfully screeching giant crow on the ground head first. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 11 First time at the capital, the death throes of the giant crow that was slammed on the ground echoed through the valley. The windbirds that are still in the sky above flew away like baby spiders scattering away. Dot dot I can take a breather with this. I fought head on without using anything like illusion in order to give a warning. Monster tends to have higher intellect than normal animal, because I'll need several days to pass through this valley. Even if I'm hiding using stealth and some other tricks, there is a risk that I'll be discovered while I'm sleeping or eating. That was why I showed the monsters that it's dangerous to attack me. Thanks to that, the presences of the stone rats that wanted to get the leftovers from the winner of the fight between the crow and me also vanished. I used my dismantling knife to gouge out the magic stone from the chest of a giant crow whose head is smashed. The material from this crow won't make much money. The giant sharp feathers can be sold as material for feather pen but even that will only sell for around one small silver coin per feather. The beak and talons also can't be sold. Because of that only its magic stone can be sold for decent price, but in the end it's just a rank 2 monster despite its rank 3 difficulty, and it also doesn't has any elements so the magic stone is also non-elemental and can't be sold for high price. At best it will only fetch me one silver coin. The wind bird has element, but perhaps because it's just rank 1, or perhaps because of its size, they only have small drag of magic stone so I gave up collecting it. Even so I still picked several of the windbirds that fell on the ground because I want their meat. The crow's meat is hard and smelly so it's not suitable for eating, but the windbird's meat can be eaten without any problem although the texture is a bit parched. Dot. I used daily life magic fire to let fire and grilled the windbird's meat whole before wrapping it in a large leaf and put it into my bag. Originally I should use the darkness magic that I had trained until now here. But I'm still not used to it and with my total magic power value I'm still not in a stage where I can use it practically. I, un I unreeled the spare pendulum string that I fastened beforehand, grasped it and made it vanish. This technique that I used against the giant crow isn't some kind of sleight of hand, but a fully fledged dark magic. Viro had a bag with its internal space expanded using dark sorcery. With study and experiment, I learned that the magic particle of darkness isn't real darkness but particle with dark color that with the caster's thought and precise magic power control, it can be changed into various shapes and have effect added to it to a certain degree. Its application is with illusion or space sorcery. The first step of space type sorcery, weight isn't about adjusting weight but enveloping a substance with dark magic particles and then moving it along with the magic particles. In other words, the basic of space sorcery lies in enveloping object with dark attribute magic particles. In the case of internally expanded bag, the sorcery worked by fixing dark magic particles at the inside of the bag, it created a fixed space and then widening its inside. The level of dark sorcery to create an expanded bag is 4. That's because fixing magic particles at the inside of the bag, making it possible to take and put in things freely creating a function to absorb the excess magic power of the owner in order to maintain the sorcery are processes that required immense amount of magic power, so such high level is required. That was what Master said. From there I got an idea that I discussed with Master. Master said that it's an interesting idea and helped me with thinking together about the sorcery structure. The idea is to make my own body itself to be an expanded bag. A human body will definitely create shadow without even really doing anything. There is the gap between the clothes or inside the mouth. And of course the inside of the body also has shadow. By assuming that as a space of darkness and making the shadow into extremely small space of magic particles, if I expanded that space with magic power, I should be able to obtain the same effect like an expanded bag. I won't need to cut loose the magic particles away from me and I'll only circulate my own magic particles. With that I was able to omit a part of the troublesome structure, and for taking in and out object too. 
by using magic power each time to the darkness on the surface of my body. The required structure to fix the exit and entrance is also shortened. Because of that the sorcery structure has become one that can be used by a level 3 at least, but for me whose dark magic is still at level 2, I have to split my focus constantly in order to maintain the dark space. With my current amount of total magic power value, the best that I can do is to only maintain a space for putting in my spare pendulum. Because of that, it's an experimental dark magic that is still not in a practical stage. But there is a reason why I want to store my grilled meat into there. In my knowledge of general magic, living creature cannot be put inside a space that is expanded by dark sorcery. But this isn't correct. To be more accurate, living creature can't live inside a space that is formed by magic particles of darkness and they will die there. This is just my hypothesis but, the inside of the expanded bag is filled with magic particles instead of air. In a sense. The state of the space inside is nearly like a vacuum. There is misinformation how the time of the item that is put inside the expanded bag is stopped so food won't go bad inside there, but the truth is inside that space the small creatures that made food rot what is called germ in that woman's knowledge will die, causing the food to obtain the same effect like bottled food that is used by sailor or canned food like in that woman's knowledge. However, there is also problem with this. If you put fermented food like cheese inside, even the good germ will die and it will stop being a preserved food. Well, in short, it will be best if I consumed this grilled meat before two days. I put the grilled meat inside my baggage and immediately started walking through the valley toward the capital. Dot. As expected I had fought Shirley as an example, so after that no monster attacked me. Even the stone rats that were peeking at me are currently absorbed in swarming the remains of the wind bird and giant crow that I left behind so they won't show themselves again for a while. I grilled all the meats together so that I won't need to use fire again when making camp. Bird type monster can only find me when the sun is still up in the sky. It's still winter so normally it's dangerous to not use fire when camping, but if it's me who can use light sorcery to vitalize my body, it won't be that painful and my need to lit fire is lessened. It will take around 5 days of merchant carries to pass through this valley, but for me who walk without even carrying heavy luggage. I can pass through in three days if I hurry. When sleeping I'm burning wild grasses with slight effect of repelling animal and shut my eyes in the gap of rocks. I'm already able to use stealth even while sleeping, so even if the darkness is a danger for merchants, it's a safe place for me with no malicious enemy like human around. A giant crow attacked again at the last day, but this time I have no need to make an example, so I secured my safety with illusion and poison while finishing it off. I believe that I'm used with camping in a dangerous place to some degree. But perhaps I'm still feeling nervousness even then. My body has become stiff when I came out of the valley, and I stretched my back to loosen up. For me who lacked experience even though I have knowledge, putting aside flattened path like city road or highway, places with uneven ground or bad footing caused my body to unnaturally put too much strength and caused fatigue to accumulate. Until now I avoided the problem by learning Viro's way of walking and also strengthening my body with magic. But from here on I should train to grasp the terrain's shape even while walking normally. Fortunately I was able to obtain night vision level 2 that surpassed the limit of human race, so depending on my training I should be able to sense my surrounding as good as beastmen. Dot. After I finished my simple meal by eating my last meat, I resumed my travel toward the capital. Although, there won't be that much danger if I enter a noble's territory. In the first place I avoided public eye and didn't even pass the highway so I didn't even encounter bandit. My stealth that had become level 3 easily hid me from wild animal. As expected monster with rank higher than 3 can possibly discover me, but that kind of monster should be very rare in the nobles territory that is close to the central. Dot. I encountered a monster not long after I thought that. Previously when I passed through a forest, I also encountered a hobgoblin but, guess that means what happened once can possibly happen for the second time. That monster's height is 2 meters. It's a humanoid monster with firm muscles and wide girth, but its head isn't humanoid but shaped like a wild pig. Dot. Question mark beast demi human, rank 3, magic power, 108 110 stamina, 343 413. Overall combat strength. 374, with body strengthening, 430. Dot. Dot dot it might be an orc. They are born warrior, lived by forming a settlement, and attacked human in group. A dangerous monster. I didn't expect for it to appear in this kind of place, but from the state of its stamina's decline, I guess it's another stray monster that drifted here from somewhere. In this sudden encounter, the distance between the orc and me doesn't even reach 5 meters. 
but the orc still haven't noticed me who is using stealth and located right behind it. I instantly strengthened my body to the max and accelerated my thought. This is a good chance, even though the opponent is higher ranked. He isn't an absolutely strong opponent with my current combat strength. If I fight it head on, then I will be in disadvantage due to the difference in our latent strength. That's why I'll use all the techniques I can use to deal with it. My tactic will be an assassination with surprise attack and instant kill with all my strength. I concluded my thinking in five seconds since I discovered the orc, wrapped a pendulum around a tree's branch, and leapt on a tree using the momentum of my movement. Buo. Although I gave no presence, the weak flow of wind from my movement caused the orc to turn around. But, it doesn't find me there. I created the shape and sound of a rabbit hiding inside a bush using dark magic. The orc's capable senses allowed it to instantly detect that and made it let its guard down. At that moment, I leapt even higher from the tree's branch. And then I don't use the usual black knife that is made from magic steel, but pulled out the thin knife that I fastened on my boot. It's the only remaining slender knife that I received from Sarah. It's a mass-produced blade made from steel and not suited for slashing, but it excelled in piercing power. The orc is covered with muscle armor over its whole body. But in the end that's only with the assumption that its flesh is strengthened with body strengthening. I stab the neck of the orc who is distracted, its guard down, and relaxing. The stab from the dare using my whole body's weight pushed in the slender knife until the hilt. Boo <laughs> with the sudden intense pain, before the orc's brain can grasp that it's being attacked, I let go of the knife and circle to its blind spot to erase my figure. Then I slashed its neck from the opposite side using the black knife. The orc's stamina value dropped down drastically, but the black knife stopped midway due to the muscle holding it back. I once more let go of the knife that is held down by the muscle and pulled out the steel knife that I received from felt from my waist. All this time it's a reserve knife that I had been using only for dismantling corpse, but this knife itself has really good quality and if it's just in pure strength from a single attack, it rivaled even the black knife. I circled behind the orc's back and swung the steel knife in a big swing believing that it will definitely turn around rust. And then the orc that finally realized that it's being attacked turned around. At the same time the battle skill of short sword that I unleashed avoided its thick skull and pierced into its mouth until its brain. I spent two weeks traveling since I encountered the orc and finally arrived at the capital of Claydale Kingdom. I didn't really collect any material from the orc and took only its magic stone. It seemed that a woman was under the impression that orc's meat is high class ingredient. But in reality the meat of monster that ate bizarre things has bad smell and won't sell. Its skin can be used as material for armor and the like and can be sold, but it would take time for me to dismantle that huge body so I gave up. Next person. My turn finally came while I'm running my mind. The admission gate for ordinary people in the capital is one of the places with the strictest security in this country, but even the guards are just human in the end. So if I show my tag from the adventurer guild together with my childish appearance, I'm able to enter inside without really getting suspected. The tag's name also isn't Arya, but Anya so it looks like there is no problem. Perhaps there is also a chance of me being suspected because Anya is the name of rookie adventurer who vanished together with the rookie hunters, so perhaps it will be better if I also re-register in the capital. Compared to the tag of Anya that is mostly brand new, the tag of Arya that has gone through many training and battle is in a very worn out state. Looking at it made me felt the flow of time. It was the beginning of winter when I left Master's place. But I'm also feeling the sign that spring will come soon. It already nearly one year since I ran away from that orphanage. I'll be nine years old in half a year. Until now I have avoided exposing my true identity as much as possible. But my action will also be hindered if I spend too much effort just running around trying to escape. Taking that into consideration. Remaking my tag in the Adventurer Guild of the Capital is an option. Either way, I also need to visit the Guild in order to obtain information about the Mercenary of Dawn. Also, Galbus said that his eccentric little brother is also in the Capital too. Let's try searching for him if I have time. While thinking of such thing, the streets of the Capital that I'm seeing for the first time is more thriving than even Dendal that is called as a metropolis. As I'm walking while watching the streets of the capital that is filled by so many people, I'm feeling a bit of unpleasant gaze on me. There are also the usual curious gazes but, this is different from that. Having said that, I don't think that this is the contact from Assassin Guild or Thief Guild member. In this city that is said as the safest city of the country, there shouldn't be any pro who would try doing such foolish interference. In that case, I guess that this gaze came from some stupid thugs who are aiming at country bumpkin who visited the capital for the first time or at traveler's children for extra money. I can just leave it alone but dot dot this is troublesome. I can also try reporting to the guards, but I'm still not attacked yet, 
and I don't know if they will take the words of a free person like me seriously. Well, perhaps this is a nice chance. They are someone who I can hurt in order to obtain information of this city. I walked away from the main street and entered a back alley. The unpleasant gaze also followed me. Dot dot three or four people. Considering the roughness of their footwork, perhaps they aren't even thugs but just teenage delinquents. Dot dot I don't think they'll have any worthwhile information. This is a miss. I passed through a place that seems like a street of bars with such mood and headed to a place with even fewer people. When there is completely nobody else in the surrounding anymore, the footsteps following me became a small jog. Four people as I thought dot dot all of them looked to be around the middle of their teenage until late teenage. They are grinning seeing me stopped walking while approaching. The young man who seemed to be the leader pulled out a small iron knife as though to boast of his strength. It's at that timing. You guys, what are you doing there? Another person's voice resounded from the entrance of the back alley where they came from. The silhouette of a familiar man with tall and solid body came out from there. This voice, dot 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 felt. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 12. Reunion. What do you want old man? This ain't your business old man. Go away old man. The city's delinquents got cocky because they have great number even after looking at the big man who seemed obviously strong. They showed off their iron knives. Dot dot this is filled right? One year's has so I can't be absolutely certain but, even so I never forgot him. That person who seemed to be felled formed a brutal smile that is clear to see even with the backlight behind him after hearing the young men's words. I'm not an old man. Dot dot a a. He is undoubtedly felled. Felled through his punch at the young men. The combat strength of the young men is around 40 to 50, so perhaps they have martial arts skill level 1 at least but, for Fell whose combat strength is more than 1700, it doesn't matter whether he has weapon or not. The self-proclaimed 20 years old dot dot is he 21 right now? Anyway Feld is felled regardless of how he look, so he doesn't need to be that bothered about age or appearance doesn't he? Without anything special happening, the delinquents are beaten up with bare hands. Perhaps that made him felt refreshed, felt finally noticed me who was watching the scene silently and raised one hand with a nice smile. You there, you alright? Yes, I should leave this place before getting dragged into anything troublesome. Even so this reunion with him who acted kindly to a street urchin who he met for the first time and taught me my first skill in order to live made me felt a bit reluctant to leave. My flat reaction might make him felt something from me. He let out a smile that bared his fangs, as I thought. You look really skilled despite being so young. I thought that you would have no problem even with this bunch picking a fight with you, but they told me to help you out. Dot. Dot dot as I thought. He doesn't remember a street urchin who he accompanied only for a day ha. Huh? Besides my appearance right now has changed drastically from the thin seven years old kid before. Although my appearance has only grown for around three years older due to my magic power, because I have grown a lot taller than average, I should look like a 12 years old if it's just from appearance. My clothes that consisted of largish shirt and short pant that made it difficult to differentiate whether I'm male or female must also play a part. But dot dot if he doesn't remember me then there is no need for me to go out of my way to remind him. It's enough with him simply saying that kid who couldn't do anything in the past is now strong. It's fine with just me alone remembering of my debt to him. There isn't any need for me to show it in my attitude. Them, those boys, when I turn my gaze toward the direction that felt is looking at, I found two boys looking toward here at the back alley's entrance. They seem to be at the first half of their teenage with extremely well-ordered features. Behind them there is also someone who seemed to be a woman wearing a hood, but looking at their appearance, I guess that person is like the two boys' bodyguard. They are dressed like commoners who are children of wealthy family but, for them to need guards. Their good upbringing that made me felt the necessity of them bringing guards is palpable. I don't know what kind of people they are. But they are still giving off such presents even while dressed in the style to blend into the city, so it'll be better if I don't get involved with them too much. Yeah, you there, are you alright? One of the boys, a boy with glossy blonde hair that is tinged red came nearby with a sickly sweet smile. Dot dot I'm fine. Can you thank him if possible? After all he was really worried. When I turned my gaze due to those words, I saw the other boy also approaching with a gentle smile that must be making him popular with many people, so for now I should say my thanks. Dot dot thank you. It's fine, no need for thanks. It's my duty to protect the people. As I thought they are noble children huh? I remained her due to my reunion with Feld but, as expected I should just leave. No, I'm really thankful. I said my thanks once more with inoffensive words and tried to leave the right away, but the first boy with reddish blonde hair secretly whispered to me as I passed him. You dot dot you are dressed like that but, you're a girl right? Dot. I unconsciously stopped just for a moment due to the unexpected words. Then he moved in front of me to block my way and peered at my face that is hidden by the shawl. You see, 
I'm interested with strong girl. The boy with reddish blonde hair grinned. The one who saved you directly said that you're apparently strong enough to not need to be saved. I wonder, what is the reason for someone like that to dress like a boy and enter this kind of back alley? It looked like the blonde haired boy genuinely wanted to help me, but this boy interacted with me because he found me suspicious. What's wrong, Mihail? It's nothing. Uh, for some reason this kid doesn't feel like a stranger to me. He dot dot now that you mention it, I don't know what's his hair color but, somehow, it feels like he has similar atmosphere with you Mihail. Perhaps those words that were said by the blonde haired boy uh, drew interest. Feld and the indifferent hooded woman also approached. Dot. Troublesome. It will become a hindrance to my work after this if I try to forcefully break through them. And then if I got suspicion placed on me, not to mention Feld. The hooded woman behind her will also surely make it really difficult for me to escape. The strength that I'm sensing from them convinced me of that. I'm indebted to Feld. I don't plan to be Feld's enemy but, I'm also not feeling like opening up myself to all the people around him. While I'm looking if there is a way to get away from here peacefully if possible, Feld talks to me casually again without even knowing my feeling. You are still young, but you're an adventurer right? Your clothes and also your equipment are worn out. Won't it be better if you fix them? Dot dot yes. I'm looking for a dwarf armorer in the capital. Not only my adventurer tag, the equipments I'm wearing are the items that Master used a hundred year ago without any modification, so putting aside the leather and metal parts, the parts that are made from cloth are at their limit. It's not to the degree that has to be fixed right away but, Feld is bringing up a topic that is just right in nice timing, so I'm making use of it. Either way I'm planning to go to the shop of Galvez's brother if I have time, so I'm not lying. But. I was only told that his brother has equipment shop in the capital and don't know about any further detail. I said that I'm looking for this armorer because the blacksmith where I bought my weapon before introduced me before trying to leave. But then the hooded woman who hasn't said a single word until now suddenly spoke up. I know the location if you're talking about a dwarf armorer. That person said that while pulling down her hood and showed her face, she has soft looking brown hair and the ears of wood elf that is said to have bad relationship with dwarf. Dot. From what I inferred based on their conversation, Feld and the Wood Elf woman are serving as bodyguards for the noble boys who are secretly visiting the city. Well, that was what I thought the moment I saw them, but for some reason those two boys together with Feld and the Elf woman all ended up heading to the dwarf's shop too. I really don't understand how things ended up like this. I thought that I would find some suitable reason and separated from them midway but, that boy with reddish blonde hair Mahail strangely won't let me get away. Because of that the other boy, uh, also got interested with me and now I'm walking through the street with the two boys at my sides. What to bind? HTTPS colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io04.jpg. Both their attire and their look were good. I don't want to stand out for standing between such two people, and yet I'm completely standing out. You're really untalkative. Why are you so on guard like that? Dot dot there are this many people around us. He dot dot so you noticed? The reason I can't take the risk to run away from them because other than them, there are also several other people blending among the crowd protecting them. If they are noble, I thought that the people guarding them might be the people from Sarah's organization and I was on my guard, but their bodyguards can't even erase the sound of their footsteps. These two are being followed by people who fought by wearing heavy armor and weapon. Most likely these bodyguards a knight or soldier. I don't understand why these two aren't accompanied by people from the proper organization for this kind of job, but perhaps that's why they are putting people like Fell to act as the bodyguard on the surface. Anyway, the act of running away from these boys forcefully is like announcing by myself that I'm suspicious. Mihail, what are you talking with him? It's rare for you to be that interested with other people. I already said it just now right? He just so doesn't feel like a stranger for me. Dot. I don't know what is Mihail thinking but, er uh, said that he and me are similar. Something much like impression can change depending on the time so it can't be counted on, but the reason Mihail said that I don't feel like a stranger is actually something that I too can understand a little. It seemed that Mihail and er uh, are friends, but I'm feeling a sense of distance from him where he is drawing a line in his relationship with other people. I got the feeling that the way he put a distance with other people like that is somewhat similar with me. It seems that er uh, doesn't notice that I'm a girl. But Mihail who noticed that felt like he is wary toward me and probing for my true identity. The two who are following right behind us too, felt is surely not paying it any attention at all but, with the way the elf women are watching me scrutinizingly, she might have noticed that I'm a girl. Hey, what kind of work a young adventurer like you do? Er uh, paid no mind to the awkward atmosphere and talked to me with a smile. It's not like I have any duty to answer him but, Mihail's amused gaze weighed my mind, 
So I helplessly opened my mouth. Goblin hunting and collecting medicine ingredient. Goblin hi dot dot I also want to try fighting it though. I wonder if it'll be possible for me. Most likely he isn't talking about his strength but about if he is allowed to fight with his standing or not. But I pretended to not realize that and simply concluded the talk with the fighting aspect. It doesn't matter who. Anyone should be able to kill if they have the willingness for it. Something much like a fight in the end simply boiled down to the matter of whether you could kill your opponent without hesitation or not. No matter how strong you are. No matter how overwhelming your strength is, if you don't have the resolve to kill your opponent, that will become weakness. Not killing your opponent where your life is at stake is just arrogance if I have to say, he. I heard Mahil's amused voice and turned my gaze to him. There I saw not just him and er, uh, but even Feld and the elf woman are staring still at me in puzzlement. Perhaps dot dot I spoke a bit too much. Dot. After that the atmosphere turned awkward again, but fortunately we arrived at our destination. The dwarf Sama shop before long. That shop is away from the main street. It's a street where there are also other shops like outfit shop for commoner and general store. The building is a normal private house made from white stone and mortar. There is only a plank attached on the door to show that it's a shop, so I might not notice that it's a shop if I pass through here without knowing. Although I said about a dwarf Sama shop, there must be more than one person who fits such description in this capital. There is no guarantee that the owner of this shop is Galvez's little brother. But if it's a dwarf doing the same kind of work then it's also possible the person here will know about the eccentric armra. He. It might be their first time coming to this kind of shop. The young masters Er and Mahal are staring at the outer appearance of the small shop with curiosity. In contrast the wood elf has a faraway look for some reason, which really left an impression. She who seems to be familiar with this shop opened the door. I followed behind her and entered and saw that the inside of the store is filled with a lot of light clothing. Dot dot equipments intended for female are lined up where there are equipments that only look like a dancer outfit, but they aren't just clothes. They are, armor. There are a lot of metal armor, leather armor, even items that contain magic power perhaps because they are made from rare metal or monster leather, although it's not my business. Seeing this made me worried if it's all right for such precious items to be left in the open and guarded like this. Jelf, are you here? The elf woman called out to the back of the shop. Then several seconds later, a powerful and thick male voice that seemed to belong to a middle-aged dwarf came from the back. Oh my Tilda, isn't this Myra Chan? You are bringing such cute children with you, just what is the occasion I wonder? Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 13 Eccentric Armor I understood from a single glance. This dwarf who is wearing leather top and bottom with large opening on the chest part opened, and posing with feminine gesture is the eccentric little brother of Galbers who gave me weapon. Jelf is a man who is a woman in the inside. It's my first time seeing it but... I know from that woman's knowledge that this kind of person existed. Although the elf called Myra knew about this beforehand, Feld seemed like he didn't know. He froze for some reason just like her and Mihail. I stepped forward through them, took off the hand protector on my left hand and placed it on the counter. It's an old thing but, can you fix it? Oh, cutie pie, you bring a really rare item with you here. It's using monster leather that I don't think I've seen before but dot dot what monster it came from I wonder? I heard my boots were made from Night Stalker but... I don't know about the hand protector. The toughness and elasticity are different so I think it was from different monster but, although the leather is still good for use, the other parts are reaching their limit. Amazi Ing, that's a really rare monster from the west. But, the leather part also has to be cared for you know, even though it's said to regenerate from the water and magic power in the air, there is a limit to it. I can fix it but dot dot I have a small request for you. So can you come with me to the back? Um, got it. W wait a second. Jelf pulled my hand to go to the back. But Mihail hurriedly caught my other hand and stopped us. Dot dot what? You ask what dot dot you? After looking at dot dot him, aren't you thinking anything about it? Mihail should be wary and suspecting me whose identity is suspect. And yet why is he this panicked and even grabbed my hand to stop me from being dragged away? If you're talking about Jelf's appearance then, I know from knowledge that this kind of person exists. It isn't really meaningful to bother about it that much if you know about it right? When I said such thing. Feld and the elf Mara opened their eyes wide in surprise. Jelf who seemed to be used to hear similar words like what Mihail said was watching us with amusement and he spoke in admiration after hearing my words. You, you are really manly despite being so cute aren't you? And then, Ponna hit his hand with a face that looked like he has found an answer to his question. Aa, I see. Mihail, you kept talking to him because you are concerned and worried for him huh? After being told something like that. Mihail who has been making a composed smile all this time made a sulking face as though he is a kid. Dot dot got a problem with that? This guy is a reckless guy who will enter a dangerous place without a care. There is no way I can just leave him alone. Dot. 
What, could it be his action and words that seemed like probing at me until now were actually because he was worried for me? Perhaps I had done and said something dangerous without realizing it but dot dot what a troublesome man. He should just say it openly. My my, you don't need to worry like that. I won't kidnap your princess to somewhere. I'm an armorer. There is just this armor that I want this cutie to wear for a bit. So please wait here for a little. Jelf winked one eye with long eyelashes heavily. It made my hair stiffened. Jelf dragged me to the back of shop with that opening. Er and Feld's muttering overlapped and reached my ears at that moment. Dot dot princess. Dot. I was dragged forcefully but, I didn't resist because, it's strange for me to say this but, it might be because I felt something like motherhood from Jelf who is a male. You're really a child with nerves of steel. Even Myra Chan became tearful with convulsing expression when she first met me you know. No wonder Galbus took a liking to you, dot dot how do you know? Galbus told me to try meeting his little brother, but I haven't mentioned about it at all to Jelf. The knife on your waist. It's the one that Elbers made in the past right? It looked like the person himself didn't like it but, he is actually really attached to it. For you to receive it is the proof that he took a liking to you greatly. I bought it dot dot after a fashion. I still haven't paid the price though. It's the same. Elbers won't even sold it if not to someone who he liked. Well, that's why I'll give it my all and do my best. Dot 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 with what? Dot dot w well, it will be fine. He is an eccentric but. He isn't a bad person at all. The elf Myra gave that reassurance that wasn't reassuring at all. It seemed that she had been in the care of this armorer ever since she was still a low-ranked adventurer, but she didn't sound persuasive at all even if she said that while wiping the cold sweat on her face, Mihail thought with a frown. The warrior Feld and the spirit user Myra were adventurers that Mihail's grandfather introduced to serve as the crown prince's bodyguard. They were the members of Adventurer Party Rainbow Sword. It was a famous adventurer party that his grandfather was friendly with since his youth. The members other than the dwarf leader and the elf Myra had changed several times, but due to the party's achievement and reliability, even Melrose House had asked them to do many requests until now. Currently the party members numbered four people since the party's sorcerer retired several years ago and so the party was refraining from doing any full-scale work. But the three members other than the scout who was searching for a new sorcerer had started doing activity together again since around a year ago because the efficiency was bad when they all moved around individually. And then this time the dwarf leader didn't join with the work this time as a guard inside the city. Only these two served as bodyguards. The city field trip this time began from the wish of the crown prince Sir and von Claydale. But that wish was realized because of Mihail setting it up because he wanted to show the reality to Ern who was somewhat lacking in tension similar like her mother the first queen who was formerly the daughter of a Viscount. Mihail and Ern were friend, but their way of thinking as noble was different. Mihail was trying to determine whether Ern was a suitable person to be the next king. Mihail fundamentally didn't trust other people. He trusted his family but he thought that only his grandfather was worthy of faith. It would be a different matter for trusting someone as a noble but, if he learned that Ern wasn't worthy for his trust as someone to serve in the future. Mihail would abandon her and supported the second prince who was still young or the first princess who descended from the lineage of genuine high rank noble. He would consider such act as something that couldn't be helped. This city field trip began from such thinking but, Mihail encountered her in the middle of that. She was blending with the crowd inconspicuously. However, his gaze was drawn to her for some reason. When he was a child, Mihail liked to see the portrait of his aunt who left the house before he was born. She was a beautiful woman with dignified or a gentle smile. The feeling that Mihail felt at that time might be similar to a first love. She was dressed in male attire but he knew that she was a girl from a glance. She had similar atmosphere with a woman in the portrait, so his gaze was drawn to her the instant he saw her. When Mihail unconsciously followed that figure with his eyes, the adventurer Feld also noticed the girl for a different reason and told him that he was being targeted by some delinquents. The girl looked even younger than Mihail. But he looked like he was quite strong despite her age so there would be no problem even if they left this alone. Feld explained and asked what they should do. The usual Mihail would just ignore it but, Mihail hesitated just for a moment and it was at that timing the sheltered Irvin said to save him, and that was how Mihail ended up getting involved with her. The dense Feld and Irvin didn't notice her gender, but Mihail felt irritated at her lack of vigilance that was like a child who lacked common sense. Why didn't she realize that she had an appearance that attracted people's gaze? Because of that she was even drawing needless troubles to her. Mihail should be someone who drew a line that separated him from other people. But he couldn't understand why his heart was disturbed to this degree toward this girl that he even ended up saying unnecessary cutting remark to her. He sulked when her and pointed that out. He was made to realize of his childish part that he had forgotten along with the growth of his body, and the girl was dragged away by the eccentric while he was in astonishment. Dot. Okay, 
Sorry to make everyone wait. The eccentric dwarf Jelf returned. He couldn't do something like peeking due to his pride as a gentleman, but when he turned his gaze to check whether the girl was alright. You are, as expected from Jelf. Myra sounded like she had expected of what to come. Mihail only heard her voice. But all the men including him couldn't say anything from surprise. Jelf dot dot it's a bit hard to move in. I wonder, if it's still too big for you? Her appearance was completely different from before. The girl was wearing leather short boots and knee length skirt of leather dress. Her two arms that extended from the sleeveless shoulders and the white calves that extended from the skirt looked dazzling. Mihail unconsciously averted his gaze with embarrassment. Even so what drew his eyes the most might be her face. With the boorish shawl that hit her face removed. The untied hair with the ash dirtying it vanished hanging down on her shoulders, the pink tinged blonde hair that looked shiny and vibrant jade green eyes, they were really similar with the portrait of the woman that Mihail admired and harbored a feeling toward that was like first love. You dot dot are a woman. Compared to that line of felt who didn't read the atmosphere at all, the attitude of Ern who was staring with reddening face beside him was more irritating to Mihail for some reason. It's the prototype that I created previously for temporary sewing but. I'm glad it can match your size with just simple adjustment. Use it for now until the repair of your equipments is finished. Then the next time you come you can tell me how does it feel wearing it. Dot dot yes. It seemed that this outfit that I was told to change into is lent to me as replacement until my equipments repair is finished. Dot dot but. I can't understand why I'm given full body equipment to replace hand protector and boots. Furthermore Jelf even saw through the illusion of ash on my hair instantly. Dispelled it, and even combed it. That attire. Originally I should be the one wearing it but, I prioritized shape and function too much that it became impossible to wear for me. Even though he is a dwarf, he wanted to wear this kind of thin and fluttery thing huh? But, he said that it was for temporary sewing but, it seemed this equipment is properly using real leather. Although thin, its defensive power is considerable and it also provided softness and elasticity to some degree. Dot dot also, take this with you too. Wear it properly okay? No matter what okay? Yes. At the end Jelf pulled something from the shelf where he put thin fluttery clothes and made me grasped it. What's this dot dot he was completely shocked when I changed but, is this thing related to that? More importantly, I was told that this attire is made from normal leather so I won't stand out but, am I really more inconspicuous like this? I don't want to stand out because after this I'm going to work. I dressed as man for that but, Jelf told me that soon I would be unable to hide my gender by dressing as man. He persuaded me that if that was the case, it would be better if I didn't use male clothing but attire like cloak to hide my body and made my age and gender ambiguous and wore equipment that prioritized function. He told me that this is the normal attire for female adventurer recently but dot dot Feld and others are looking at me with dark founded face. So it made me felt somehow anxious. Perhaps that's why even though what Jelf did is the same like Galvez who gave me this black knife, I'm feeling a bit reluctant to thank him honestly. You dot dot you are a woman huh? As expected it's obvious with this appearance. I received such puzzled impression from Feld, but for some reason such inconsequential comment made me felt a bit gloomy. The atmosphere is getting awkward. So let's leave this place right away. I can ask more about this equipment and my equipment that I entrusted to Jelf later when the repair is finished. At this rate it feels like they'll also go with the flow and accompany me until the adventurer guild. So I go outside first, pointed behind me at the nearby person who seems to be a knight that they are still inside, and then without stopping I blend with the crowd and vanished. Then I heard from a father voices looking for me. After that I checked the item that Jelf put in my grasp before parting. This thing. In that woman's knowledge it's called an underwear. It's a small thing made from cotton and it's the type that is tied at the sides with string. Dot. Originally I'm going to head to the adventurer guild from here to investigate about my target, the mercenary of dawn, but it's possible that Feld and others will also head to the guild, so I should wait for several days before going there. Even so I still need to obtain information, because I shortened my traveling time to here, it's possible that my contact from assassin guild still hasn't arrived to the capital. But. If it's not a contact, but a watcher with some level of strength, then it's possible that they also use the same path like me. Nothing happened at that day. But, when at the next day I did the same thing like yesterday, killing time by sitting on a wall at a back alley near the capital's cathedral while using stealth to deceive the eyes of normal citizens, after around two hours passed a voice called out to me from the shadow of the tree a little bit of distance away. Ash covered, there is something that I want to ask you. Dot. As I thought. Someone from the guild contacted me. But, instead of saying I have information, it's there is something I want to ask instead. What's the meaning of that? I jumped down from the wall and started walking to the opposite direction of the voice. Dot dot oi. The voice just now called out to me again from inside a different shadow. 
but I'm not planning to stop. I don't have anything to say to someone who won't say themselves. Dot. The watcher fell silent at the words that I muttered. Several seconds later, a cat beastman with her long hair fluttering behind her appeared from the gloomy alley in front of me. I want to ask you something. Ash crown. Dot dot what did you do to Guy? Dot. No way. Dot dot shadow user radar. Huh. HTTPS colon slash slash book pervert dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io 5 dot jpg heroin survival volume 2 chapter 14 shadow user radar shadow user radar race beastman cat magic power 233 235 stamina 240 240 overall combat strength 855 with body strengthening 1017 Dot dot this woman is most likely shadow user radar. I've roughly memorized the general peculiarity of the presence of people in that assassin guild northern frontier district branch, even the ones who were hiding from me. Stealth isn't something for the sake of hiding, but for the sake of not getting found out. Even if someone tried to hide perfectly, if I understand that they are definitely there, it will become an out of place feeling, and if it's too perfect then a peculiarity will form there. And if I can just memorize that peculiarity then seeing through stealth also become possible. Among them, the only presence that I couldn't find despite knowing that there was an existence there was only the shadow user radar. I'm guessing from the information I have and the trait from their nicknames, and this woman is the only one who isn't registered in my memory, which means she is shadow user radar. Radar is glaring at me. In response to her question, I pushed my emotion to the bottom of my heart and tilted my head slightly. Guy, Dino also asked me about him but... There is no way I know anything right. I was away from the guild for a job. I disposed Guy's corpse together with the rookie hunters so that not a trace of him remained behind. There shouldn't be any proof at all about me murdering Guy, but Radha is suspecting me. I wonder why. Kira said that she requested Guy to attack you. Did he appear at your location? The sharp glint and pressure that are unique to Cat Beastman pierced me. My heart almost leapt for a moment. I suppressed my heart even deeper and narrowed my eyes without a single change in my expression as I stared back at Radha. Please stop with all the accusations. Even if he came to where I was, he might be dead from the dungeon's monsters. I didn't expect that there was such strong horizontal connection between the members of Assassin Guild. Besides it was surprising that Kira was leaking information that was disadvantageous for herself but... Is there a reason for her that made it fine to talk if it's with Radha? Dot dot there is no way Guy will lose against some random monster. That child has the strength to fight equally even against me if it's in a head-on fight. Dot dot there is no way Guy can lose. Unless someone set up a dirty trap for him. In that moment, dark colored magic particles mixed with killing intent surged from Radha's whole body. I also unleashed my magic power at the same time with that and took out throwing weapon using the shadow of my palm as the intermediary. Radha and my killing intents clashed. The presences of the small animals at the surrounding vanished as they scattered away. Is she planning to kill me in the middle of city at noon like this? I accelerated my thought and constructed several fighting patterns in my mind, but Radha suppressed her killing intent and threw a bundle of paper on my feet. Dot dot we will talk again after the job is over. The information from one other contact who was following and investigating the mercenary of Dawn is written there. Let me see how someone at your level is going to fight against rank 4 adventurer. Radha spat out those words before she began backing away without showing her back at me. Dot. What is Guy to you? When I asked her that before she vanished, Radha turned her eyes that were filled with anger just for an instant. Then she left behind a last whisper while vanishing into the alley's darkness. He is my precious little brother. Radha and Guy were raised in an orphanage of a small city at the north. Both of Radha's parents were beastman adventurer. The two of them left the beastman country trying to strike it rich. They dived into dungeon many times before one day, they didn't return home and left the young Radha alone. There were quite a number of demi-human even at Gladale Kingdom that was a human country, but as expected there was subtle prejudice at the remote region. There were not May who had regular occupation. Radha who was left alone was entered into the orphanage by an adventurer who was acquainted with her parents, but Radha who was a beastman who wasn't even a legitimate citizen was already really lucky just from being able to enter the orphanage. Even so she couldn't get close with the human children and was isolated. When she was five years old, a Krusian baby was sent to the orphanage. Even Krusian who had different skin color was rarely discriminated, but in the end that was only between adults. In the case of uneducated children, they would exclude those who were different from them to a cruel degree. The older orphans were tasked with taking turn to take care of the baby, 
but the orphans disliked looking after that baby who was named Guy. They pushed the task to Radha who was still five years old. The black baby should be looked after by a black cat like you. Black eyes and black hair. She was teased as black cat because she was the only beastman in the orphanage. Radha got the task pushed on her together with those heartless words, but while she was at a loss of what to do, Guy grasped her hand with his small hand and smiled. That sight made the young girl decided, this boy dot dot I'll protect him. She changed his diaper with clumsy fingers, patiently gave him goat milk, protected him desperately from the other orphans and cold. It made Guy idolized her as his elder sister, while Radha also loved Guy as a little brother. The two sought each other to heal their loneliness. When Radha and Guy became 12 years old and 8 years old respectively, the two stole food and money from the orphanage that was cold against foreign thing and ran away. Guy. If the people of this country called us black, let's live in the shadow then. Yep, Radha. Let's show them our strength. Radha received instruction of combat and dark sorcery from her adventurer parents in the past. Guy also had the high physical ability that was unique to Cruzian people. They gained strength in the blink of eye. The two hid themselves in the slum district, attacked drunken people or old man in moonless night and killed them, stealing lives and little money. That act naturally provoked the anger of the local thief guild but they were discovered by someone else before the thief guild could. The one who called out to them was a member of assassin guild. Dot. After that several years passed, Radha grew more skilled until she got called as shadow user due to her stealth type skill that was characteristic of cat beastmen and her talent in dark sorcery. As for Guy, although he was only evaluated as rank 3, he had grown to become a warrior that was acknowledged even within the guild for his head-on battle skill. That guy one day went out to follow a rookie child and didn't come back. It wasn't rare for a task to last until several months in the assassin guild. Radha too wasn't anxious although she was feeling slightly worried, but then Kira came to talk to Radha which was unusual for her. Radha and Kira's relationship wasn't good or anything. The number they talked could even be counted because of their difference in personality, but Kira confided that he requested Guy to hurt the new member. Hey. Radha, don't you think it's strange, Guy taking this much time just for that simple job? Radha guessed from those words. Most likely Kira knew of her relationship with Guy and she was trying to direct Radha's ill will toward that child. She knew that there was a quarrel between that child and Kira. She also felt anger toward Kira who dragged her into such nonsensical matter, but Radha prioritized Guy and avoided making trouble inside the guild. She then volunteered to head the capital where the child should be at as a contact from the guild. Her task also included being a watcher in case the contact this time made a blunder like allowing that rookie to escape or getting themselves captured. At that time it would be her duty to clean up the mess. And then when she arrived at the capital and met that rookie for real, that child possessed abnormal nerve and combat strength that were unthinkable for a kid. And most of all, seeing those eyes that were cold like ice made her convinced, this girl might be able to kill Kaino. She was convinced that she killed him. Ash covered. Su. I'll torture you to death with this hand. Dot. Little brother. Dot. Dot. Ha. Did she mean that figuratively? I felt Trader's existence vanished completely from the shadow she disappeared into before I finally let out a long sigh. She is still suspecting me, but. Dot. Dot. Well. Forget it. Radha gave me a lot of information from that short exchange about my contacts. One is following the mercenary of dawn, while the one who got dispatched from the guild is Radha. Even if they weren't related by blood. Radha chased me until the capital and even considered killing me. If she thought of Guy by that much, then that was an important information. Radha is strong. Even so if she lost control of herself from anger, there will be an opening no matter how strong she is, and if I understand her reason, I'll also be able to estimate how much anger she is harboring. Scaring the weak and angering the strong to create an opening is an old trick. Also it was just something that she said casually but, with the way Radha emphasized saying rank for adventurer. I think Radha herself is also a rank 4. From the magic power and combat strength of Radha that I saw using appraisal, and if what she said that the rank 3 guy was equal to her in close quarter combat despite her being rank 4, what made Radha to be worthy of being rank 4 must be her dark sorcery. Furthermore Radha made a mistake, she might be underestimating because I'm a child, or perhaps she lost control of herself from anger even though she was pretending to be calm. But she had shown the way she activated darkness sorcery to appear from the shadow and vanish into the shadow in front of me who can see magic particles as color. From what I felt, it looked like she can travel from inside the shadow to another shadow but, spatial teleportation should be impossible for someone of her level even if it's just for a short range, 
so I hypothesized that most likely it's a similar technique with my spatial storage that made the darkness of my body as intermediary. She must be covering her whole body with dark magic particles to make it possible to travel from shadow to another shadow that is connected to the original shadow by shadow or by magic power. A space that is isolated by darkness magic particles is in a state like vacuum, so living thing can't live in it but, most likely, it's possible if it's just for several seconds like how human can dive into water. But, there is a weakness with this shadow crossing. If she is hiding in the darkness like diving into water, in case she is hiding herself for more than several seconds, she definitely should be opening a hole to the isolated space of darkness. And then, the most important information that I obtained from the chance meeting this time is how I managed to perceive Radha. Radha's stealth ability surpassed mine, so I couldn't grasp her presence perfectly but, at the very least I was able to sense the out of place feeling when she entered and exited the shadow. Just like how I became able to designate a person to some degree with their presence, Radha was able to identify me even after I changed my outfit and erased the ash on my hair must be because she is also remembering my presence. It seems like I'm at a disadvantage with how Radha can identify me while I can only sense Radha vaguely through an out of place feeling. But the fact that I know that has become an advantage for me. A fight between dark sorcerers is a fight of deceiving and confusing each other. Combat strength isn't that important in such fight. What's important is your power of observation and insight to grasp the opponent's state of mind and hidden information. Shadow user Radha was the worst opponent for me affinity-wise. In case my betrayal against the Assassin Guild is revealed and she is hostile against me. My survival rate will drop drastically as Radha whose presence I can't read is still remaining. That's exactly why. I'm really lucky that Radha came here as my contact. Radha, as a fellow dark sorcery user, I'll defeat you and become stronger. Die and become my nourishment. Heroine Survival Volume 2 Chapter 15 A City with a Dungeon After parting from Radha, I headed to one of the areas under the direct control of the royal family, where a large dungeon exists and I was told that's where my assassination targets this time are staying. Although, Radha should be watching me from somewhere. There is no guarantee that the information I received from Radha is accurate. But even if Radha falsified it to be convenient for herself, I have no intention to check it in detail. There should be one more contact, so I don't think that Radha would be able to do any major falsification, and in the first place she shouldn't be so foolish as to do a falsification that can be found out just from several days of investigation. And then most of all, if the information is convenient for Radha, Radha too will take action in accordance with it. As the result I'll be able to predict Radha's action. I purchased salt and spices that I will need in my travel and bought chemical ingredients that I'm lacking from multiple alchemist shops and stores. I'm also taking the chance to buy one cloak that was created from monster material. The protector that was made from monster material is just like the boots and hand guard that I received from master. It can regenerate small damage using the wearer's magic power and water moisture in the air. The degree of regeneration is affected by the monster's rank, so I can't expect much effect from the cloak that was created from the material of low-ranked monster. Even so apparently it protected the wearer from heat and cold far better compared to normal cloth or leather. Dot. Jelf, sell me a comparatively cheap cloak. Dot dot you are the only customer in my shop who ever asked me to sell a cheap thing without care of the design. Two days after my encounter with Feld's group, I visited the dwarf Sama shop once more. I waited for two days to avoid meeting Feld's group once more. A part of me also wanted to meet again with Feld but... I wanted to avoid getting involved with the noble boys who looked at me strangely. Well, okay, I'll choose something with the appropriate price, just, for, yo, you. Jelf winked his eye so heavily it felt like I could hear the sound of his eyelashes snapping. I nodded quietly and pinched the leather skirt that he lent me in the place of my equipments. Is my equipments repair finished? I want to change into them if possible. You, aren't perturbed at all aren't you? I have finished repairing your equipment but... You don't like what I lent you? It's not made from monster leather but I didn't cut any corner when making it you know? Jelf sighed for some reason. I shook my head to him. No, it's thin and light and comfortable to wear. It also made the gazes on me increased somewhat but, it also doesn't really matter if I warp my head with my shawl. In the end you covered your hair with ash again, eh? If you are applying illusion, it will only make you stand out unnecessarily if you do more than applying it likely just to cover your hair's glossiness you know? I see. I'll try it. And, why do you want to change? Isn't this just a substitute until my equipment's repair is finished? I was confused why it was necessary for me to have a total makeover just for repairing my boots and hand protector, but did Jelf plan to hand over this whole set of equipment to me? Even though I'm someone who Galba's introduced to him, he shouldn't need to be so dutiful to go that far for me. Then Jelf taught me why he has been so good to me. I'm creating equipment in order to wear cute equipment you know. But, 
I can't wear them well with my slightly chubby body. That's why, I have been searching for a cute girl to wear them in place all this time. Dot dot got it. I understand the words but, I don't understand the meaning. To be honest, I can't understand that passion but, it must be something important for Jelf. Even in that woman's knowledge, the category of cuteness is too vast that I don't really get it but, I think that if it's Jelf's creation then it then there won't be any problem with its functionality. Then I should at least pay the fee but, just like Galba's, Jelf will only accept one gold coin. Just that much should only cover the price for the cloak though. You can pay me when you have grown. Just accept them for now. Come here again later okay? There are still a lot of things that I want you to wear. Dot dot thank you. In the end I only returned the substitute boots and I equipped the boots and hand protector that has been repaired. Both the boots and the hand protector has become more comfortable to equip. It's like they are different things than before. With this I'll be able to move freely even in the dungeon. At the same time, I asked a certain gimmick to be placed at the inner part of the hand protector. Dot dot. It looks like I can use this. Dot dot. Now then. I left Jelf's shop. The tall palace that can be seen at the far distance from the capital's street entered my sight. I wonder if Elena is there? Is she fighting the force inside the palace that is trying to make use of her by her lonesome, Elena promised that she will become my ally just once no matter who is it I'm facing. But, it's still not the time for that, because I'm still not strong enough to be able to kill her enemy. Besides, I'm not planning to rely on her just for something like this. See you dot dot Elena, I'll go meet you when I become strong. Dot. According to the information from the Assassin Guild, that town of Erd where the large-scale dungeon is located is an area under the direct control of the royal family but apparently the one managing it is Count Lester whose territory is adjacent to it. Although that's not the full reason, the influence of Sorcerer Guild and Adventurer Guild in that town is strong. It seems that the town has a different atmosphere from a normal town. The time needed to travel from this capital to that place will take around four days using carriage that passed through some in towns. I don't need a carriage just from such distance, so I chose to use a route that cut through inside a forest. It'll also serve as a test of whether I can hide myself from Radar's monitoring. I left the capital and at the midnight of the first day, I was feeling a subtle discomfort from my back but it disappeared after I kept running inside the forest, so perhaps I was able to shake off Rada there. As expected it was a good choice to purchase a cloak made from monster material. With this no matter how excellent Rada's search ability is, I'm able to deceive her to some degree using the magic power covering myself. Like that I arrived at the town of Erd where the dungeon is located, just as rumored. It's different from normal town due to the vitality that is flooding the place. Because there is a big dungeon here, the main industry here is creating things using monster material. But the biggest reason of the vitality is because there are a lot of adventurer and sorcerer here, and there are a lot of shops here to serve them. If it's here then I won't really stand out even if I act somewhat strangely, and unlike the capital, even if I cause a ruckus here it will be harder for it to become a problem. First I bought cheap food like boiled vegetable from the town stall. I asked where the location of the adventurer guild is and headed there. The dungeon is the center of the city. A high wall was built around its entrance where several soldiers controlled the flow of people coming in and out while watching so that no monster will come out. It seems like it's dangerous to have a dungeon inside the town, but from the start this town was forming from a settlement around a discovered dungeon. So it seems there are no normal residents around there. The Adventurer Guild is also near the dungeon and it's bigger than any other guilds that I had seen until now except the one at the capital. I arrived at the guild at afternoon. It's a time where there is generally few adventurers but, when I opened the door and entered inside, I can still see more than ten adventurers. Perhaps because of the local trait that this place has a lot of adventurer, nobody paid attention just from someone coming in or out but the people of certain senior age frowned slightly when a child like me visited. It's not rare at the countryside for children to become adventurer. They have reason where they can't live unless they do so, so they became adventurer in order to live, desperately learn skill in order to earn money, and then they died due to their skill composition that is bad balance. But, the adults here frowned not because they pitied the children who got such fate, it's because they felt displeased that a kid like me stepped into a large-scale dungeon that is a battlefield for veteran adventurers. Dot. Guessing from the presence that I sensed from them, I think they are around rank 3 but, I'm feeling puzzled that people who are said to be mid-level adventurer can't measure someone's true strength from their presence and footwork. The female thief who kidnapped Elena was still better than them in that respect, but perhaps this is just how things are with rank 3 whose fighting experience is mainly against monster. I completely ignored that complicated atmosphere and headed toward the guild's receptionist. I chose a staff who looked friendly and addressed him. How many adventurer parties can be requested to show around inside the dungeon? When I announced that I'm looking for a party who can guide me to a deep floor, the friendly looking uncle told me amicably, this dungeon is famous, 
so you can make request for a guide until the lower floor. But, it will be difficult to find a guide until the deep floor. I think even rank 3 party will do if it's until floor 10. How about it? Is it impossible to go until even deeper? That will be difficult unless you hire a rank 4 party. Currently there are 3 rank 4 parties in this town but, whether they will accept the request or not will depend on the negotiation. Most of the adventurers in this area came here not to do request but to dive into the dungeon. Dungeon contain a treasure that stimulated humans desire. Anyone who discover it can possibly even strike it rich in a single night. But something like that only appeared once every several years, so the majority of adventurers are earning their daily wage by harvesting monster material and magic stone. This dungeon is famous because it's a dungeon where beast demi-human like goblin and orc appear frequently. Other than powerful treasure, in some cases dungeon also produced metal weapon and the like. The beast demi-human who lived in dungeon sometimes found those weapons and took them into their possession, so the adventurers can obtain them as extra earning. But. The danger level of a monster with weapon will shot up. This dungeon is recognized as a dangerous place but with good pay, so the guild can't act as intermediary for a guide to dive into the deep floor. For the time being I ask the staff about the request's market price, and the names of the parties that might accept such request. One of the parties that the staff mentioned is the mercenary of dawn that is my target this time. From the staff I confirmed that their plan of returning next time will be two days later. Two days later huh, dot, dot, in that case Radha will catch up and resume her watch over me. The timing will be just right. While I'm thinking that I'll check the inside of the dungeon before that, I noticed a presence following me from the guild. Is it rank 2 adventurer that listened to my conversation at the guild and came to offer their service to me? Or perhaps it might be someone who underestimated me as a child and wanted to attack me. Either way it will be annoying. If it's just someone offering, this dungeon will also be the first time for me. So I might take up the offer to show me around the low floor, but what should I do if it's an attack? I felt two weak presences. Also dot dot there is one really strong presence. I left the main street where the guild is located and continued walking toward the back alley where there isn't anybody. I don't know where I can find an area with nobody around but, regardless of the intention that these people might have, they will surely call out to me when I reach a place that is convenient for them. Dot. You. Ash covered. You want a guide for the dungeon right? We will take it up. A pair of adventurers who looked to be at their earlier twenty called out to me in a dark alley. Even so, I believed that I had reduced the amount of ash on my hair after Jelf's warning but, I'm called like that again even here. You can just pay us with all the money you bring with you. Well, even if you refuse we're still going to drag you to the dungeon after this though. Dot. I see, it seemed they came both for making an offer and attacking. But. Can they give any tour guide when the two of them only has around 100 combat strength? Such trivial though floated in my mind. But, where did the other strong presence went to? Oi, don't keep quiet. Speak up, Ash covered. The man irritated me while I am searching for the presence. I reached out toward him. Annoying. I took a step forward while hitting the man's jaw with my palm. The 15 cm arrow that shot out from the gimmick installed inside the protector pierced the man's jaw until his brain. Dot dot a. The other man let out a dumbfounded voice seeing his friend suddenly falling. Right in that instant, I jumped back to get away from that man. Exclamation mark. The next moment, the man's whole body is enveloped in burning flame. Dot dot as I thought. You're strong. The man couldn't even scream with how strong the firepower is and crumbled. A light-hearted voice of a girl came from behind him. Hey, how about I show you around inside the dungeon? Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 16 Dangerous Girl Pure white robe and wavy long black hair. Skin that is so white to a sickly degree. Deep dark circles around her eyes. The girl who saw me killing a man is smiling with innocence that is unthinkable from someone who has just killed. Her age seemed to be similar with me. From the amount of magic particles surrounding her. Her body must have grown from magic power just like me. If I have to describe her in one word, it will be dot dot dangerous dot dot I guess. Dot dot who? Who cares about something like that dot dot is what I want to say but, I'll tell if it's you. You can call me Carla. Dot. Carla race, human. Magic power, 375 395 stamina, 3145. Overall combat strength, 323. Dot. Immense amount of magic power and stamina value that is like a little kid. Powerful sorcery that can turn a single human into ash and the abnormality to think nothing of it. Dot dot she is dangerous. Can I kill her? With her stamina value, it feels like she will die easily if just a single hit land on her. But my instinct is screaming at me that it's dangerous to carelessly make a move against her. I killed for the sake of living but, Carla dot dot it's strange to describe it like this but, it feels like she killed for the sake of killing. As I thought. You're nice. You're different from some random human's trashes. Even after witnessing my strength, 
Your thought is only filled with the question of can I kill her? Dot dot that's the reason you came talking to me? That's right. You have off a bloody scent that differed from other people. Or else, are you also someone who likes to prattle about the preciousness of life? A bizarre pressure oozed out from Carla who is still smiling. For her she doesn't need any reason to kill but, depending on my answer, her reason for not killing me might vanish. Regardless of the reason, it doesn't matter at the slightest for the one who get killed right? Dot dot foo foo. You're nice just as I thought. I want to kill you and yet I don't want to kill you, don't you think that's lovely just like a romantic tale in a story? As expected she is that kind of person. Watching her, I stopped applying body strengthening on my body even while I'm still keeping vigilant against her. Hey, tell me your name, dot dot Aria. Aria dot dot the name really suits you. I was the one who asked but, what made you decided to tell me your name? I took anything that can be used to identify the corpses and threw them down the drain while sending my gaze for just a bit toward the girl who is smiling in enjoyment. I realized that I also don't have any reason to kill you. The instant I gave that answer, Carla broke out laughing so hard that she choked. Her low stamina value decreased even more by three points. Her purple eyes are shining fierily with me reflected on them. I don't know the reason but, it seems that I have passed Carla's muster, dot dot to the very least. She is thinking that it will be a waste to kill me right away. I felt that because I'm also feeling the same. I have no reason to kill Carla. Carla has obtained a reason to not kill me. She is an abnormal and dangerous fellow but, for some reason I can understand a single-minded way of thinking more easily than thousands of lip services that are lined up by the decent sort. Perhaps she is also the same. Her talking distance with me has been shortened by half a step compared to the beginning. I'm planning to dive into the dungeon after this. I had been doing that alone this whole time but, if it's with Arya then I want to try exploring with a party. Can you dive into a dungeon with that kind of stamina? A kid the same age like me is saying that she has been diving into the dungeon. The dungeon is a dangerous place. Even I who am a scout who has trained my stealth skill will die immediately if I got ambushed. That will be even truer for Carla. She doesn't even look like she has stealth skill. I can only consider it suicidal for her to dive into there alone. But I also don't think that she is lying. Carla is the same like Elena and me. I thought that she is struggling desperately in order to live with the strength that was stuffed into her. I have a reason to become strong and the meaning of fight, while Carla also has a reason to become strong even if it endangers her life. It's fine. If I die, further will grimace from losing his pawn but, I think mother will rejoice from the bottom of her heart. Carla laughed cheerfully while saying such thing. Her offer to dive into dungeon must be nothing more than just a topic to talk to me at first. From the perspective of a normal person, they would be in disbelief by the girl's action and they should also feel terribly uncomfortable. But dot dot the way she was acting so free without deceiving herself was worthy of trust far more than the like of Dina who was all talk and approached with fake smile and pretty words. Carla was honest only to her own principle. I'll leave you behind if you collapse. Of course, I'll be happy if Arya also die together with me at that time. Die on your own. Dot. We were having such conversation while ending up challenging a large-scale dungeon that is said to be a dangerous place by ourselves. Although we have grown bigger physically due to magic power, compared to adult our appearance is still childish. When such pair tried to enter the dungeon, decent soldiers who guarded the entrance tried to stop us, but a knight who came out from the guardroom saw Carla and opened the path in fear. So rude. He looked like he had seen an indiscriminate murderer after looking at me. Unbelievable. Don't you have any mirror at your home Carla? Mother is someone who is only interested in herself, so we have a ton of them. You are so pretty Arya. Surely you will be pretty even when covered in blood. Whether it's with your own blood, or other people's blood. Apparently Carla is a noble lady, but she can wander around without even any guard must be because she is a dangerous person with both strength and influence. This is a dungeon of beast demi-human you know. There is a rumor that it has a hundred floors but... The official number of conquered floor is only around 50. Official? It happened once in the past where a noble used money lavishly to brute force going through the dungeon with outrageous amount of casualties and reached until the deepest floor. You must have heard. There is a spirit of the dungeon at the deepest part of an ancient dungeon. Dot dot you mean gift? I had heard about it. A spirit is residing at the deepest part of ancient dungeon. The one who arrived there will be granted a gift that they wished for as reward. Is that the reason Carla is diving into a dungeon alone? According to Master. You can obtain powerful power that is accompanied with a very troublesome limitation that way. It looks like Carla is unhealthy, but she might be planning to heal herself with that gift. Only Goblin or Cobalt came out at the first floor. Look, they're coming. Yes, she didn't even need to say. I sense three presences approaching us. Aria, show me how you kill them. Dot.
she asked as though she is coaxing someone to pick some flowers for her. I silently pulled out a hidden weapon from my waist and threw it. One goblin that came right from the front got its throat hit and fell backward. It died right away after that. Gudja? The remaining two stood still because they can't comprehend what happened. I used stealth while closing the distance silently. The instant the goblins noticed, I cut the two's necks simultaneously with my black knife and stiletto, ending their lives. Just as I thought, you're pretty Arya. When I returned from reaping lives, Carlo narrowed her eyes in ecstasy like a girl admiring a plucked flower. Don't make someone else do all the works. Certainly, perhaps I'll do the next one. When two goblins appeared next. They ate the fire arrow and wind cutter that Carla fired simultaneously and died. Double spell her dot dot Carla mentioned that she can use sorcery until level 3. The sorceries she used were level 1, but their power is incomparable compared to the sorcery that woman used. If it's Carla, I got the feeling that she can kill her opponent even if they're level 4. Dot. It seems that Carla is genuinely intending to show me around. She chose the shortest course and taught me the path until third floor. Hey Arya, why do you think the dungeon's trap doesn't harm monster? Carla is unexpectedly talkative. When there is no battle, she will talk to me about a lot of things, whether it's a meaningful talk or meaningless talk. A dungeon is a monster. In order to obtain vitality and magic particle from living things that wandered into it, it drew humans and monsters and made them killed each other but, there are cases where ancient dungeon that has obtained intellect put traps. The traps aren't that complicated. Pitfall that drop you to lower floor, wall that will cause the ceiling to crumble when it's touched, and so on. There are traps with simple mechanism, but in exchange it will large size and easy to cause harm. Trap doesn't activate against monster? That's right. For some reason monster won't get caught by trap. It's not because they know the trap's location. But apparently it's the trap itself that doesn't activate. That's why it's said that it's the intention of the monster which is the dungeon. That's why I don't just charge recklessly. It won't be pretty if you get crushed and died. I see. Dot dot an interesting information. Hey, Arya, will you listen? I have a fiancé, and just the other day I met him for the first time. He. The tropic changed again. I still wanted to hear about dungeon, but I don't think she will change the topic back, so I stopped saying anything more. So indifferent. Well. It's all right. That person was really adorable. He is to my liking in a different sense with Arya. I pity him. I didn't do anything so horrible with him you know. I wonder if that person has ever even killed a bug. He is someone whose head is filled with flower field. I can't wait until the day come he got defiled and dirtied. Ah, but, I'll be patient until we marry. It will be more fun when he can't run away from me anymore don't you agree? If only your partner can also enjoy it. My. I won't let him die so easily. Despite appearance I'm someone who dreams of keeping an adorable thing as pet. But, that person also has other fiancés than me. But it's alright. I think I won't be able to have a child anyway, so I'll let them live until they give birth to a heir. I see. But, I won't let him cheat any more than that. I hate it when other people touch my toy. That's why you see, if that person look at other women than us his fiancés, I'm thinking of having that woman die in front of that person's eyes. It can't be helped if they have an affair, right? You also think so aren't you? I'm really looking forward to that time that I can't bear it. Multiple fiancés huh? Perhaps Carla is from a noble house with really high status. In that case she might also has involvement with Elena. Dot dot if she become Elena's enemy. Don't get too wild. It'll be troublesome if I got a request to stop you. Carla seemed to feel something from my words. She stopped walking and looked straight at me. Are you saying, that if it's you? You can stop me Arya? Carla's eyes pierced straight at me. Her purple eyes looked a bit lonely and a bit delighted. I too stared back straight into those eyes. If that's what Carla wish for, I'll kill you. Dot dot a a, how lovely. If I'm going to die one day, then I want to die from being killed by Arya. Dot. The dungeon tour ended when Carla's stamina can't be maintained anymore even by recovery medicine or magic. In fact Carla's complexion is already like a corpse. Her stamina value also only has 10 remaining, but Carla's parents won't be so worried if she can die so easily. Why is Carla diving into the dungeon that she went until this far? It's not just because she wants to kill. It's only because there is something that she wants to kill even at the cost of her life that she could obtain her strength. That's what I felt. It had become evening when he came out from the dungeon. There is a luxurious black carriage waiting outside for Carla at that time. Perhaps it's her daily routine. I parted with her there. I noticed the butler that came out from the carriage to pick up Carla and took a moderate distance from her. The Carla made an innocent smile and secretly whispered to me. Say, Arya. It looks like you are being targeted. Dot dot I know. This faint out of place feeling dot dot it's radar. I don't know whether she is able to sense it but, 
I don't think that it's strange that she can. Want me to help you with the killing? I quietly narrowed my eyes at her teasing and let out my pressure. I'll kill you if you lay your hand on my prey. Carla's strength isn't a match against Ada, but... If Carla said that she is going to kill her then she will definitely do so. Foo foo dot dot that sounds like it will be fun too, but I'll stop for now. Then see you later, Arya. Don't die until you kill me, dot. Carla left behind those ominous words and vanished into the black carriage. A part of me want to train for a bit more in the dungeon but, there is no need for me to expose my hands to Radha who is watching me. Besides my dark magic skill will reach the limit soon. I stayed in an inn near the adventurer guild in order to make Radha let her guard down diligently trained in the fundamental of short sword skill in my mind, and two days later in order to meet mercenary of dawn that should be returning from the dungeon, I headed towards the adventurer guild. Heroine Survival Volume 2 Chapter 17 Dungeons Trap The mercenary of dawn returned to the surface once every several days. They ran away with a family heirloom that they were requested to obtain and angered a noble who was their client. They took advantage that the heirloom is something that a noble can't show around in public and chose to escape to a dungeon until the heat died down. Even so, in order to resupply their consumable items and rest their body, they have to return to the surface periodically. Even so, I only know about their periodical return because they told the guild about it. But there is no guarantee that they will really return on that day. However when I checked at the adventurer guild, I found a party who seemed to fit the description exchanging magic stones and materials for money. It's a group of four that consisted of three men who seemed to be around their thirty and a woman. The red-haired warrior among them has combat strength that surpassed seven hundred, so that guy must be the leader of Mercenary of Dawn, the rank four Daggett. Dot. Daggett race, human dash warrior rank four. Magic power, 155 155 stamina, 326 380. Overall combat strength. 733, with body strengthening, 918. Dot. While his appearance and equipment fitted my information about Daggett, I tried using appraisal on him. In case there is a mistake with my prior information, it's possible that he has a skill that I can't sense, but currently I'm not seeing any major difference. I was told that his three comrades are rank 3, but it feels like their combat strength is higher than the average rank 3. Dot. Randy Race. Human Dash Heavy Warrior Rank 3 Magic Power, 121 121 Stamina, 378 423 Overall Combat Strength, 442, with Body Strengthening, 504 Dot. Duncan Race, Human Dash Scout, Hunter, Rank 3 Magic Power, 125 125 Stamina, 250 286 Overall Combat Strength, 403 with body strengthening, 468. Dot. Grinder Race, Human Dash Sorcerer Rank 3, Magic Power, 212 248 Stamina, 179 217, Overall Combat Strength, 541, with body strengthening, 570. Dot. The simple appraisal that I'm using doesn't read the information of the opponent's soul, but the information from their outer appearance. Dot dot the build of their muscle, the way they move the balance of their height and weight, the amount of life force and magic power that I can sense from them, etc. From them I skill estimated the opponent's strength, and coupled with my skill search where I can also see magic particle in color that has become level 3, I should be able to read someone's strength more accurately than anybody in this guild. The three other than Daggett have higher combat strength than the average rank 3 must be because they have multiple skills just like me. Even within the same rank. There will be a clear difference in magic power value and stamina when someone obtained multiple combat skills. In other words those three aren't just completely reliant on the rank 4 Daggett. All of them had trained themselves in order to be worthy to be a member of a rank 4 party. Conversely Daggett's combat strength is lower than Viro and Sarah is because his low magic power value. In other words, he is leaving other aspects of combat to his comrades while he only focused on improving his close quarter combat. This is the result of such division of role. That's my hypothesis. Certainly, this target will be too much for Kira or Guy. Even Radha will have a hard time to defeat them solo. It's troublesome but not surprising. I think they are still safe until now even after making their client angry at them because they are really good with making crafty plan or they have the strength that correspond to it. If such people formed a party. For me these people will become an utterly higher ranked opponent for me almost for the first time. I had faced higher ranked opponents in battles even before this, but my opponents were alone. I would lure them using my young age to make them let their guard down and took advantage of their weak point to barely grasp victory. But, with an adventurer party, 
Each member is making up for their comrade's shortcoming and they can display strength that surpass their true strength by making a good use of their respective forte. It's likely that this battle will become a divide for me. Will I become an assassin wannabe that only rely on petty tricks? Or will I become an adventurer who is in possession of assassin skill? I felt that I'm standing on a crossroad. I blended into the surrounding using stealth that is adjusted only to make me appear natural so that I won't gather attentions from other to me. Just in case, in order to cover up my objective for coming to the adventurer guild, I went to exchange the magic stones that I obtained from diving into the dungeon with Carla. They're the staff who I talked with before this seems to remember me. The friendly uncle came until the exchange counter. You there? nice timing. The rank 4 party that I told you before has returned, dot dot but, it looks like you already went into the dungeon by yourself huh? A kind girl helped and guided me for free. In order to escape the gazes that gathered on me due to the staff talking to me, I hid my face with my shawl while giving that answer. Then the uncle nodded with a gentle smile. That's great. Perhaps because this city has a dungeon, there is almost no young adventurer here so the old-timer staffs and adventurers are concerned. Did you form a party with that girl? In the end, putting aside the young people, the veteran adventurers are looking at me like that. I won't say anything bad about that. As someone who is hiding her true identity, such attention might be more troublesome compared to simply being picked on. She is a noble's daughter. I think it will be impossible to form a party with her again. The uncle's complexion changed when I casually said that. That person dot dot could it be a girl with long black hair and a sickly look? Carla is being considered as a person to be wary of in this guild. The uncle won't tell me the detail but, it seems that she is also being suspected for some other things too, like the disappearances of some adventurers during these several years. As I thought. Carla seems to be a daughter of a high rank noble. Apparently she is an existence whose information I can't ask about even in the guild. I'm being strongly advised to not get involved with her as much as possible. Don't spread it around but, a pair of young adventurers also just disappeared several days ago, so be careful okay? I suggest that you form a party with someone as quickly as you can. I'll consider it. The pair that Carla and I killed also got blamed on Carla. It can't be helped I guess. After all she didn't seem like someone who will bother with hiding the evidence. Dot. I saw the mercenary of Dawn leaving the guild from the corner of my eyes, so I also left the guild after thanking the uncle. They already vanished from sight when I got out, but it seems that the heavy warrior Randy and the sorcerer Glinder don't have stealth type skill. They are a bit far but, I managed to follow their presence just barely. When I followed their track while they are still out of my sight, they visited a general store and drug store for adventurer in order to resupply their consumable and then they immediately disappeared into a moderately nice and near the dungeon. If they follow the same pattern like before, they will dive into the dungeon again after staying for a night there. From the way they bought consumable, they should still be wary of retaliation from the noble, so I also continued to stand watch with that assumption. Dot. Even while I'm doing this, I'm regularly sensing the out-of-place feeling that denoted Radha's existence. I think Radha is moving inside the shadow or doing other things like eating when I can't sense that out-of-place feeling. Radha is also a human. She needs sleep and food too. If I move during that time, it's faint but I became able to sense her moving, so I'm memorizing that sensation. Radha didn't attack me even when I was alone. Radha should be thinking that I killed Guy. This should be a reason why she isn't attacking me even then. Although the connection between Assassin Guild branches is severed, Perhaps it will cause a problem of honor if she caused a big problem in other territory. That might be the reason. Besides Radha was that enraged by Guy's disappearance. She must be thinking of choosing a place to kill me where she can take her time to prolong my pain. Radha is thinking that I'm taking action based on the data she handed to me. In that case the location where she is going to attack is dot dot inside the dungeon. Radha was observing the kid who was called Ash Covered from inside a shadow. It was likely that Ash Covered was the one who killed Guy. It was the nature of assassin business that a lot of people were suddenly gone. Apparently the guild leader Dino planned to not question it any further, but Radha was convinced that the Ash Covered was the culprit as the result of her interaction with her. There was no proof, but, from her experience as an assassin, she sniffed the scent of blood from the ash covered. When she first used appraisal to her at the Assassin Guild, the girl's combat strength hadn't even reached 200, but if she used despicable method as befitting a disciple of a demon race, it would be possible for her to make Guy let his guard down. But even Radha couldn't kill the ash covered right away. The leader of the Northern Frontier District branch Dina called the ash covered as his fellow disciple and acted like her guardian. Most likely he did it as a warning to them because he was planning to keep the girl alive if possible in order to use the ash covered's master as a pawn too. If the disciple died, it was possible to direct the demon's anger to the targets. But that would be like a bomb that could only be used once. If they were careless, 
that anger might possible got directed toward the guild after the demon dealt with the target. Similarly Radatu wouldn't hesitate to make Dino and the demon into her enemy if it was for the sake of taking revenge for her little brother's murder, even so she was feeling indebted to the previous guild master who picked Guy and her. She couldn't take the initiative to do anything that could be considered as a betrayal to the guild. The ash covered was an eerie kid even from the eyes of Radha who had been killing since she was a girl. At the outside she looked older because of the growth from magic power but her actual age must be ten years old at best. And yet, she easily accomplished the assassination of the rookie hunters when it was thought that her chance of success was less than 50%, displaying an abnormality that was unthinkable for a kid. But the eeriest thing from her was her atmosphere. Even though her external appearance was nothing more than a 12 years old child, the people at the city who noticed her appearance would unconsciously follow her with their gaze. In a sense she possessed an alluring atmosphere. It seemed the ash covered herself didn't notice but, Perhaps, it was also possible that even Dino and Guy were bewildered by that atmosphere. Right now her childish appearance still stood out more. But if she kept growing at this rate into adult, the sign of how she would mislead a lot of people in the future could be glimpsed even from her current appearance. Radha felt more terrified than angry for her little brother's murder. If she couldn't kill her here, in the future that girl might become an existence that brought great trouble to the guild. She was feeling that with a slight cold feeling. Dot. It seemed that the Ash Covered would carry out the assassination of the target, the mercenary of Dawn inside the dungeon just as planned. The data that Radha handed to the Ash Covered had been subtly altered by her. There was other guild contact, so Radha avoided murdering the Ash Covered inside the city. She set things up to carry out the assassination inside the dungeon. Even so she didn't alter any information about the mercenary of Dawn. It wasn't because she thought that the Ash Covered could assassinate them solo but because she wanted to see the girl's hidden trump cards. Radha wasn't underestimating the ash covered. Putting aside her combat strength, she thought that the girl was using a despicable method that she learned from the demon. But at the same time, Radha was also thinking that even though she might get seriously wounded if she let her guard down, it was impossible for the ash crown to kill her with such low combat strength. It was said that using ingenuity, a human could fight an opponent of one rank higher than them at best. When the rank differed by two, even dodging a blade would become difficult, and it also became impossible for the lower ank to resist against the higher ranks sorcery. Radha was vigilant, even so she hadn't given up killing the ash covered by her own hands. She also didn't wish for the ash covered to get the table turned on her by the assassination target and died. She would crush the girl's trap, and when she got cornered by the target and despaired at the end, she would kill her herself. Dot. Mercenary of Dawn dived into the dungeon again just as expected. The Ash Covered also followed their track and disappeared into the dungeon. Rad also used Shadow to infiltrate the dungeon without getting found out by the guards protecting the entrance. Then while Radha monitored the Ash Covered who was tailing Mercenary of Dawn, she felt a faint discomfort. Dot. What? She was aware that the Ash Covered was skilled in stealth for a kid, but that was for a human. Large differences would show up in scout type skills like stealth, search, and night vision depending on the race. For a cat beastman like Radha, there was positive correction with her stealth and night vision skills. Dog type beastman he got positive correction to their search skill. Human was especially bad at night vision type skill, so it also affected their search. Because of that there would be a small difference even when they had stealth skill of the same level. That should be the case, but for some reason Radha almost lose sight of the ash covered several times since entering the dungeon. Dot. The distance between the ash covered and the targets feels strange. Just what's going on? Radha was confident with her sorcery shadow walker, even so it had its flaw. Due to the peculiarity of dark sorcery of space teleportation variety, the effect wouldn't activate unless she was completely isolated from outside world with darkness magic particles. And while she was completely isolated, information from outside couldn't reach her. Space that was isolated with dark sorcery like with expanded bag and the like would cease being an environment where living creature could survive. Radha too could only maintain the isolated space for several seconds while she was crossing the shadow. Normally she was only hiding inside the shadow by opening a part of the isolated space, even so she was isolated from outside information during that several times when she was moving. The distance between the Ash Covered and Mercenary of Down was shrinking. How could she stay hidden from Rank 4 Adventurer when she was that close? When they went down to the dungeon's fifth floor and no other adventurer was around, Radha didn't understand the situation and started to feel impatient. She approached them until nearby using Shadow Walker in order to obtain information. Dot. What's this? At that spot where she dispelled the space of isolated shadow, a small black shadow was floating in front of Radha. The usual Radha should immediately realize what it was. but. She was in the darkness because she was lurking in the shadow, and her mind that was starting to get impatient was delayed by a moment before she realized the true identity of it. In that instant, 
something flew out from that small shadow. She couldn't even dodge immediately and the hidden throwing weapon pierced Radha's throat. Dot dot su. She couldn't make any sound. Blood flooded her trachea and she couldn't breathe. Her mind was in chaos because she didn't understand what happened. Radha prioritized jumping out from the shadow first in order to escape from the attack. Then Iron Arrow and Ice Javelin suddenly came flying and pierced through her defenseless torso. Radha involuntarily fell on the ground. Then as though to finish her off, a small shadow appeared on the floor once more. The blade that flew out from the pierced Radha's right eye. This is the Ash Covered's knife. Then this small shadow is her sorcery. That sorcery was really similar with Radha's specialty. Shadow Walker. She was feeling the flame of her life was dying while her remaining left eye used appraisal at the Ash Covered who was standing among the mercenary of Dawn. With that she realized that they had been deceived from the beginning. Dot. Ash Covered Race. Human Dash Estimated Rank 3. Magic Power. 135-210 Stamina. 141-148. Overall Combat Strength. 374. With Body Strengthening. 432. Dot. What did Arya do to Radha? Why was she together with Mercenary of Dawn? To understand that one needed to go back to this morning. The members of Mercenary of Dawn left the inn around noon and immediately headed to the dungeon. The heavy warrior Randy and the scout Duncan apparently stayed in the same room. So they ate together at the morning in the first floor of the inn that doubled as a bar. The Dagant and Glinder who were sleeping in the same room woke up late. So as a result they came out at this time. They arrived at the dungeon after walking for a bit. Then they bought food that could be immediately eaten from a nearby stall, then they entered the dungeon right away. They won't come out for several days once they entered, but their luggage looked too few for that. From how Duncan put the food that they purchased into a bag, I learned that they possessed a bag with expanded space. In that case, my tactic will change depending on what the bag contained. Because even if I gradually wound them bit by bit or poison them, if they have high class recovery medicine inside their bag. All my efforts will come to naught. It won't be pointless to exhaust them using all those methods but, they also aren't an opponent who I can afford to treat that leisurely. In my tactic, I thought that perhaps I should neutralize Glinda the Sorcerer first, but it seems that I'll need to change the order of priority. But that's something to consider only after I deal with Radha who is following behind me. I want one with cheese between them. Thanks for the business. It will be three bronze coins. In order to avoid suspicion, I bought black bread with cheese and pickled vegetable as its filling from a different stall and spent some time. I watched the mercenary of Dawn entering the dungeon with a side glance while confirming that Radha is also following me. Then I too paid the stall owner with bronze coin and headed toward the dungeon's entrance. Previously I was stopped because I'm a kid. I could pass because of Carla's face. But this time I can enter inside because the guard is a young soldier. Naturally Mercenary of Dawn has gone out of view already when I got inside, but I raised my presence and started running straight forward without hesitation. It was written in the information that Mercenary of Dawn used a safe area around the 10th floor as their base. With their actual strength, they should be able to dive into deeper floor. But, their objective isn't for earning money in the dungeon but to kill time until the heat died down and it became safe for them. In that case I believe that they will head directly below without stopping by anywhere. I had investigated the shortest route to the when I came here with Carla. Dot. I ran through the dungeon's passage for several minutes without even really encountering any monster before I caught sight of Mercenary of Dawn cutting down several kobolds at some distance in front of me. Kobold is a rank 1 monster that looked like a stray dog standing on two feet. Their height is also only a bit taller than Goblin and sometimes they also carried weapon but their danger level really isn't that different from an actual stray dog. There is no way such low level monsters can have any hope against a level 4 party, so the three men dealt with the kobolds easily in front of Glinder who is only watching while yawning. They headed deeper inside without even collecting the rank 1 magic stones. I tailed them while maintaining a certain distance from them while carefully heading deeper. Normally, it's said that even through the shortest route, it will take around one hour to pass the first floor of this dungeon but they are a bit faster than that. They are already going down to the second floor in less than 40 minutes. The second floor is also not that different. There are only rank 1 monsters appearing, and very rarely there will be rank 2 hobgoblins showing up alone. At the third floor, the appearance rate of rank 2 monster increased just slightly. At fourth floor, rank 3 high cobalt will also appear rarely. At fifth floor, Rank 1 monster almost cannot be seen. Mostly there are only hobgoblins or high cobalt walking around on their own. This place is the limit for low ranked adventurer. Conversely speaking, even low ranked adventurer can come as far as here, but they won't be able to earn anything from here, so it became inevitably considered that only rank 3 party or higher will challenge this floor. After coming this far, there is no more other adventurer around us. Because if they are going to leave the dungeon at the same day, they won't come until this deep. 
and if they plan to explore for several days, they will go hunting at floor below floor 10 where orcs will appear in multiple amount. I haven't fought until this point, because rank 2 or 3 monster that came out alone isn't a match against them but, let's see dot dot I guess this area is just right. I took off the cloak that I was wearing in order to hide my gender, bundled it behind my waist, removed the illusion of ash on my hair, then I walked forward and closed the distance with them bit by bit. Dot. One, two, three. I closed the distance and gauged the timing. Then in that moment, the scout Duncan noticed my presence and warily turned around. Wait, there is something. Please wait, I'm not a monster. At the same time when Duncan raised his voice, I used the sign used between scouts that Master and Viro taught me. When I signaled alert attack forward with my hand, Duncan made a surprised face and whispered to his comrades keep walking forward. A girl. A child. At that, Daggett looked back only for an instant and muttered with a small voice. I took off my cloak in order to lower down their wariness and make them let their guard down. Recently it became more often that people didn't let their guard down against me because I had gotten taller but, a woman can also make other people lower their guard in her own way. I gauged the timing at first also because I aimed for the instant Radha vanished into her shadow so that she won't notice but. The scout of mercenary of dawn read my intention accurately because he is a skilled one. Randy, make loud footsteps. You girl, is there something coming from behind? Just like how I followed them while keeping distance of dozens of meters between us, there is also around the same amount of distance between Radha and me, so there won't be any problem if we talk with a small voice. Duncan understood the situation and made his comrade walk loudly. He kept looking forward while asking me with a small voice. I also nodded a little in response. I used that woman's knowledge and talked them with a moderate acting. Yes, something lurking in the shadow is following me. At first I thought that it's targeting me, so I used stealth and hid but, it kept following even then, so I thought that it might be targeting your group. That was why I called out. You dot dot you were following us? I I'm sorry. It was from the middle but. I wanted to come to the fifth floor. I only have a bit of money, but I'll pay. Don't be loud. Forget about money dot dot what now? This girl's combat strength is just 200. There is nothing she can do even if she trick us. Glind apparently used appraisal on me. She whispered that to Daggett. How is it, Duncan? Is there really something following us? Daggett asked dubiously. Duncan showed a focused expression. There is nothing dot dot no wait, there is really something. You will notice the out of place feeling if you know something is there. Even so it's not easy to find Radha's presence when she is hiding in the darkness. He is really skilled dot dot not just him. All of them immediately raised their guard, read my intention accurately, and swiftly took action. I shuddered from witnessing the true strength of a rank 4 party. At the same time, I'm also impressed by Dino's discernment that saw how the guild would also be harmed from taking them on as opponent and decided to ask Master to deal with them. Perhaps this is the pursuer from you know who? In that case it's our enemy. Randy whispered while making loud footsteps. Daggett nodded lightly and I sense that he is lowering down his wariness against me. Seems so. How can we doubt a cute little miss like this? I don't really understand about my own appearance but, as expected people can't really be wary against a woman and a child at that. Duncan and Randy smiled slightly at Daggett's joking tone while the lone woman in their party glined a lightly glared at me with a sulk. Even my shoddy acting was interpreted really nicely because I'm a child I'm a woman to them. Then what now? Let's see dot dot Duncan, can you detect where this pursuer is hiding? No, I still can't sense them clearly. What about you? Duncan recognized me as a scout and asked my opinion. This enemy is lurking in the darkness and sometimes their presence vanish completely but I can somehow sense when they came out. Should I try attacking with sorcery? You are a sorcerer. Huh? Then let's try leaving it to her. Glinder, Duncan, prepare yourself. Daggett immediately decided their course of action. After he instructed the rest with a small voice, Glinder gripped her staff and Duncan readied his bow. They are really skilled. That's why I can prepare a trap for Radha like this without her realizing it. Then, I'll count until ten dot dot here I go. I chanted the spell of dark sorcery while focusing my mind with more than half of my mental capacity assigned to construct dark magic. It's my first time using it but, I have checked its structure many times and I also had tried activating it until midway. Even so I didn't activate the sorcery until the end because I was restraining my skill level from going up. Shadow snatch. Blade crossed the shadow. The shadow took away life. The magic that I chanted while walking created a small darkness from the shadow of the palm that I clenched. I threw it to make it float behind me, measured the timing. And after I counted to ten while walking, I threw a hidden weapon to the shadow on my feet. This is a magic that used the application of Shadow Walker, the dark sorcery that Radha is using. Radha's Shadow Walker is a powerful sorcery, 
but it has lethal flaws from my perspective. One of the flaws is its great consumption of magic power. Rada is keeping it within limit by using the sorcery in standby state, but because of that she became unable to use any other sorcery at all. And then the biggest problem is that while traversing shadow, the caster is cut off from outside information. There won't be any problem when you use it for assassination by surprise attack, but in a direct fight like now, that state of being isolated from information for several seconds is lethal. If her timing of coming out and her location got pinpointed, it will become a big opening. That's why I limited my use of the magic by sending only my weapon through the shadow in order to avoid consuming a lot of magic power and being isolated from information. Thanks to that the level 4 dark sorcery became shadow snatch that is the equivalent of level 3 sorcery. The magic power consumption can also be suppressed until only a tenth from before. Question mark. I did my best to aim and the hidden weapon successfully hit around Rada's throat. Rada fell into confusion from receiving a surprise attack while she is in her absolute safe zone that she leapt out from her safe area shadow in order to avoid further attack. At her current state even I can land my attack on her, but I yielded the chance to the people behind me for the sake of laying more trap. Then Glinda's sorcery and Duncan's arrow pierced Rada's torso. It's still difficult for me to control shadow snatch. Even so I can maintain it if it's just for several seconds. I made the shadow that is still remaining to slide on the floor and threw another hidden weapon to below my foot. It pierced Radha's face from right below. Radha who is lying on the ground opened her eyes wide in shock as she looked at me. She is still alive. But, Radha, you die here. Duncan fired another arrow. It stabbed Radha's head and finished her off. I erased the shadow after confirming that and I felt something growing inside me with my magic power and strength increasing. Dot. Aria, Alicia. Race, human dash rank 3 1 up, magic power, 135 220 up stamina, 138 148 3 up, strength, 7, 9 1 up endurance, 7, 9 agility, 10, 12 dexterity, 8, short sword skill level 2 martial art level 3 1 up throwing level 2 strength control level 2, light magic level 2 darkness magic level 3 1 up non elemental magic level 3 1 up daily life magic times 6 magic power control level 3 1 up pressure level 3 1 up stealth level 3 night vision level 2 search level 3 poison resistance level 2 simple appraisal overall combat strength 374 with body strengthening 432 161 up. Dot. My skill level went up just as I expected. The level of magic power control also went up along with dark magic, and with it the level of martial art that controlled the flesh also went up. Dot dot I can do it with this. When Radha stopped breathing, the men sighed in relief, while the sorcerer Glinda approached me in excitement. What was that sorcery? That was the first time I saw something like that. How did you do it? Teach it to me a little. R. Yes. Dot dot uh. On her bouncing large boobs, I saw a necklace with greenish gem attached on it. I understood that it's the spirit deer that I was looking for. Its size is different but, the water spirit that I defeated also dropped the same thing, so there is no doubt about it. Glinda realized that my eyes are staring at the swaying necklace on her chest and grinned proudly. You're also a girl aren't you? The men at my place just don't get it but, this is really nice right? It's really pretty, and it looks like this also has the effect of strengthening your sorcery you know? But forget about it, teach me the sorcery just now please, if it's the necklace then I'll show it to you later. Yes, I don't mind. I smiled sweetly at the stolen item swaying in front of me and pointed my right palm toward Glinda. Originally it's a taboo to ask other adventurer about their trump card, but these people who were relieved after repelling an assassin ignored Glinda's action and only smiled wryly at her. Dot dot shadow snatch. I activated the dark magic and created a small darkness on my palm. Glind appeared into it with interest. How can you attack with something like Super R? The small crossbow gimmick installed in my left hand protector fired a short arrow at that moment. The arrow was sucked into the shadow and pierced the eye of Glinda who was peering into the darkness and reached her brain. Her remaining eye reflected my expressionless face while she quietly crumbled. Dot dot three people left. Dot. A. What's wrong? Glinda died instantly without making any sound. I swiftly caught the crumbling Glinda and spoke to her body. The three men of Mercenary of Dawn directed their attention at me. What? What's wrong? Oi, Glinda, you're too icky. The scout Duncan was still unwary, relaxed. He carelessly approached with an exasperated look. Tsu. In that instant, 
He seemed to see something when he met my gaze. Duncan's tension instantly rocketed up. I pushed Glinder's corpse at him. Wow, nobody is thinking that Glinder has died at this point. Duncan immediately caught Glinder's body that I threw at him. Then without delay I pulled out my black knife and brandished it far behind me. Double edge. Gwa. Duncan twisted his body while still holding Glinder's still warm body to dodge the short sword battle technique that I unleashed. But, although he dodged the first attack of the two consecutive attacks, because he unconsciously tried to cover for Glinder, Duncan got hit by the second attack and it left a large gash on his right arm. Dot dot I failed to finish him off. They are really capable. He must have noticed when he looked at my eyes. Battle had broken out after I only managed to finish off one of the targets. I'm still far away from Master's level. What? What's going on? Duncan. How is Glinder? Glinder isn't moving. That little girl is enemy. The members of Mercenary of Dawn are in confusion. Even so they ready themselves to fight from Duncan's words. I threw a knife at Duncan at that moment, but the leader Daggett immediately cut in and used his large sword to deflect the knife. Duncan, heal yourself and Glinder with potion. Daggett raised his voice while readying his sword to protect the two. But I know. The sorcerer Glinder held the healing role in this party. The tank Randy can also use light sorcery to some degree but... He should only be able to use heal just like other adventurers in general. Furthermore the majority of the healing potions that are generally sold has weak healing effect and intended for recovery more, so even though the potion can close the wound, the arm that has been deeply wounded won't be able to regain its full function. In my plan I would defeat Duncan and snatched the expanded bag where their potions are stored, but thing doesn't go as planned. I let out a small sigh while lightly swinging my knife to remove the blood on it. I pointed my palm up and made an inviting gesture with my fingers as provocation. Dot dot you bitch. Randy is enraged by my obvious provocation. Stop Randy. Something is strange with her. Duncan stopped Randy while holding his seriously wounded right arm. Duncan is wary against me after getting hit by my attack. As the party leader, Dagger chose to protect the wounded in order to calmly ready themselves. But Randy lost his senses seeing his comrades wounded. He ignored his comrades caution and headed toward me with sword unsheathed. This is the adverse effect of adventurer party that I thought. The adventurer guild recommended to adventurers to form a party instead of going solo in order for comrades to combine their strength so they can make up for each other's shortcomings while making use of their own strong point, heightening their survival rate. However, Adventurers got largely divided into two kinds from there. The commander type who kept the benefit for the whole party in mind while depending on the situation they could abandon their individuality for the sake of the whole, and the worker type who have come to a decision to only focus on their own role. I'm not saying that it's bad to be a worker type. They can display a performance that surpassed their actual strength under the leadership of the commander type. But, Randy who have been engaged only in his role as tank in this party from the beginning found it difficult to display his actual strength when he abandoned that role. You won't get away. I broke into the run deeper into the dungeon. Randy followed behind me. Randy. Even Daggett's voice that called to him to stop doesn't reach him. In this situation the best plan would be to wait until everyone is healed before the whole party gives chase by following the track, or choosing to withdraw. But Randy doesn't choose that. The first trap that I laid out is in effect against that. Don't think you can run away with only 200 combat strength. My combat strength when entering this dungeon at first was only slightly above 200. The combat strength that is visible with appraisal skill differs somewhat from each person based on the individual's sensing ability. That's why after Glinder told her comrades that my combat strength was around 200, Randy is under the impression that I'm only half as strong as him. But... My dark magic's level has gone up and the magic power's path that is flowing through my whole body has expanded. With that my body strengthening and martial art have also improved. My current combat strength has increased to a point that it's even close to Duncan or Randy. Even so this isn't opponent that I can be careless against. My short sword skill is still level 2, perhaps because of my body stature. And in the first place, short sword specialized in cutting skin and flesh. It's difficult for such weapon to wound a fully armored opponent who carried a shield like Randy. I sense the presence of the pursuing Randy while reloading my hand protector's gimmick with arrow. This gimmick is something that I requested Jelf to install my hand protector with the part of small crossbow that I received from Master. A sorcerer like Master used this crossbow for holding back enemy in close quarter combat. It was made from a tree ant's wood, with mithril as its core and flying dragon's tendon as its bowstring. Even when it's left in a state of error loaded inside, the string will regenerate from the user's magic power and won't turn loose. This gimmick can also be reloaded with one hand. It's easier to use than throwing knife in close quarter combat. I caught you. Daggett will catch up if I take too long. I judge that this distance is the best and lowered my speed after moving for 30 meters. Randy came charging like an iron cannonball. Pain. Gudja? 
the illusion of intense pain that I fired stopped Randy's movement as he groaned like a flattened frog. The effect of pain should be weak against Randy who is a tank specialist. But, Randy's guard was down because he never expected to feel pain this intense from a weaker opponent like me. Uh, I didn't let go of the chance and made use of my martial art and body strengthening that have become level 3 to leap at Randy's chest, struck up his jaw from below with my lunging palm, and then I planted a knife deeply into his exposed defenseless throat. A tank can only display their real worth when they have comrades as support. Your cause of defeat is because although that heavy armor is suitable for blocking heavy attack, you didn't notice the demerit of you fighting alone. So Randy's eyeballs rolled back. I pulled out my knife before his muscles stiffened. I jumped over Randy who is falling backward and without pause I dashed toward the former location of Daggett and Duncan. Dot dot two people left. Dot. The little girl came back. Randy? I saw him falling but I don't know any more than that. When I returned to the previous location, they have laid down Glinder's corpse. Duncan who sensed my approach is holding a short sword with his left hand while his wounded right hand is dangling down limply. Daggett is taking a stance with his large sword to protect Duncan who is in that state, but then he pointed his palm to me as I approached. Wait, you are sent by that noble right? Do you know what those guys have in their possession? Dot. Daggett raised his voice at me who returned. There is no point slowing down here. As time passed, they will regain their composure from their confused state and they will make a plan to fight. But, I noticed that they have readied themselves to some degree and so I stopped. The corner of Daggett's lips slightly rose up seeing that. Looks like you're going to listen. Those guys had spirit here which is a forbidden item. That is a magic stone from a spirit, something that is forbidden by the Holy Church of Fandora Theocracy to possess. Dot dot what does it matter? It's unclear what is the requirement for it to drop. But a spirit that is a spiritual life form can leave behind a magic stone that looked like jewel in a very rare case. Because the magic stone that water spirit dropped has water element, it wasn't really beneficial for me. But not only it contained powerful magic power as a magic stone, it seems that it also strengthened the element of sorcery although only a little. And then, because of its beauty that is like a jewel, it seemed there was a near aware humans intentionally summoned spirit to kill them for their magic stone. Spirits are important existences that govern the nature and magic particles of this world. The holy church can't tolerate the item that drive human with greed to hunt those spirits. Don't you get it? I don't know what you have been told that you attacked us, but it's that noble who is in the wrong. If you consider yourself to be in the side of justice then take my hand. Daggett? Daggett suddenly tried to win me his enemy over. It caused Duncan to look at him with objection. She is the one who killed Glinder. Even Randy. Look at the reality Duncan. In the first place it was because of Glinder's selfishness to own the spirit deer that we ended up getting into a quarrel with a noble. We need a strong comrade. Dot dot tsk. I get it. Their theft of the spirit tear was only because of Glinder's selfishness. Duncan nodded reluctantly after Daggett admonished him like that. He turned his gaze toward me and approached while covering his right hand that can't move. Dot dot I think I know how strong you are even without using appraisal crystal. If you're just being tricked by the noble, then please listen to what we have to say. Dot dot got it. When I nodded a little, Duncan smiled slightly. He put away his weapon and offered his left hand to me for a handshake. Then, first, clang. In that moment, the knife that Duncan was secretly holding with his right hand glided against my black knife. Sparks illuminated the dungeon's darkness. TSK, Daggett charged at that timing and attacked. I changed my position to use Duncan as a shield. This girl, Duncan who is used as a cover tried to get away, but I pressed his right hand that isn't at its best condition and closed the distance until our body touched. I fired my crossbow's arrow into Duncan's mouth. Gah, dot dot one more person, dot. Duncan. I rolled to dodge the large sword swinging down and took some distance. Daggett caught Duncan who grumbled while convulsing. He then looked at me with a face that is distorted with anger. You dot dot how? Did you notice? Why do you think I wouldn't? In the first place, I have heard that the noble requested the assassin guild instead of soldier because the item in question is something that can't be showed around openly. Besides the request is to collect the heirloom and dealing with the thieves, so no matter what kind of reason they have. From the start I had no intention to lend my ear and go along with the nonsense of people who stole family heirloom due to greed. In the first place, commoners and adventurers who rarely had the chance to watch a play might get tricked but, for me who have that woman's knowledge, it would be strange if I got tricked by such third-rate fuss. Duncan too, I knew that he wouldn't be able to use his right arm to that degree unless he used a high-class healing potion. It would be hard for me to deal with Duncan with you protecting him. It was a big help that you allowed him to approach me while his fighting strength was lowered. Why you bastard? Perhaps Daggett felt that I was ridiculing him when I spoke my honest feeling. He angrily tossed away Duncan's corpse. You little girl, I'll never forgive you. Mercenary of Dawn, 
its last member the rank 4 warrior howled inside the dungeon. Now, it's the main event from here. You <laughs> Daggett readied his large sword and slashed at me while screaming. The attack even made me felt wind pressure from it. I sensed its presence with my skin and dodged it just barely that several strands of my hair almost got tore apart while throwing the hidden weapon from my waist. As expected from a rank 4 dot dot even I might not be able to dodge that attack just now if my martial art that affected my evasion didn't level up to level 3. You. Daggett tilted his head to dodge the hidden weapon that was thrown to his face from point blank range. In that instant I threw a pendulum from the shadow on my palm. The pendulum flew in an arc. Daggett bent backward to dodge the blade and immediately stepped back to take some distance from me vigilantly. With my dark magic reaching level 3, storage that took me all my effort just to activate has expanded until a stage where it's usable for me. Even so, it's only to the degree of a small bag where previously it was already full just from several knives. But I intentionally don't keep my main weapon there and stored hidden weapons and pendulum instead. Dot dot. What are you planning? Daggett looked at me with suspicion when I don't continue attacking. I understood from the exchange just now. No matter how fast the sword of a rank 4, I can still fight even at my level if the opponent is Daggett whose attack is simple due to his anger. But dot dot I'm troubled if he is in such state. Come at me seriously. Dot dot what? Daggett's eyes widened from my mutter. But this is the only thing that I can't give up on. I played so much tricks to kill Radha and the other members of Mercenary of Dawn were for having a one-on-one -on -one fight with a rank 4 adventurer. After this I'm going to fight an organization, the Assassin Guild as my enemy, although it's just a single branch. But among them there are rank 4 like Dino and the Sage dot dot and then there is also someone like the condemned Gaudho whose combat strength is nearly rank 5. In order to gradually whittle down the Assassin Guild's combat strength while I myself is growing stronger. I even misrepresented my combat strength to buy time, but if even Radha fail to come back then as expected I'll get suspected. If I finished off Mercenary of Dawn, I think I'll be able to buy time until I return to the guild. But, if my combat strength got re-examined again when I return to the guild, the suspicion on me will surely turn into conviction. I'll entrap them before their suspicion change into conviction. That's the only way I can win. That's why. Before that I want to experience fighting a rank 4 warrior head on no matter what. At first I decided on Radha for that. But even though she was a rank 4, her main fighting style is with stealth and surprise attack. As long as I understand Shadow Walker's mystery, her direct fighting ability is no different than an upper rank 3. That was exactly why in order to fight against the rank 4 dagger to his direct combat skill, I used Mercenary of Dawn as bait to defeat Radha then used Radha's death as bait to kill the members of Mercenary of Dawn. That's why, I'll be troubled if I have him fighting me in this state where his anger made him forget himself. Dagger dot dot you aren't that kind of compassionate person right? Even after his lover Glinder died, he tried to trick me by going as far as insulting the dead. He tossed away Duncan's corpse from anger after his trap failed. Calm down and look at me. The one who killed your comrades is an assassin who can kill even rank 3 adventurers even though she is just a little girl. Display your full strength. Fight with everything you have, die, and become my nourishment. In exchange, I'll give you my life if you win. Dot dot you damn brat. What the hell were those eyes? Daggett's lips walked with undisguised emotion from my fixed gaze on him. Daggett's head cooled down after a beat passed. He fired up himself with fighting spirit instead of anger and gripped his sword. Dot dot hey brat like you won't really get it but, in this world, there are people who you mustn't get involved with no matter what. Daggett suddenly started talking. I also listened to his words while calming down my breathing that had gotten slightly hard from the consecutive fights. That kind of people are broken somewhere inside. Even monster will be scared when facing an enemy stronger than them, and yet those guys will easily bet their own life without blinking if it's for winning. Dot. I won't think of you as a little girl anymore. You're a monster. I'm going to kill you as my greatest enemy from here on. In order to match my speed. Daggett held his large sword's handle shortly while sidling up toward me with his toes. I also readied my knife and hidden weapon and moved to the side with sliding feet to get out of that range. Dan, you <laughs> ha! Daggett kicked on the ground. At the same time I also threw my hidden weapon. Daggett titled his head again to dodge it, while keeping his momentum and swung down his large sword diagonally at me. Most likely I'll be crushed by the attack even if I blocked it. I made that judgment instantly and stepped forward in order to dodge that attack and leapt into Daggett's chest. TSK. Daggett whose target has left his range immediately swung his large sword's handle downward. I blocked it with the protector of my left hand. But I got sent flying due to the difference in strength. Daggett saw that as his chance of victory and instantly decided to drop his large sword on the ground and pulled out two short swords behind his waist. He slashed at me with them. Although I had gotten hit with an attack and received damage, 
in order to kill me with surety. When I'm faster than him, the speedy short swords are perfect. But, that correct decision is also a bad move. Even if Daggett's sword skill, martial art, and defense skills are level 4, is his short sword skill that is his spare weapon has also reached level 4? Clang. I understood the moment I blocked it. His ability with short sword isn't that much different from me. Even so due to the difference in physique and the damage from just now, my knife that blocked the attack got slightly parried to the side. Die. When fighting in close combat or facing a formidable opponent, battle technique won't be used in order to keep the opening at minimum. Dagger doesn't miss the chance to kill me with certainty and performed a quick thrust. Phew. I let out the breath I was holding and stepped forward without fear. Daggett's short sword that I just barely avoided left a shallow cut on my side. It's a foolish thing to do to fight a stronger opponent head on, even so I don't quit. A rank 4 warrior is fighting me on my ring. I'm fighting him in order to surpass him. How can I quit here? Clang, clang, clang. I held the black knife on my right and the steel knife on my left. I clashed against Daggett's two sword style head on. Whether it's physique, or strength, or skill, or experience, everything is in Daggett's favor. My attacks don't even graze him. And even if some land by fluke, his hard leather armor deflected them. My stamina got shaved off just from a single attack from Daggett. My shoulders and arms are getting wounded bit by bit. As expected it seems you're at your limit. Dot. Generally it's said that you can't reach level 3 with close quarter combat skill before growing into adult. That's because a child's body can't endure its skill. The same apply even to me who has grown from magic power. Although I have grown taller, my muscles are still weak compared to those who have grown normally to early teen. But is that really true? Normally dot dot doesn't that mean that there is exception? For an instant, the black haired girl who I encountered in this dungeon crossed my mind. Her complexion was pale like a sick person. She felt like someone who was born just for the sake of killing other people. I felt a strong will from her who won't hesitate to even thrown away her life if it's in order to obtain that strength. What is different between me and her? I had fought until now by compensating my lack of stamina and strength with technique and knowledge, and by putting my life on the line. Strain your eyes. Comprehend your opponent's movement. I can't match him with strength. My stamina can't possibly hope to compare against him. Use your intellect if you don't have strength. Parry his attack with technique if you don't have stamina. If something is lacking then put your life on the line to compensate. Look forward. There is technique to learn from right in front of your eyes. There is a warrior who have continued to fight for more than 10 years there. Steal his technique. Block his blade and study it. I'm just going to die if I can't do that right now. Mew. The moment I blocked his attack, I twisted my wrist, redirected the strength with my upper arm and upper torso, and softened the impact with my legs and waist. I parried the second and third attack, gathered strength like drawing a bow from the attack I blocked and unleashed an attack back with that. That attack finally cut up Daggett's leather armor. What? In that moment, something changed inside me. Clang, clang, clang. The sounds of knife blocking the attacks changed from the sound of iron clashing to a clear sound. Even so it was only to the degree of my attacks finally reaching the same level of Daggett. But, Daggett who had been enjoying the advantage until now showed a faint anxiety in his expression. He held aloft his short sword by the push of that emotion. Cyclone. Daggett unleashed the level 3 battle technique of short sword skill, Cyclone. It created pseudo wind blades using magic power so the user can attack even from distance. Its advantage lies in the fact that it's an area attack of magical type. He didn't use low level single shot type battle technique but relied on area attack skill instead. That must be because he feared his attack got dodged in this close fight. But, although it's difficult to dodge, it's not something to fear in close range combat as long as you have the resolve. I radiated magic power from my whole body and resisted the magic. Even though the wind blade tore my skin, I rushed toward Daggett who stiffened for a moment from using battle technique and threw my steel knife. Tsu Daggett too understood that his neck how face will be targeted if it's throwing attack. Daggett who had just barely recovered from his stiffening tried to tilt his head again to dodge the knife flying at his face. But, Gar, I had seen that evasion several times. The pendulum's blade that I threw from my palm's shadow at the same time with a steel knife cut Daggett's neck using the steel knife as bait. Gaga. But it's still shallow. It's still not lethal. I brandished the black knife far at my back toward Daggett whose balance grumbled after his neck got cut. So, Daggett too must be thinking that I'll use battle technique. He discarded his short swords without even hesitating, and even while losing balance, he pitched forward while scooping up his large sword with one hand, 
and then without stopping he leapt and the mowed his sword horizontally. But from the start I didn't have the intention to use battle technique here. I used the momentum of swinging my knife behind me to fall backward and dodge the attack that rushed into the opening that I intentionally created. I quickly tapped my heel. Daggett's neck is defenseless because his body flowed forward from the momentum of his attack that cut through empty air. I jammed the blade that came out from the boot's front tip with a kick into there. HTTPS colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io06.jpg. Giga. Blood spurted out from his carotid artery. Daggett vomited blood from his mouth. Even so his eyes still aren't dead. So this is a rank 4 warrior. You yourself is quite a monster. Daggett's hands reached toward my neck as he collapsed forward. Most likely I won't be able to stop him with a knife. With those thick arms, he should be able to muster his last strength to at least snap my neck to drag me to hell together with him. But that's no good. Go die alone. Shield. I threw away my knife and created light shields on both hands with all of my magic power. It's a shield for resisting sorcery but... Perhaps because the shield is materialized particles of light, it has the hardness of a thin glass. Because of that it has the adverse effect of sorcery with property of physical attack being able to destroy it, but I bet everything into that slight physical defense. If I use them just as they are, the falling daggett will break them without me being able to defend. But, I'm not making the shield into something with surface, but as a horizontal line. Question mark. The shields that are anchored in the air tore Daggett's thick neck until halfway due to his falling momentum and weight. I heard the auditory hallucination of glass breaking as the shields dispersed. In that moment I grabbed Daggett's face with my left hand. Daggett is still conscious. He is looking at me with an expression of someone who is looking at a real monster. I thrust my straightened fingers into his neck with all my strength. Exclamation mark. Daggett let out a voiceless death throw. He fell on top of me and vomited a lot of blood that dyed me red. Daggett lied down with his breathing having stopped completely. I laid his head on my lap and looked down on him while softly whispering to see off the warrior. Dot. My gratitude. Dot dot I became stronger again thanks to you. Dot. Aria, Alicia, race, human dash rank 3. Magic power, 92 210 10 up stamina, 84 170 22 up. Strength, 7. 9 endurance, 8, 10 1 up agility, 12, 15 2 up dexterity, 8, short sword skill level 3 1 up martial art level 3 1 up throwing level 2 string control level 2, light magic level 2 darkness magic level 3 non elemental magic level 3, daily life magic times 6 magic power control level 3 pressure level 3, stealth level 3 night vision level 2 search level 3 poison resistance level 2, simple appraisal, overall combat strength. 443, with body strengthening, 514 69 up, Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 18, Conquering the Assassin Guild, Jizaria Chan, how can they become like this in just one month, when I showed up at the Dwarf Armor Shop in the capital, inside the shop that has no other customer like usual, Jelf screamed like a maiden with a throaty voice when he saw my equipments, I defeated the Shadow User Radda and Mercenary of Dawn. Then fought the rank 4 Daggett head on in order to accumulate experience. I managed to win just barely but, the damage I bore myself was also great. I spent two days to heal my injury. It was also the same with my protective equipments. They got hit by battle technique and some attacks, and my leather dress got showered in blood spurt that it became soaked in blood. I washed them with water many times in order to remove the bloody scent and even used clean on them. Perhaps that's why the surface felt starchy unlike before. Fixable? You're really following your own pace Arya Chan. In this state. It won't be able to return back to before even if I overhaul it using special chemical. Jelf sighed while looking at the state of the equipments. My current equipments were given to me by Jelf, but for an artist type craftsman like him, he should harbor some attachment for his work. Sorry. Ah, geez, you don't need to look like that. After all they're things that I pushed on you of my own accord. But, sorry, can you at least fix them to the best of your ability? I have something better for that you know. Foo foo. I'm glad you remember to show yourself here again. Dot dot. Jelf pulled my hand and dragged me to the back of the shop again. I have attachment to them but you don't need to feel bothered about them. They are prototype model for pattern example. That's why you can just wear the real thing now that it came to this. This is. My eyes unconsciously widened seeing what Jelf took out. It's a knee length dress with no sleeves. Although it has the same shape like the prototype I wore. The completed product that is greeted from monster leather has even its size matched perfectly with me. Not only that. Jelf even made thin tights that are fastened with garter belt and a knife holster that will be attached on my car for me. 
He also considered of how to pull out the knife and added a deep slit at the left side of the skirt. I can also properly equip the boots and left hand protector that I received from Master. And in addition, all of them are completely black without any luster, so I don't feel anything out of place from its appearance. It's easier to move and more than I thought. When I made the skirt world and ascertained the feel of it and pulled out the rowing knife, Jelf who was watching with a serious expression let out a sigh of relief from the bottom of his heart. Looks like you're wearing it properly aren't you? <clears throat> A.A. That thing huh? I also remember that after Jelf mentioned that, https colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io07.jpg. In this country, the thing called drawers that I saw previously is the mainstream female underwear, but one year ago new types of underwear started to get popular from that dandle. There is one that looked like drawers that is shortened to the extreme and have frills added, an underwear made from small cloth and tied with string at the sides etc. The new underwears were like the underwears in that woman's knowledge. Right now they are also gradually spreading in the capital. The young lady of this generation and female adventurers with strange taste took a liking to them and even Jelf is habitually using them, he said. I don't understand the necessity for them even though I have that woman's knowledge, but I guess it's necessary if Jelf say so. And so I bought several of them for spare. Can you also service the gimmicks in my hand protector and boots just in case? Okay Tilda. They aren't too damaged so I think I can finish them in one day. I myself can maintain them to some degree but, as expected it's more reassuring to ask an actual expert to do it. If it'll take one day, let's do what I can do in the capital. Also, I want you to sell me a moderately good necklace and, can you lend me your tool for a bit? Dot. I left Jelf's shop after finishing my business and headed toward the commercial guild. The procedure of assassin guilds work started from the client requesting an assassination through the underworld, and if there won't be any problem with the nobility for taking the job, an assassin will be dispatched after the money is paid. The assassination deadline is around half a year to one year since the payment. If that deadline is breached, the request will be considered unfulfilled and the money will be returned along with penalty for the breach of contract. The procedure is unexpectedly professional, but this kind of business is involved heavily with the nobility, so assassins regarded trust with more importance than even some random underworld company. How ironic, after the assassination is carried out. The assassin will provide the proof of accomplishment to the guild. If the request is carried out nearby then the assassin themselves will carry the item until the guild but, this time, the request is carried out near the capital instead of the area under the responsibility of the Northern Frontier District branch, so I ended up handing the proof to the guild contact and only said that the request has been carried out. I placed the necklace along with the adventurer tags that I took from Mercenary of Dawn into a safe deposit box of the commercial guild just as instructed by the document Radha gave me. When the time came the other contact will collect them and told the assassin guild of the request's accomplishment using some kind of method and then the contact should bring back the items until the guild to also make their report. With this the guild won't be suspicious even if Radha doesn't contact them for several weeks until the contact return. If I stand guard here then I might be able to see the contact's face, but I don't think that it will be really meaningful to do that. There is an guarantee that the one who come to collect the items here will be the contact. It's possible the contact will hire an ordinary person who doesn't know anything. Furthermore I'll be troubled if the contact doesn't report the request completion to the guild unsuspectingly. I'll be able to make the assassin guild lower down their guard in that way. They will let their guard down after the information reaches them. Even so there will also be people who get wary when Radha don't return back at the same timing with the contact. The contact should return using the normal route so it should take them around one month. I can shorten that time to half month if I pass through the valley shortcut. I have to calculate the way to defeat the assassin guild branch that during that half a month. After that I resupplied myself with items that can be bought in the capital like throwing knives, portable food, etc. I put a part of them into my storage together with the real necklace. I heard that the necklace owner is Baron North whose territory is next to Dandel. If possible I want to return it to him right away but I can only have him wait until I'm finished with this. Returning the necklace to him will take time, and if the heirloom return to the Baron's hand, it's possible that the Assassin Guild will detect that I have returned until nearby. Mercenary of Dawn also had other convenient items like the spatially expanded bag, but I left it behind in the dungeon. Even though they were criminals in the underworld, they were adventurers with considerable achievements on the surface, so I couldn't bring their items with me in order to make it look like their death was an accident. Perhaps someone else would pick the bag as their own but, at that time that person would simply become the main suspect. I had observed the adventurer guild of that town just in case but, there wasn't any sign that the death of Mercenary of Dawn was known. I also didn't meet that strange kid. Carlo again. That girl said something like that in our parting, 
but will I really be able to reunite with her again? Dot. The next day, I accepted my equipments in Jelf's shop and departed from the capital. I mustn't let the Assassin Guild realize that I returned earlier than scheduled. I need to hide my existence completely in order to ensnare all the guild members into trap. The Assassin Guild is different from Adventurer Guild and Thief Guild. It only has few regular members, even so they have spies that blended in the streets. But they aren't even members of the guild. They are only under the guild's patronage. Among them there should also be some commoners who are living normally without even realizing that they are involved with the assassin guild. They aren't my target but it will be troublesome if they reported me. That's why before entering the territory of Count Hadel where the guild is located, I used my stealth that has become level 3, hid myself, and infiltrated the town with the chapel. I napped inside the forest when it's afternoon and at night I slipped into darkness and headed toward the town bit by bit. After entering the town, I hid in an abandoned building when it's noon and erased my presence. I'm creeping toward the chapel slowly. It will be a lonely fight for me from here. I held my breath and erased my presence, doing nothing but waiting for the time to come as I polished my fang inside the darkness. I won't get thirsty. With daily life magic water. With level 2 night vision I won't be inconvenienced even when I'm inside complete darkness. I finished my meal with pills that I made with alchemy before coming here. This is something created from the ingredients to make potion. But they aren't boiled to extract essence liquid, but grinded into fine powder and kneaded together with salt, honey, and magic power. The recovery rate from it isn't as good as potion, but it lasts long and if I eat 10 of them per day, I'll be able to maintain my stamina and health for about a week. It's not delicious but, I'm already used to plain food and hunger since my time in that orphanage. I spent three days to infiltrate the place that normally could be reached in the same day after entering the city. Even level 3 stealth skill can display an effect that surpassed level 4 if combined with the night vision of seeing color to choose a spot where there is nobody. In fact I wasn't noticed even when I passed beside the lookout beggar who has stealth skill level 3. I'll have it far easier for this time if I have level 4 skill, but there is no guarantee that I'll be able to become level 4 in the future. Unlike level 3 which is the limit of ordinary person that can be reached as long as you spend time on it. Level 4 can only be obtained by those who have genuine talent. There is a large wall blocking the way to there. Even so, looking from how I was able to defeat the rank 4 Daggett, I understood that rank and combat strength are nothing more than a yardstick of strength. True strength depended on how you use the strength that you obtained from your level. I obtained the confidence that you can fight even the Assassin Guild depending on my method. Right now my destination is the underground graveyard of the cathedral where the guild is located but I won't infiltrate from the entrance naively. When I returned to the guild last time, I looked around the underground until it's every nook and cranny. That guild is using an abandoned mine, so it's vast inside with complicated path, so several vent holes are prepared in several spots. I also considered pouring poison from there, but they are also pro. If they felt that something is out of place, they will immediately work together to run away with heightened vigilance. That's why I need to infiltrate inside unnoticed in order to not allow them to work together. I investigated the distance using my sense of direction from detection skill and number of steps and memorized the approximate location of the vent holes. When I slipped into darkness and thoroughly investigated the corresponding locations in the underground grave. It took me two days but I'm finally able to find all the vent holes. In the process I discovered an escape hatch that I thought was definitely somewhere. There is no sign that it has been used for dozens of years, but I think that it's alright for me to ignore it and only set a simple trap there. That's because it's located at the deepest part of the coal mine and the risk of mine accident to occur is high there. Even infiltrating it is dangerous. If things happen like I predicted, then the mortality rate there will be the highest. I sneaked into the stone room with number 21 written on it where one of the vent holes I discovered is located. I removed the stones around the fist-sized vent hole, used night vision, and dug the soil. I don't want to use weapon for something like this but, I can't take too much time with this. Five days has passed since I entered this city. There are only around ten days until the contact arrived at the guild. The soil is unexpectedly soft and I spent three more days to widen the hole before I finally succeeded with infiltrating inside the assassin guild. The stone at the ceiling fell completely and the hole connected to a passage. The sound might be heard if it's at another place but, this is the only place where I'm not worried about that. I knew that there is nobody else here other than him in here. Dot. Dot dot gua. When I entered that room from the narrow passage where the vent hole is, 
that grotesque shadow behind iron bars as thick as adult arms growled warily. I quietly smiled at the muddy eyes looking at me. The condemned Gaudo dot dot I'm giving you freedom. I'm finished with all the preparations that I can do. Several days after I infiltrated the headquarter of the Assassin Guild branch of the Northern Frontier District located at the territory of Count Haydale dot dot I left the city once more and entered it again from the front before heading to the cathedral. On the way. I bought a food that is made from dough of baked millet flour with vegetables put between it and at a proper meal after so long. The state of the city is no different from where I first saw it. A lot of people flowed since early in the morning from the residential area toward the craftsman district where they will return at evening. The voices of children and mothers scolding them can be heard from far away at the residential area. The sound of hammers hitting metals is resounding ceaselessly from the craftsman district. A peaceful city dot dot but underneath it, one of the assassin guilds of this country existed and thanks to its existence, the people who knew about it are in fear and that peace can be maintained. None of the smiling commoners in this city are aware of it. Dot. My eyes met with the gaze of the lookout beggar sitting near the cathedral. I flicked a silver coin with my fingertips to him. The beggar caught it midair and he grinned from the silver coin's weight. How generous, ash covered. Business is a bit good. The beggar looked a bit surprised because the usually taciturn me is making a small talk. For the people living in this city and involved with the guild dot dot and the people who are benefited from that unknowingly, I am their potential enemy. From where they're standing, I am a destroyer who threatened the peace, an evil. I won't say that they're wrong. They have their own reason to fight, and if they made me their enemy, I'm prepared to fight all of them. The assassin guild has become my enemy. I'll kill all my enemies. That's what it meant to oppose a huge organization. Dot. I went underground from the side of the cathedral and entered inside from the regular entrance that is camouflaged as a tombstone. I can't see anyone inside, but I knew that there are many people inside the guild with their presence erased. My quarrel with Radha wasn't pointless. I'm now able to sense the out-of-place feeling from them erasing their presence. I continued going further inside, knocked the door of a room, then the voice come in came from inside the room that contained no presence at all with only a faint out-of-place feeling inside. Ooh. My beloved brother disciple, I have learned the news from the contact. Not only you truly dealt with all the targets without any injury on your own, you even collected the spirit tear dot dot as expected from the favorite pupil of my teacher, no problem. Even after hearing the report from his contact, he surely still didn't seriously believe that a kid like me could defeat a rank 4 adventurer together with his party. I would defeat one or two at best, and then when it looked like I would lose, Radha would use me as bait to finish off Dagant and his comrades rescuing me who was in the brink of death and the maid master indebted to him. Dot dot after I combined all the information until now, that was most likely the plan that Dino was building in his head. He is looking surprised not because I have returned this quickly, but because I returned in perfectly good health without any serious injury. Dino also didn't hold any doubt from receiving the report that I had also properly collected the requested item, the spirit tear. How very astonishing. Also, this is your reward for the request this time. Originally it should be given to you only after the contacts bring back the proof and requested item but, there won't be any problem if it's you. But just in case, I ask you to stay here until the two return back. The weather is unusually a bit humid since yesterday but, please take a good rest to recover your stamina. Got it. I accepted the small leather bag and lightly shook it to feel the size and weight. From the feel. I guess there are 20 large gold coins inside. Nearly half of the request fee is to be given for the people doing the job, so that means the original request fee is more than 40 large gold coins. It's an amount that can be paid because the client is a noble. Most likely it's an amount of money that surpassed even the price of the regained spirit tier but, that's just how precious this heirloom is for the client. That noble must really treasure his family. Well, it's a different story whether it's a suitable compensation for defeating a rank 4 party or not though. Even so. I'm amazed you are able to return this quickly. How can you return quicker than your two contacts? Dino spoke to me again just as I was about to exit the room after receiving the reward. But one of them wasn't a contact but a watcher right? I passed the valley south of Dandel. That place is difficult to traverse even for a balanced adventurer party through. You were able to cross it with that combat strength. He appraised me just as expected. I'm wearing a contact to cover it up as much as possible but, it's not impossible to roughly estimate my combat strength when I'm this close and the one doing it is someone as experienced as Dino. It's only natural to get stronger if you fight, right? Looks like you had gone through some extremely dangerous fights. Dot dot Arya San. I hope that we can continue our good relationship from here on too. Dot. Is he telling me to keep lending hand not just for this request only, but from here on too? Or is he warning me not to think of doing anything stupid? At the very least Dino is slightly suspecting me for killing Guy. Even so, 
he isn't asking anything about it because he thought it can't be helped due to my discord with Kira, and because it'll be more beneficial for him to have a trump card against Master at his side. But, the reason Dina trusted my word is because I obediently handed the request item to him. He thought that I'm still a usable pawn. However it's already too late. My trap is already starting to move. Dot. I left Dino's office and headed to the room assigned to me through the underground that is slightly smelly like usual. There is no need for me to carelessly move around and increase the number of people who realize my actual combat strength. Besides the inside of the skilled is already in a dangerous state. When I returned to my assigned room, the sign I placed is already gone and there is a trace that someone has already entered here. I placed nothing that could be stolen inside but, it'll be troublesome if I entered carelessly and there is actually a trap inside. But, before I can leave that place after thinking that, the person inside came out of their own initiative. Oh, welcome back, Ash Gover Chan. What are you doing just standing there? What are you doing inside? The one inside is the goth Lili woman who was the first person I met in this guild era. Dino should have isolated her from to avoid a quarrel from breaking out, but it seemed she was lying in wait for me. She smiled thinly and licked her crimson lips in response to my question. I was thinking to console you when you ran back like a beaten dog but dot dot I wonder if you didn't meet Radha? Even though I had gone through the trouble of setting the table, that woman is more useless than I thought. Kira shrugged theatrically and stepped back to open a path into my room. How about entering? inside for now. It's a dirty room but today is hot, so it'll be better compared to just standing here right? I don't want to enter a dirty room. It must be your fault that an unused room is dirty. Kira showed an irritated expression just for an instant when I bluntly refused. Dot dot just shut up and enter you shitty brat. I only placed some pranking toys inside, so you don't need to be that scared you know? Look. When Kira stepped on the trashes she scattered, an arrow flew out from what seemed to be a crossbow set in a shelf right in front of the door. It grazed the side of my head and stabbed the wall behind me. Go in without worry, or perhaps you're that scared of me? Dot. I sighed and muttered inside my mouth as I stepped inside the room. In that moment, Dan. There is a small sound and a crossbow fired an arrow right above me. Before this dot dot the me who had only just arrived here would be helplessly hit. It's generally said that a level 4 martial arts skill will allow you to dodge a fired arrow and level 5 martial arts skill will allow you to catch a fired arrow. I'm still just level 3 but, if it's the current me who have obtained multiple close quarter combat skills, I can react as long as I can guess the timing of the shot and where it aimed. Shadow Snatch I caught the crossbow arrow with Shadow Snatch that I had decided to materialize on my forehead from the start. Space type dark sorcery has to cover the target with darkness element magic particles. Radha's Shadow Walker covered herself with darkness, while my shadow snatch enveloped the target with a thin membrane like magic particles when it went through the darkness, teleporting it to the shadow that is connected by my magic power. I wouldn't be able to react if Kira targeted a non-vital spot like my stomach or limbs. Even if my prediction was right, if my timing slightly missed, I might get an arrow planted into my head, but the timing wasn't that difficult as long as I conquered my fear of death. Dot dot a, Kira who got hit by a crossbow arrow in her stomach from right below looked at her stomach and at me with an astonished face. Kira is really easy to understand. You are the one who absolutely won't betray my trust how there is nothing that can be trusted from you. That was why I connected my magic power to Kira's shadow after she gave me such a transparent provocation. I thought that she is a troublesome and dangerous fellow when I first met her but, I had encountered a genuinely dangerous person inside that dungeon. Compared to her. Something like Kira's dangerousness only felt like lukewarm water. H how did you dodge dot dot why is the arrow in me, dot dot why dot dot why, is your, combat strength g? Kira tried to shout, but I used the walking style I learned from Sarah and the striking method I learned from Viro to quickly crush her throat with a cat paw strike. It seemed she used appraisal and finally realized my combat strength. If only she learned the habit to be a bit more thorough with her observation. She would roughly understand my strength even without something like appraisal. Kira is really the same like before. Whether it's her character or strength, and her arrogance in looking down to her opponent, nothing has changed at all. Ah, Kira let out knives from her sleeves in panic. I already saw it before and cut the wrist tendons using the hidden pendulum that I took out from the shadow of both my hands. Without pause I circled behind Kira and put the pendulum's string around her neck and tightened it to snap her neck so that she won't be able to make any sound. Exclamation mark. Kira struggled to remove the string on her neck, 
but she can't hope to do that with hands that have their tendon severed. Kira looked back with eyes that are begging for her life. My expressionless face as I'm choking her neck is reflected on her eyes. The people who are called as the strong in this world are too arrogant, too careless, too naive. Why do they think their enemy will be merciful? Why do they think that they will be the only one to escape death? Why do they intentionally hold back in order to boast about their superiority? Why don't they think that an opponent they had once provoked won't constantly aim to kill them? Tsukira showed an expression of terror at the end when I snapped her neck. Then I gently laid her on bed without making any sound. It's time. After this dot dot I'll dispose all the members of this assassin guild. Where is Rada? Several hours after Arya returned quicker than expected, the guild member who was assigned to be the contact returned back. But, Shadow user Rada, a member who was one of the powerful even in this guild, who was dispatched in order to monitor Arya still hadn't returned. The contact who had just returned after finishing his job looked confounded by the questioning gaze of the guild leader Dino. I didn't meet with Rada after the Ash Covered finished her assassination. Guild leader, you didn't hear anything from Ash Covered? No. Although this contact's combat strength was low, his detection skill and stealth skill were excellent. He could even eavesdrop conversation from distance using wind sorcery. This person was high ranked in this guild when it came to intelligence activity. Rada was there to take care of the combat aspect. So Dino dispatched him to focus with gathering intelligence but, he couldn't enter inside a dungeon alone because his combat strength was only rank 2. What happened inside the dungeon where the assassination took place? Certainly Arya's combat strength had gone through a shocking growth compared to when he first met her. Even Dino felt it was abnormal for a kid who was still around 10 years old to increase her combat strength by that much in just 4 months, even if she was a disciple of that demon race woman. But, with just combat strength of 500 at best. It should be difficult to face a rank 4 party without luck playing a large part of it. Dino planned for Radha to lend her help to defeat the targets but, could it be that the targets managed to turn the table on Radha in the dungeon? But, if that was the case then it was strange for Arya to not report it. In the first place it was difficult even for Dino to detect Radha when she slipped into darkness. If the opponent was a rank 4 party then certainly there was also a possibility of her getting discovered, but that should be difficult unless someone hinted them of Radha's existence. Dot. Betrayal? Someone was a betrayer. Assassins who lived with the principle of individualism often acted as they pleased. Anyone had the potential to turn traitor but, Dino and his further the previous guild leader borrowed the strength of the sage to deal with that, by creating the shackle called the Condemned Gaudo. Exactly because they were individualists that assassins were fixated with their own life. They joined the guild also because here they could obtain safety and money simultaneously. The guild leader Dino was the one who knew best how all of the members didn't have any sense of belonging with the guild. But, that was exactly why the assassins wouldn't go against the guild in order to protect their own life. Because there was no benefit for them to do that. Sometimes fellow members would also get into quarrel and kill each other but, even in such case, this contact had no reason or skill to kill Radha. This contact was a veteran who knew about Radha's importance for the guild. In that case, assuming that Radha was dead. What was the objective of the person who killed her? The guild members have no need to oppose the guild because they were all self-serving. They knew the risk of going against someone powerful like Radha and how killing her wouldn't give them any benefit. There was only one person in the guild who Dino knew wouldn't give a damn about that. Hey, guild leader, for now just take this thing off my hand first. Why yeah, give it to me. The contact who was ignored by the pondering Dino spoke to him sullenly. Dino got dragged back into reality and nodded. But, adventurer tags and dot dot this is. The requested spirit here? Yeah. This is also my first time seeing the real thing but, it matched the characteristic I heard. Dot dot is there anything strange with it? Dot dot no. He heard that it was a magic stone from mid-class spirit. But, wasn't it a bit small? The necklace itself was also something moderately good but, he felt that it wasn't fitting at all to decorate a magic stone that worth dozens of large golden coins. Was it replaced intentionally by someone? But the spirit magic stone itself was genuine. That was why the contact also reported to Dina that he had secured the requested item. There was no point replacing the real thing with another real thing. If there was anyone who actually did such thing, who could it be? Dino knew of one person who wouldn't consider any cost benefit in opposing the guild. The ash-covered assassin, Arya. Dino took Sergura and Arya as hostage for each other. He threatened that brother disciple of his to cooperate with him. With her combat strength it should be possible for her to trap Radha. When he noticed her growth. He warned her by reminding her of the hostage against her. But setting aside her small quarrel with someone like Ira, what could be the reason for her to harm Radha and oppose the guild when her teacher Sergura was taken hostage against her? To begin with, 
There was no human who would dare to go against the guild because after that they would have to live in fear forever while on the run from assassins. In the past there were also statesmen who tried to crush the assassin guild itself but, even then the assassins hid in the darkness and even if it took some time, they killed those statesmen in the end. There was no fool who would go against a huge organization that was the assassin guild. It was impossible to completely subdue the assassins who lived in the darkness using the power of the surface world. That was exactly why the nobles also had no other choice than to coexist with them even while fearing their existence. That was why, no matter how suspicious the circumstance was, common sense wise it was impossible to think that a small kid whose teacher who was like her parent was taken hostage against her would dare to bear her fang against the guild. Even though Dina was living in the assassin guild which was an irrational world in a sense. He was still looking at Arya with a framework of common sense that he had lived with since he was born until now. Dino didn't know that just because of a single woman who had the memory of her past life granting a chance to a girl to obtain knowledge due to her self-serving action, it resulted in the birth of a monster mentality wise in this world who considered it right to slaughter all the enemies who disturbed her and her important people's peace. I'll check. Dino left his room in order to ascertain Arya's true intention. If from there he saw a will to oppose the guild from Arya just as he thought, he would eliminate her on the spot personally. But, his decision was just a bit too late. In this world there weren't that many people who could be called as the strong. Combat type skill level 1 rank 1 could be obtained even by a child in their early teen if they trained for several years. Rank 1 was generally a beginner but they weren't amateur. Rank 1 was sufficient for new recruit, and several of them could even deal with rank 2 monster. Even soldiers who had served for several years in the army mostly consisted of rank 2. If they could become rank 3 then they would be promoted to become commanding officer and be considered as someone actually strong. Even the adventurer guild whose members were almost all fighter who could fight solo consisted of rank 1 and 2 for nearly 80% of them. Surely it could be seen just how rare the strong was after taking that into consideration. And for those who reached rank 4 and above, even in Claydale Kingdom that had the population of nearly 10 million people, the number of those people should be only around several hundreds. Even the Assassin Guild wasn't an exception. Unlike Adventurer, Assassin wasn't required to overdo themselves and fought someone powerful. What was required from them was gathering information and the discernment to kill the target with certainty even if they had to spend time for it. Similar with the Thief Guild, Few people in this business could boast about their individual might. Even in this northern frontier district branch, the powerful rank four like the elf shaman the sage, the dwarf Bazaar Kashaga, the beastman shadow user Rado were feared as extraordinary even within the guild, but even rank three like Kira and Guy were rare in the guild. They were considered as powerful because most of the members were thief type scout who focused in stealth type ability. Many of the members of Assassin Guild Northern Frontier District branch were blending and living in the city. Putting aside the citizens who were being used as informants without even knowing of the guild's involvement, there was a certain number of members who were usually doing normal work as average citizens, and they only returned to be assassin when there was assassination request for ordinary person. But they didn't take work on their own. They didn't even know the face of other members. As long as there was no request then they were no different than ordinary person. Managing all those was also the guild's job. The members who were currently inside the guild were the managers who assigned the necessary works to the members who didn't even know each other's face and consolidated the guild's intelligence, and the top-notch assassins who had combat strength over the standard. These people could be said as the core of the Northern Frontier District branch. Currently the Northern Frontier District branch had nearly 80 members. They knew that the demon's disciple, the child called Ash Covert had become a new member and the child's combat strength was nearly 200. For them whose combat strength was around rank 2 and 3. They knew that information was weapon. That was why they understood that the Ash Covered was only strong for a kid, but generally speaking the child was only as strong as a skilled rank 2. That was why they let their guard down. Although a child could throw a tantrum, she wouldn't be able to cause anything big because she was just a child. Because she was a child, she could go wild but she still wouldn't be able to match other strong people. Because she was a child dot dot she wouldn't be their business as long as they didn't get involved with her. And so they made a lethal negligence as assassin. Easy to understand skill level and numerical amount of combat value became cause for the weak to thoughtlessly fear the strong, and that in turn became a fatal arrogance for the strong. Dot. Dot dot. That middle-aged man tilted his head after feeling something out of place for an instant. The man's role was to accept assassination requests from the guild contacts everywhere, gathered information, assigned the difficulty rank to the requests, the distributed them to the guild members. He was one of such mediators. He had five subordinates in the guild. Sometimes they would head out to the field to gather information, so all of them had some kind of stealth type skill. So the man thought that someone had just passed nearby while still using stealth skill. Dot dot it's hot today. Even inside the guild that was located underground where it was relatively cool, 
The temperature could still sometimes become humid due to the season. Perhaps because of the heat, his head felt slightly hazy, and so he found it hard to focus. The instant he decided to head to the sofa inside the room, Gar? The man couldn't even walk properly. He fell on the hard stone floor face first. What's going on? Could it be that he had gotten dosed with poison? But the man had poison resistance skill. Even poison that could instantly kill an ordinary person should be noticeable to him before it could fatally harm him. The smell inside the guild was also no different from usual. There was also tasteless and scentless poison but, that kind of thing needed a lot of time until it showed effect. So even if he got dosed by such poison, he thought that he could treat himself if the poison had delayed effect. Dot dot Q. The man crawled toward the shelves where the medicine was stored. He would manage somehow if he could reach there. Believing that the man he grasped the floor and dragged himself. But then he noticed a slight presence entering this room behind him. Was it one of his subordinates? His body shook as he unconsciously thought of asking for help. But then he felt the coldness of a blade sinking into his neck without any killing intent accompanying it. His consciousness sank into darkness where it wouldn't return anymore. I poured poison inside the guild. I only learned the basic from master's lesson. So the mix was practically my original, but it seemed that it worked well. This poison showed effect even with someone who had poison resistance skill. In the first place poison resistance isn't a skill that unconditionally resisted every kind of poison. Master told me that it's a skill that prevented the body from absorbing any more poison the moment the body detected the poison. I also verified it myself by drinking poison to ascertain it. Poison resistance skill won't activate against harmless substance to the body. If that's not the case then the skill will prevent even potion and food to be absorbed by the body. This time, the poison I created is a mixed poison. Just one of them will only act as medicine that relaxed tense nerves. I had continuously mixed this medicine in minute amount into the drinking water here since I infiltrated one week ago. I spent time making the guild members consumed it. Once the body absorbed the substance, even poison resistance would become unable to deal with it until the chemical got decomposed by the internal organs. After that I scattered the second medicine in front of the room of the people that I'll eliminate. The people who inhaled the substance would have the poison generated inside their blood. It's not so poisonous that the victim will die instantly, but this nerve poison lower the internal organs function and disturb the blood flow. Like that people became unable to move and I gave each of them the killing blow carefully one by one. After a while the inside of the guild is gradually getting noisy. Dot. They found out already. It's faster than I thought. I intentionally scattered poison after I returned so that I can scatter the poison quickly even if I'm seen. I wanted to scatter the poison with the smallest time difference as possible so that I wouldn't be found out. But perhaps, I was found out not because the people I killed got found, but because the second poison I scattered was dispersed and the poison showed half-baked effect even at the places that I hadn't visited. Even so this is within my expectation. Nearly half of the members should already be killed or can't move. So from now I'm going to proactively kill those whose movement has been dulled. I erased my presence with stealth and took out Pendulum's blades from the shadows of my hands. I rushed through a passage smoothly without any sound. You, I threw a Pendulum at a woman who I don't know as I encountered her. The woman immediately moved to dodge, but I saw that her movement is dull from poison. I slashed her neck as I passed her by. I broke into the run once more while using Pendulum or Dark to erase the lights from lamp or saucer relighted all over the place. Most of the members should have night vision. Even so there are still lights lit inside the guild because human can only use night vision until level 1. Even so they shouldn't lit new light as long as the darkness doesn't hinder their fighting capability greatly, because that is their common sense, they're thinking that the darkness is their ally. They are still unable to imagine the form of their enemy. They aren't even considering that the opponent is more familiar with darkness than themselves. It's working slightly to my advantage. Hyun, Gua, you, with their movement slightly dulling and their head fuzzy from poison. Although they understand that they are under attack in reality, the darkness is slightly delaying them from perceiving me as enemy. It's just for a moment dot dot one second or even less. That slight opening is enough to kill. I'm scattering clothes that has been soaked with the medicine to change into poison while killing the guild members I'm encountering one after another. I'm also taking the time to finish off the people who can't move inside the rooms. There are also those who pretended to be unable to move. But there won't be any problem if I immediately attack them with pendulum from the start. Against those whose combat strength seem quite high, I used shadow snatch and shot their brain from their ear. Dot. Dogoon. The wooden boxes and wine casks at further back of the passage were smashed. A dwarf appeared while mowing down the wrecks with a huge halberd. As soon as he saw me and the dead guild members around me, he let out an angry scream with a bloodshot gaze toward me. So you are the traitor. A.S.H. Covered. Dot. Shaga race. Rock Dwarf Dash Rank 4 Magic Power, 135-150 Stamina, 
393 450. Overall combat strength, 825, with body strengthening, 979. Dot. As a Kashaga dot dot as expected I was found out after I came this far. It's a bit earlier than I planned but, my betrayal got announced throughout the guild by his voice. Shaga charged forward. His charge scattered the wreckages on his way. I pulled out a knife unseen behind my cloak and threw it. Shaga swept it away with his halberd's handle. He is dexterous despite his large weapon. But, more than that he is a coward. As expected the poison's effect on rank 4 warrior is weak. So I decided to stop crossing sword with him more than this and started running until the arranged spot. You won't get away, Ash covered. I'm not so capricious that I'll exchange blows head on against someone stronger who is wearing full body armor and carrying a huge weapon. Shaga is chasing after me. The color of his eyes changed and the pressure he directed at me increased. It's said that a bazooka would suddenly begin to rampage like mad and continued to fight until they die with a strength that surpassed the limit of their flesh body. Most likely that's Shaga's trump card. Certainly he must be able to fight even against rank 5 with that much strength. But in exchange of that, his vigilance against his surrounding became slippy. Shaga is strong. But why do you think there is no other member in this place? Now, I have brought your enemy here, Missy. After I passed through. The corridor's wall creaked and countless cracks ran through it all at once. Dogyoon. In that moment, a grotesque thing with thick limbs smashed through the earth wall. The thing collided on Shaga who was chasing after me. Metallic sound rang out loudly. Gaudo? Ga. The condemned Gaudo who was released from his shackle let out a shout that shook the guild that was formerly a coal mine. He attacked the Berserker Shaga. Clang. Godu's claws and Shaga's halberd clashed and played a fierce clashing sound. Gaudo. Shit. Sage. Calm down this guy. Godu's attack was like the blow of a giant hammer. Shaga handled the attack while yelling to the corridor. But, that voice doesn't reach anyone. Even in this emergency situation, there is no one who will approach the area where Gudo is imprisoned. I had been concealing myself here the whole time since I infiltrated the guild. Other members won't approach this place. This is the perfect place to hide. But that wasn't my only reason for hiding here. My primary objective was to free the condemned Gaudo. Despite his grotesque appearance, I believe that Gaudo was a human in the past. Most likely the sage used curse and drug to remake him into something much like a chimera. Gudo was violated by drugs until his brain and got reduced into animal. I don't know whether he still has his memory and emotion when he was a human. The sage stole even his freedom to think with his curse, changing Gaudo into animal for the sole purpose of fighting. The sage did that not only because it was a demand from the guild, but it must also be because of his feeling of rivalry toward master. Even so, that doesn't mean I'm feeling sympathy for Gudo's condition. But, aren't you frustrated that you are ordered around by this kind of people? Don't you hate it? I whispered such words to him while spending time to dispel Gudo's curse bit by bit. I also neutralized the drugs that were administered to him as much as possible. Of course that wasn't an easy task. From what I learned from Master's lesson, a curse is implanting a simple spirit language that is written by your own magic power into a specific magic particle and then by making the magic particle contact the magic power of the creature that is your target, the effect is activated. Compared to other sorcery it's a technique with bad efficiency and it has started to decline, but as long as it activates successfully, the curse will be active forever using the magic power of the curse target. To dispel the curse, I need to read the order in the magic particle that is written with the curse and neutralize it with the opposing spirit language. That's the only way. What I could do was throwing opposing magic particle at the cursed magic particle that is enveloping Godu's body, neutralizing the curse bit by bit. I couldn't erase the curse itself, even so the command binding spell that was binding Gudo should be almost neutralized. After that I only needed to provide a bait so that he would smash through the slightly remaining shackle. That bait is dot dot a hated target. That was why I lured a high ranked member of the guild who could serve for that role. Gudo has a huge body that is nearly 3 meters tall. The dwarf Shaga is only half as tall as him but his muscles swelled out greatly as he blocked Gudu's attacks. Both Shaga and Gaudo possessed rank 4 combat strength, but Gaudo has a status that approached rank 5 due to the drugs and curse on him. Shaga also increased his strength due to his bazooka state, but Shaga's face is gradually getting filled with the color of anxiety. Shaga dot dot that's wrong isn't it? Nua, you bastard. My pendulum's blade that changed direction with my string control slashed at the skin of Shaga through his armor's gap while he is fighting Gudo. What's the matter Berserker? You will die at this rate you know? Shaga's eyes widened from my words and his anxiety deepened further. That's troubling if you keep that up. After all I need you to get serious. He got the title Berserker because there was something in this dwarf's past. Shaga is clearly not suited to be assassin. 
person, someone as strong as him should have countless other places that can make use of his strength even if he can't stand in the public anymore, like becoming a bodyguard for Mafia for example. And yet Shaga is holing up himself in this kind of cave and drowned himself in alcohol without ever taking off his full body armor and letting go of his weapon while keeping up his wariness toward his surrounding. Surely that's because he is a coward, although he has strength. He can't fight because he is a coward, that's why. He can't protect himself other than rampaging like a cornered rat driven by anger. But even while being driven by his anger, he is always saving aside some of his sense at the last step. The proof is that his mind is still working even now despite fighting furiously. Even just now, why did he sought help from the sage first rather than prioritizing defeating the rampaging Gudo? It's only because Shaga feared death that he surrendered himself to rage. It's only because he feared that that he didn't cross the last line. But, now, what are you going to do? You're really going to die at this rate. Shaga was a rocky dwarf who was born in human settlement. From his childhood, his toughness was the only thing that he was confident with. He became an adventurer with his human childhood friends and he played an active role as the shield of his three friends. But, at that time, they were still young and got cocky. They stepped deep into a dungeon and encountered a powerful monster. Even so they might be able to come back alive if they combined their strength. But, their combat experience against strong monster was lacking. And because Shaga was skilled, that was the first time his human childhood friends got exposed to mortal danger. They tried to run away leaving behind Shaga who was holding back the monster alone. That would be the end of it if Shaga was a normal adventurer. But, in that moment, the extreme fear of losing his life became a blazing rage of being betrayed inside Shaga. Without hesitation he threw the weapon in his hand to the back of his comrade who was his friend. When Shaga regained his sanity, one of his comrades had died from being torn apart by monster. His last memory was the monster attacking his friend who got his back split by his axe, and he picking up the axe that he threw himself. After that his memory was cut off. Berserk a phenomenon. Those who lost their senses in battlefield from fear or anger would remove every limitation of their body and rampaged until death according to this phenomenon. Shaga was able to regain his sanity must be because he was a rocky dwarf who was tougher than human. Shaga got scared from killing his childhood friend and ran away from the dungeon with his tattered body. But, what was waiting for him outside was his two friends who ran away ahead. They saw Shaga throwing his axe to their dead friend, and despite being the first one to abandon him, they blamed Shaga as friend killer. Shaga was scared from killing his friend, from being blamed about that by his friends. And then Shaga, he only knew of one way to escape from that fear. Dot. After slaughtering his friends, Shaga fell to the underworld in order to escape. He worked as bodyguard for thieves or bandits. He murdered even the innocents in order to protect himself. If the organization he belonged to showed any sign of cutting him off, he would slaughter them all without even making sure first. Even if he fell into darkness. Dot, dot, no. Exactly because he had fallen, Shaga couldn't tolerate an act of betraying comrade. But while he was doing that, he became targeted by the underworld too. Shaga who was a wanted man even at the surface world finally drifted to assassin guild that wouldn't inquire about its members background as long as they were strong. But, there was also no peace for Shaga there. One day, a man who was thought to be a spy from the kingdom was captured. Then by the hand of the guild leader and the sage torture and modification that were too repulsive to even talk about were applied on the man. Shaga who witnessed that became terrified against the assassin guild too. The spy had a brave and praiseworthy character even from Shaga's perspective. And yet his dignity was trampled and he was changed into an animal even while he was crying and screaming like a child. He couldn't maintain his sanity after witnessing something like that. Since that day Shaga shut himself at the back of the canteen. He could only protect his heart by drinking alcohol while being unable to even take off his armor or let go of his weapon. You ah, ah. Human reasoning finally vanished from Shaga's eyes by the last push. He let out a war cry that sounded like a scream. <coughs> Shaga yelled as though he is howling. He swung around his huge halberd like a windmill. He pulverized even the surrounding walls while sending Gudo's huge body flying. <coughs> they made sounds of enormous irons bashing against each other. Shaga and Gaudo hit each other without even putting up any defense while destroying the surrounding walls. That's good. But... It's still not enough. Wait. I dashed toward their location and activated dark magic. Wait was only thought as a level 1 dark sorcery that could only change 10% of something's weight. But it's actually a sorcery to change the direction of the weight to the direction the casters choose. Its effect is improved by 10% each time my dark magic's level increased by 1. There won't be that much different even if I change something's weight by 30%. But, it's a different story when I also have martial arts skill of the same level. You <laughs> The instant I approached, 
Chaga who sensed hostility with his instinct threw a hand axe from his waist. The hand axe approached with a buzzing sound in this narrow corridor. It's impossible to dodge it by moving to the side, so I ran up the wall and even on the ceiling and slashed from above the two who are still fighting. New. <laughs> My blade only injured the two a little, but... That small attack pushed me up onto the stage of the two's battle. I changed position by jumping over them. Then I threw a knife at the two while running back through the path I originally came from. And then Shaga and Gaudo also chased after me while still fighting to keep each other in check. Dot. Like that I led the two and returned to the first hall that got its door destroyed by Shaga. There I encountered several members who were looking for me the traitor. You bastard. Ash covered. Gaudo. Even Shaga. The members don't only noticed me but also the two I led here. Their eyes widened in surprise as they gulped. Doria, Ga. The two madmen continued to fight without giving a damn to the guild members. Gaudo's huge body and the huge halberd clashed. The several guild members who got dragged into it were sent flying with their neck or spine snapped. The poison has circulated throughout the whole guild, dulling the movement of the members. I slipped through the members, and killed them if there is an opening. The approaching Shaga and Gaudo mowed them down like dry grasses. When the battle is this chaotic, Nobody will be able to continue targeting just one person. In this battlefield where one's life will be scattered if they lose focus just for a moment, I finished off several members who are weakening from the poison. That man appeared at that timing. Warrior, yeah, Gaikin. I pulled out my black knife in response to that yell that was filled with hatred and the killing intent. Brilliant red sparks scattered when that man swung down his silver short sword. You're late. Dino, you have really done it now. Dot dot. Our blades are locked with each other while making metallic sound. On the other side of the locking blades, a growl of deep resentment leaked out from Dino when he heard my words. You bastard. Dot dot. Don't you care of what I'm going to do to Sergira? Dino's eyes trembled and warped with hatred. My cold gaze is reflected on there. There won't be any problem if I kill everyone who might try to use Master. When I spoke out that simple answer. Dino looked at me with eyes that looked like he is looking at a lunatic after he understood my meaning. You're planning that dot dot from the start? Obviously. I pulled the string wrapped around my pinky and fired an arrow from my hand protector's crossbow. Dino dodged it in a hair's breadth and exchanged a kick with me. We leapt away from each other with that and glared to each other from distance. Five months ago, when we first met, there was different path than this that we could take. But, our path was decided the moment you tried to use Master Sergura. Dot. Dino, you are my enemy from the start. Dino joined the Assassin Guild when he was ten. He was born between his father who was the guild leader of the Northern Frontier District branch and a bar waitress. Before joining he was living together in the city with his mother, but he was handed to his father by his mother due to a certain circumstance. His father's occupation wasn't something respectable by any means but, his mother never talked about his father's true occupation to her still young child. He was only told that his father punished bad people in order to earn money. The young Dino idolized his father. He grew to become someone who talked down bad people at those who had differing opinion from him with sound argument, and wielded violence toward those who couldn't understand his justice. But, his justice antagonized other children which resulted the young Dino to be beaten down by even greater violence. That was the time when Dino started to become warped. He started working hard to become strong for the sake of his justice, at the same time in order to vent his anger. He became someone who wielded excessive violence against evil that was weaker than himself. At first he kidnapped the pet dog or livestock of those who beat him and killed the animals by torturing them. It was him clearing up his grudge while at the same time giving judgment on his own way toward those who couldn't understand his justice. As he grew, his action intensified. He killed kids who did mischief. When his mother saw the warped smile on her son's face, she finally handed him to his father as though throwing him out. When Dino learned that the true form of his father's justice was the assassin guild, his own justice wavered and Dino became even more warped. But he realized that the justice in his mind wouldn't be recognized by the majority. Instead he affirmed the assassin guild to be a carrier of justice that brought down punishment to the evil even if went against the law. Dino then devoted himself to the organization. The previous guild leader harbored no interest toward his son. As a father, he would give anything Dino asked. Even so he never really looked at Dino closely, and so nobody noticed Dino's warped nature. Dot. When Dino was 20 years old, a woman of dark elf species that was called as the demon race joined the guild. Sergura was a beautiful woman. But more than her beauty, it was her strength that Dino looked up to. Sergura left the evil demon race and became assassin of justice. She was the ideal justice for Dino. Dino requested his further to become her disciple. With that he sought the strength to enforce his justice and also the woman he looked up to. Although done half-heartedly, it was still a teaching from Sergura. In less than a year Dino managed to learn wind and earth sorcery. But, his talent was nothing more than average. 
Although it was sufficient strength for most people, from the perspective of a dark elf like Sir Jura, Dino was lacking in talent. She gave up on him and gave him a pitying gaze. To Dino it felt like contempt. He got warped in proportion to the strength of his admiration towards Sir Jura. After that he became even more fixated towards Sir Jura who gave him pain. He wanted to make Sir Jura who possessed the strength he yearned for to yield to him to give her pain. That obsession brought ruin to the assassin guild. Where yeah, Dino finally understood me. He yelled my name with the intensity of vomiting blood. Dot. Dino race, human dash estimated rank 4, magic power, 145 180 stamina, 223 290, overall combat strength, 795, with body strengthening, 933. Dot. Gakin. The sparks from the clashing sword illuminated the assassin guild that is wrapped in darkness like fireworks. Stone bullet, several stones rained down from the exposed rock surface of the former coal mine. I who could see the color of earth type magic particle from Dino immediately leapt away. I dodged by jumping over the stones as multiple screams rose from behind. Jaya Gua. I knew the earth sorcery's timing from my experience fighting the female thief. With it, I dragged the bunch watching for the moment I let my guard down into the attack and slashed their necks with my knife. Most likely Dino's sorcery is also level 3 like that female thief, but although his activation is faster than that female thief, his firing speed is inferior. If it's just his activation speed, then I want to praise him, as expected from my senior disciple but, his sorcery is lacking in power. Damn it. Dino groaned from hitting his own allies. He directed his blade of hatred toward me. But, for him to hit his own allies meant, you lost control from anger. That was your blunder. Where yeah? I provocatively pointed out Dino's fault. It made Dino lost even more of his composure. I had scattered poison to whittle down the combat strength of the people here, made Shaga and Gaudho to fight each other and brought chaos to the battlefield, but that doesn't mean that I'm in advantage. The surviving assassins who managed to endure poison are gathering here. There are only around ten remaining but, among them there are also beastmen like Radha who have better night vision and detection skill. Although their movement is dulling from poison, most of them are rank 3 like I and Kira. Dot. I pushed down my emotion to the bottom of my heart to harden my resolve. I narrowed my eyes to pressure the surrounding. Truthfully this kind of plan that leave things to luck isn't my favorite. But, such resolve is necessary when merely a single child want to fight against an organization. Come out. You're watching right? You have been wanting to kill me right from the start since I came here right? After all you hate everything that is related to Master Shield. The instant I saw it, I activated the magic shield while dodging by jumping back. Don't think you can run away. Die. Ash covered. Two assassins reacted instantly by throwing a knife and shooting a bow. The projectiles grazed my arm and shoulder, injuring me quite badly. Even so I kept opening the distance. Then at the next moment, Jaya, Iyuk, Gwa, several assassins at the back got dyed black. Their body became unable to move and crumbled like leaves drying up completely. Even while that's going on, disgusting magic particles with complexly mixed colors are approaching. I blocked them with magic shield while dodging. Even so a curse that I failed to block completely hit my cloak. It weathered and crumbled down at the same time as I took it off and threw it away. Dot dot so you dodge it. This accursed disciple of that annoying dark elf. From the deepest part of the darkness, the old wood elf wearing dark colored robes shame and sage showed himself and looked at me with a dark gaze. Curse dot dot curse sorcery is an inefficient technique but, as long as you ignore efficiency and choose the right time and place, it has the power that surpassed other sorcery. In the first place master won't give me lecture and lesson about it if it's just a trifling art. That's why the one who I'm feeling the wariest against isn't Gaudo. But this sage, sage, what are you doing? Looks like he also managed to dodge. Dino expressed his fury toward the sage whose attack also hit the guild members. But the sage only glanced and scoffed at him. Your green pawn dot dot do you believe a mere human like you is above this me? Wah, for the sage, this guild is just a research place. Although he will spend effort to maintain that place. The people here aren't any comrade of his. The sage ignored the speechless Dino and only saw me in his sight. How did you dodge, dark elf's disciple? Dot dot I thought that you will definitely do that. Dark Elf and Wood Elf, while the two are the same race, they hate each other. But more than that, Master denied the curse sorcery that the sage has devoted half of his life to Master. He absolutely couldn't forgive Master. That was why I was waiting for the sage to launch his attack. Although I was convinced just like with Kira that he would attack, it was a gamble whether his attack would also hit other people or not. The elves regarded pride as something important, including Master. The elves who came out of their forest aren't actually that prideful, but this is just how strong the sage's hatred to master is. But, 
The sage's obsession of wanting to kill me even if he hit his allies in the process has neutralized almost all of the guild members in the way. There are still some who lived, but if they haven't showed up in this place, they must be those who aren't confident with their fighting skill or those with strong wariness. Guo, I heard a death throw from somewhere. He must have gotten affected by the curse just now. Bazakashaga has one of his feet dyed black. Gudo's claw pierced his heart and he crumbled. Ga, the victor, condemned Gaudo noticed the sage who was the one binding him with curse and let out a shout of anger. But Gaudo himself isn't unharmed. He had just fought Shaga seriously. His whole body is filled with deep lacerations. Not just that, his right arm also got hit by the curse and turning into black dust. Dot dot so it also won't accept Hordaha. You're truly annoying, Dark Elf's disciple and also your teacher, Pukin. The sage realized that I was the one rewriting Gudu's curse and grimaced. He pinched one of his fingers that looked like a withered branch and then snapped it himself. Prostrate, Gaga, Gudo tried to leap at the sage, but he got flattened on the floor while vomiting blood. Dot dot compensation style curse ha. Huh? Master thought that its efficiency is the worst even among the curse sorcery. Most likely this was the cause of the enmity between master and the sage. Sorcery is a technique to cause a phenomenon by paying with the caster's magic power as compensation. But in case of curse, the ratio of that compensation is bigger. A curse sorcery demand magic power and the time needed to set it up. But, when it's taken even further, the compensation can develop to offering yourself to spirit life form like devil and the like. It's said that elf race can't become old, but that's because they often die by a disease or accident before they turn old. A wood elf like the sage has the appearance of an old man most likely because he has been using his life force as compensation. By leaving the last compensation for that kind of curse sorcery unpaid, he could activate the curse after paying the last compensation by injuring himself, breaking his finger. His remaining fingers dot dot there are still nine. If he can launch attack of the same scale by repeating his self-injuring action, my chance to defeat the sage by fighting him fair and square is small. Besides there is also still Dino. Right now he found it hard to make a move from fear of facing him and me simultaneously. But if he saw that the sage isn't hostile against him although he also isn't his ally, he will take action to cut off my path of escape. I'm still in disadvantage. But I have no intention of running. Besides, Soon the last trap that I risked my life for will activate. Question mark. Dot dot this is. The sage slightly scowled and looked back. Dino noticed that and turned his gaze toward the entrance. When I entered this guild from its regular entrance, I also played my last gambit. It was hot for some reason today right? It was humid for some reason today right? That was because I destroyed all the vent holes in this underground guild. This place was formerly a coal mine. An accident several hundred years ago produced a lot of victim and a huge cathedral and graveyard were built here. When I investigated that accident, I learned that it was an accident of natural gas coming out from the rock surface and a torch's fire lit it up. Even now small amount of gas is gushing out. The usual faint smell was because of that. Even so it wasn't to a degree that could affect human's health. As long as vent hole is created at the point where the gas leaked out, there won't be any problem even if fire lamp is lit here. Even so there were only few lamps here. It wasn't just because everyone has night vision, but because the predecessors who built this guild feared the gas from accumulating again. I closed the vent holes several days ago so that gas gradually accumulate inside the guild. There should be those who got dizzy from that too. But they had gotten used to the smell of gas from living here in many years and couldn't perceive it as something dangerous. And then I scattered poison. Shaga and Gaudo went into rampage, and the sage used curse indiscriminately. Naturally such chain of events would make someone without combat strength to run away. It won't activate only by someone entering inside from the entrance. But, the moment someone tried to go outside from that entrance, the string I set up will snap and triggered some oil to be lit up. This smell of scorch that has reached even my nose must meant that the fire has spread around the entrance. I didn't use this method right from the start because, if I use this right from the start, then no matter how individualistic the assassins are, it's possible that all of them will work together as one to escape. But, it's too late now. This place is a coffin for you guys. When I muttered that, the few surviving people looked astonished. Dino who realized that it was me who lit fire in this underground guild staggered backward. Dot dot you're mad. I wouldn't be able to even fight against you guys if I don't go that far. The time remaining for everyone in this guild is only until the fire spread and lit up the gushing out gas. All of you shall die here. You bastard. You bastard. Gakin. Dino rushed forward with a terrifying speed. When my black knife met his short sword, they created an intense metallic sound. How dare you? Against my guild. Is that so? I curtly replied while we exchanged blows for two, three times. For someone like Dino, organization must be like a status that symbolized himself externally. In order to maintain it, he brought together unique people as the leader, 
gathered capable people like they are his collection, and like that he even meddled with Master's peaceful life. The guild that you treasured so much is in a dire strait now. But, let me say it even then, you reap what you sow. Ah, uh, Gaikin. I leapt back from the severe blow that Dino did with the intensity as though he is spitting blood. Dino's short sword is most likely made from mithril. Viro was also using the same thing so I know its characteristic. Mithril is formed from silver vein underground being exposed to thick magic particles for a long period of time. Its hardness is slightly inferior compared to my knife of magic steel, but it has good magic power conductivity, and similar with magic sword, it can also deal damage to spiritual life form. In the current situation the difference in weapon is the same as non-existent, but my knife focused on sharpness and it has low power, and my own combat level is inferior compared to Dino so there is a limit in how long I can continue blocking his attacks. You're a nuisance, Dino. Begin. The sage snapped his own finger. Magic particles with disgusting and chaotic color flowed from him again. You. Dino sensed the curse even though he can't see it. He rolled on the ground to dodge it and open the distance. Thanks to the warning, I also managed to use shield while barely escaping to a safe range. You bastard. Are you able to see my curse? That shield too. You bastards who are connected to that dark elf are really annoying. The sage hurled abusive words after seeing me successfully dodging his curses in succession. Perhaps he was only doing it unconsciously but. The sage was hesitating to hit Dino together with me because he still needed the guild which is his research place to remain. Thanks to that I can fight against these two rank 4 like this but that too won't last long in various meaning. The flame burning from the entrance has continued to spread until its heat can be felt even from here. Black smoke is starting to flow until this place that is almost at the center of the underground. I pulled up my shawl that has been soaked with antidote until my eyes. If that woman's knowledge is accurate, this place also won't last long. But, they should be even more anxious than me. Right now their hatred toward me is still greater, so they are prioritizing fighting but they should notice that their life is in danger when they become calm. Human will lose their composure when they are ruled by hatred, and when they regain their composure their next anxiety will form. That's why I'll finish this before their sanity return. Dino, just go secure an escape path. You're in the way. Shut up. Don't order me around. Rest assured, with this hand, this dark elf's disciple shall. Hyun, I won't give you the time. You. When I threw two pendulums with curving trajectories, Dino hurriedly dodged one of them but it still left a shallow cut on his neck. My basic tactic is outlandish scheme and surprise attack. For that I almost never showed the pendulum an illusion in front of them. But, this is the time to stop holding back. I'm using everything here to hold them back here until it become impossible for them to escape. I'll definitely do it. Pukin. Rot. Another curse came from the sage. Perhaps because he noticed that I was dodging the curse with sight. The sage prioritized range for this curse instead of power. If I got hit fully by the sage's curse, it will be instant death for me if I'm unlucky. Curse is a terrifying technique as long as all the conditions are cleared and you choose the time and place for it. Even so it has weakness. In the end curse is unrivaled only when it's passive. It's lacking speed when used for face-to-face -face combat like now. Also this only apply to me but... You have shown your curse that should be a sure kill too many times to me. What? The magic particles with chaotic colors complexly entangled with each other. I ran while dodging them. At the same time I matched my magic particles with the magic particles that I can see and threw it to them to neutralize the curse. Earth against water, water against fire, darkness against light. Dot dot it's impossible to match all the particles complexly entangled with each other to form the curse. But if it's only for a small range that I can't completely dodge. Dot dot if it's just for a moment. By using daily life magic with my magic power control that has reached level 3, I can erase a part of the magic particles that form the curse, neutralizing that small area. This is the fruit from steadily dispelling the curse on Gaudo. Where yeah, the expanded range of the curse reached even Dino's location. As I approached near, Dino hesitated for a moment, between intercepting me or dodging the curse. In that instant, I casted the trump guard that I have been saving. Pain. Giga. Even pain that has weak effect against stronger opponent can stop them for a moment if they have no prior knowledge about it. I slid on the ground under Dino and cut his side with a knife as I passed him. The instant I passed him by, the sage's curse rotted Dino's left arm and left leg. Jaya. He let out a scream that sounded like a death throw. Dino fell limply. Even so, ah, Dino's rage and hatred drove him to brandish his short sword with his right arm even while he is dying. It's too close that I can't dodge. But, a faint sound reached me at that time. Clang dot dot. A familiar necklace fell from Dino's pocket and it rolled until under my feet. The water that I immediately chanted caused a lot of steam to burst up due to the surrounding heat and the power of the water spirit stone. Question mark. 
Ha! The short sword thrown by Dino whose sight is blocked flew past my side. I stepped forward and tore Dino's face vertically. Seeing that, the sage grabbed several fingers and snapped them all at once. You dark elf's disciple. Three types of curses came attacking as the expression of the sage's fury. I leapt out from the steam and dashed through the guild as the curses cornered me. No matter how slow curse is, I can't dodge them with this timing. But you know dot dot why do you think I destroyed all the lights before I came until here? What? The figure of me vanished as the three curses enveloped it. I still took the time to destroy the lights even knowing that there are beastmen and delf with strong night vision. Here wasn't just as counter measure against human. The humanoid illusion that I used in the battle against Gobhoblin to trick its night vision shadow. Using that, I made that humanoid magic particles only to run away from the cover of the steam. Even if the elf's night vision is level 2. He can be tricked once in this situation. That was my aim. Gubu, I took advantage of that moment and two pendulums came flying from unexpected directions. They pierced the sage's neck diagonally. But, new, it should be a fatal wound no matter how you looked at it. Even so the sage found me who is lurking in the darkness even while blood spurted out from his throat and mouth. He grabbed his finger to unleash his curse. Fa ha. Uh, I won't be able to dodge the next one in this range. I instantly judged that and took her off my stealth. I squeezed out the air in my lungs and decided to meet it head on. I'm impressed by your tenacity. Then in order to face it head on, I swished my skirt and pulled out the throwing knives attached on my calves with both hands. Within the slowed down time due to my body strengthening, the sage tightly grasped his own finger to activate his curse while I threw my knives. With this timing we will take down each other. Zashu. Dot dot yo dot dot you bastard. My knives pierce the sage's throat and chest. The sage's curse doesn't reach me. Gah. The executed curse was blocked by a huge body that cut in front of it, blocking it completely. Gaudo. Gaudo blocked the curse as my shield, with his remaining left hand on his battered body. Gaudo grabbed the sage's neck that was like a withered tree. Th is dot dot damn guinea pig G Gaudo's tenacity outdid the sage his hand crushed the sage's neck and tore off his head Gaudo stood still after finishing off the sage in his eyes it was faint but there was a light of reason there Gaudo dot dot it's your win you dot dot managed to regain yourself in the end he looked back at the words that spilled out from my mouth my figure is reflected on his eyes as his body grumbled down from the curse it felt like he is smiling just a little dot do ooh, ooh. suddenly an explosive sound came from the back. The overflowing gas caught fire and swallowed Gaudo and the sage. Most likely there was someone who tried using the escape route at the deepest part, where the gas accumulated. That person opened my last trap. I can hear the death throes of still surviving guild members from afar. Nobody can escape anymore. It's over for this guild. Dot dot you dot dot satisfied. Dot dot Dino. Dino is still alive even with half his body violated by curse and his face torn vertically. Inside the hell that is dyed crimson by the spreading flame, I and the unmoving Dino who is lying face down on the ground stared at each other. He is wearing a slightly cynical smile. Dot dot for the guild to be crushed by a kid like this. Dot dot are you satisfied that you can save Sergira? But this is also the end for you. No one dot dot can escape anymore. Aria dot dot you won but. Our beloved teacher will surely live in regret for eternity from losing you. Master is someone with deep compassion, so she will surely feel sad. That's why Dino laughed sadistically, claiming that I don't win. You're twisted till the end huh? Is that all that you want to say? Then, say Anara. I dispassionately loaded an arrow into my crossbow gimmick. Dino's face gradually twisted more and more as he watched me. His widely opened eyes reflected me who is looking down coldly on him and the arrow I fired. With this he will never move again. Go to the other side by yourself. HTTPS colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash i008 dot jpg. Go do Gara a a an. There must be accumulated gas in the underground far deeper than even that coal mine. The explosion that reverberated in the underground shook the bedrock and the huge cathedral made from stone. The bell fell down from the spire that is enveloped in flame and crumbling. The toll of the bell ringing from the falling rubbles struck the ears of the dumbfounded citizens watching the spectacle. Dot. I'm staring at that scene from the shadow of a distant building. I was able to escape from the underground where nobody should be able to escape. It was also a gamble for me but, I was quite confident in my chance of success. What saved me was Shadow Walker that Radha used. It's a level 4 dark sorcery but, by recomposing it into Shadow Snatch and familiarizing myself in using it, I was able to activate it just barely although I ended up using all of my magic power. Shadow Walker can only traverse to shadow that the caster's magic particle is connected to. In order to do that, 
When I blocked all of the vent holes, I left behind several strings filled with my magic power at several spots. From there I used Shadow Walker and managed to move until the graveyard's burial chamber, but my magic power ran dry from using sorcery that surpassed my level and I almost dead from fatigue. But, it was fortunate that I was constantly a magic power recovery potion because of my previous lesson. I recovered until I can move my body somehow and managed to escape from the cathedral that also grumbled along. The Assassin Guild's Northern Frontier District branch is destroyed. I don't know how the other branches and the involved nobles will act because of this. But, dot. I'm prepared for that, dot. I gave a last glance at the crumbling cathedral before vanishing into the darkness. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 19 Invitation from Darkness It was the beginning of winter when I left Master's house. The season has turned into early summer after the spring passed away. I'll turn into nine years old after one more season passed. I spent five months to crush the Assassin Guild. I left it the same day from the territory of Count Haydel where the Northern Frontier District branch was located and headed to the territory of Baron North that is a neighbor of the territory of Margrave Dandel. That no is the client whose heirloom was stolen by Mercenary of Dawn that I assassinated. It's not like I have awakened to the calling as assassin after this late but. Heirloom. For me whose parents died in an accident, something like that felt special for some reason. If possible I want to return the item to its family. Clatter. I took out the heirloom necklace that I was storing inside my storage so that it wouldn't be lost and stared at it. Spirit tear it's a spirit's magic stone that spirit who is erased from this world will rarely drop. This stone is also considered as gem. From the start it's a magic stone with high purity, so it can also function as amulet if simple magic circle is carved into it. Because of that it's expensive and there were people who summoned spirits to hunt them, but many people got the table turned on them and died. And just the act of hunting the spirits who control this world's principle is seen badly by the Holy Church due to Fandora theocracy that is the headquarters of the religion. It was decided that not only trading, but even just possessing spirit tear is a sin. It's not like that decision has any compelling force but, many of the light element sorcerers belong to the Holy Church, so there is no statesman who opposed the decision openly. I'm not interested why Baron North can have something like this in his possession. He paid a great amount of money. 40 large gold coins to regain this item. Even in the past, this item shouldn't worth that much. Then he must harbor a great feeling for family that pushed him to pay that much money for this. Just in case I didn't stop by any large city. I passed through forests and small cities, taking around one week to arrive at the town where Baron North lived, but I didn't encounter any remain of the Assassin Guild. Was I too cautious? Dot dot no, I think there were only a few people who noticed that I destroyed the guild. But there is nothing better than being careful. The cloak of monster leather that I bought in Jelf's store was destroyed in battle, so right now I'm wearing a normal cloak that I purchased from a normal store. With my current appearance, there should be nobody who followed me based only on my appearance. Dot. I paid one silver coin to enter the town, ordered a soup from a stall and ate it while asking around about the state of the town and the feudal lord. The portly female stall owner seemed to have free time and told me a lot of things. You can see that mansion on the hill over the right? That's the lord's mansion, he. I can see that mansion even from the street. As expected from a place that is close to a metropolis like Dandel, it looks even more splendid than the mansion of Baron Salis where I previously went undercover as maid. It might look small to the visitor who came from large city like Dandel. But this place isn't that bad you know. Though the tax has gotten higher in these several years. Did something happen? When I lowered my voice's tone and asked, the owner who seemed like a gossip lover brought her face closer to me and lowered her voice in a whisper. I think it was around two years ago. The Lord's previous wife got attacked by bandits when she was traveling to another territory in a carriage. She died from that. Previous wife? Bandits. Oh, so you also don't know about that? The current madam is the second wife you know? And then, after that the Lord gathered a lot of people like the Knights and the Adventurers to form a large-scale subjugation force. They took down the bandits but, it looked like the Lord really overdid it. Apparently he borrowed money from a company with a bit of bad reputation. Dot dot sounds bad. At that time the heirloom got stolen by Mercenary of Dawn, and in order to pay the request fee to the Assassin Guild, he might have borrowed money from that company. I don't know how much of it is true okay, but, after that the merchant's daughter lived in the mansion as the Lord's second wife you see and after that the tax got raised, so it became a rumor that the Lord is unable to go against his current wife. I see. Well, this town isn't that bad, so if you're also an adventurer little miss, work hard to make this town prosper okay. The female owner said that and laughed heartily. Dot dot but, you know that I'm a woman mom? Even though you're dressed like that, it's obvious from a glance when you're that pretty little miss. Dot. 
I'm wearing a cloak that covered me until my ankle just in case. Half of my face is also hidden behind a shawl. And yet I still completely look like a woman. Putting that aside, the Baron's reputation isn't bad based on the information I obtained. Nobody is talking bad of him even after he raised the tax somewhat. His government must be that good until now. Was the tax increase because he was made to do it by his second wife in order to collect the money? Although the company's reputation is bad, it's only natural for a company to seek much profit after lending that much money with bad prospect of payment, so it doesn't bother me. It was the Baron's decision to borrow money from a company with bad reputation and the making request to the Assassin Guild, so it all depend on the Baron of what he will do after this. I'm simply coming here to return the heirloom to settle things. Other information said that the Baron has a single daughter, so perhaps it will be easier to hand the heirloom to that daughter rather than to the Baron himself. Dot. For now let's go check this Baron's mansion first. I entered the town as an adventurer, so perhaps I should show up to the Adventurer Guild, but perhaps there will be a record of me visiting here if I came to the Guild even if I used fake name, so it will be better if I don't drop in this city anymore in the future. Even though I came to return a heirloom, I didn't knock the front door and waited until it became night. Even using my eyes, I cannot see any magical protection over the mansion. Looks like it will be easy to sneak in. I'm thinking of such thing while deciding to leave this place temporarily. It's at that timing a voice suddenly addressed me from behind. Are you perhaps, an adventurer? Dot dot yes. The one who called to me is a young woman wearing a dress that looked somewhat worn out. I noticed her approaching me but, the way she walked and also her presence aren't any difference from ordinary person, so I ignored her thinking that it would look unnatural if I paid attention to her. A A. As I thought, your atmosphere is different even though you're this young, so I thought that's the case. After I nodded, that woman clapped her hands cheerfully and she laughed merrily. Dot dot who? Ah, I'm sorry, that was rude of me. I am the daughter of this land's lord, Nora. The feudal lord apostrophe s dot dot lady daughter? I never expected of encountering my objective this easily. I unconsciously muttered seeing Nora's cheerful atmosphere turned 180 and she displayed an aristocratic courtesy. But then her atmosphere immediately returned to before and she waved her hand around in panic. Don't mind it, although I'm a noble, I'm just a daughter of a minor baron, er, uh, and, what is your business with an adventurer like me? Ah, yes, right dot dot I was thinking that I want to try speaking with a female adventurer if I encounter one. If you don't mind, can you lend me a bit of your time? Dot dot got it. By all rights I shouldn't get involved with her, but, for some reason I felt something like anxiety in her tone when she said want to speak. So I ended up agreeing. But I forgot. Although Nora is a daughter of a baron of small territory and she herself is someone amiable who doesn't act like a noble, she is still the young lady of a baron house that ruled over a population of more than 10,000. There is no way a talk with such noble lady would end up with just standing around at the side of road. Dot. Sorry that I can only give you tea that I brew myself. Dot dot no problem. Nora personally brewed tea for me in a room inside the mansion that seemed to be a living room. I had no choice other than entering the mansion. Let's think positively. More importantly why is she brewing the tea personally instead of telling a servant to do it? It's not impossible for a baron's daughter to do such thing if she has experience of serving as a maid for the royalty or the like, but her outfit that is unbefitting for a nobility and the way she was gone to an outing alone without anyone accompanying her might have something to do with it. You see dot dot I'll have to marry soon. I'm a noble's daughter so I'm not objecting of being married to someone who my parent decided for me but dot dot I'm feeling a bit faint-hearted now so I wanted to hear a story from adventurer who has gone to a lot of places dot dot what do you want to hear I talked to her as an adventurer about some harmless things just as she asked me then Nora too started to talk to me about herself bit by bit it seemed that she already has a fiancé since she was small her fiancé is the third son of a baron house who planned to marry into her family both of them don't dislike each other but last year it seemed her fiancé was changed because of some reason. It seems he has also talked with his parents but dot dot it's no good. Both of us are noble. We can't go against our family. Nora said that brightly dot dot she made a lonely smile. I see. I don't understand the subtleties of romance. But, I somehow understood that Nora is still thinking of her fiancé from before. Nora san, what are you doing? It was then. The door opened without the person even knocking first. A woman who seemed to be at her late twenty with gaudy outfit entered the living room. Stepmother. Oh, you have a guest. That woman dot dot perhaps she is the second wife who came from the company that I heard in the rumors. That woman is wearing a well-tailored dress unlike Nora. She saw me who had taken off my cloak and sitting on the sofa. After she realized that I'm an adventurer in a glance, HMPH she snorted and continued talking to Nora while ignoring me. Have you finished with your errand to the company? You're engaged with my little brother after all, 
Surely you have greeted him properly haven't you? Linus will become the next Baron, so you will regret it if you don't start buttering up him starting from now. Yes, what are you doing with that kind of little girl? In this, the second wife's voice stopped while she was in the middle of talking. I'm not doing anything. Far from talking, I'm not even letting out any pressure. Dot. But, that woman who turned her gaze at me might have seen something in my eyes as I stared fixedly without saying anything to her. She slightly stepped back and fear ran through her expression. HHMPH, you brat lack manners, ban. The woman slammed the door close and left with rapid footsteps, dot dot s sorry for that. Don't mind it. Although she was surprised by the second wife's attitude, Nora apologized apologetically and I shook my head lightly in response. She really doesn't need to mind it. After all I also don't mind it at all. I parted from Nora and left the Baron's mansion. From there I sensed the presence of several people tailing me for a while. Two people dot dot this is too hasty timing wise even if that second wife arranged it right after our encounter. But. The number decreased by one for a short while before increasing once more into four people after a while. At the end their number has increased until around ten. How about coming out? I intentionally entered a back alley and called out when I arrived at an empty place. The men showed a bit of sign of surprise before showing themselves. Well well, as expected from someone like you. You are the ash crowd aren't you? Dot dot who are you guys? The people who appeared are dressed like inconspicuous commoner who can be found anywhere, but their atmosphere is telling me that they aren't ordinary people. The number of people who knew my true identity and called me Ash Crowned is limited. But, they gathered this many people just to contact a lone girl like me show that this won't be a peaceful conversation. Among them is a man at the middle of his twenty who is the only one wearing a better outfit than the rest. He is the one who called out to me. He bowed his head with a pretentious gesture like someone playing in being a noble. Then she displayed a worm-like smile. We are your pickup from the Thief Guild. Dot. Why are people from the Thief Guild here? What does he mean by picking me up? In the first place how did they know about me? There are a lot of things that I want to know but, that answer came from an unexpected place. Wow, well, what do you mean by that, Linus? A man behind them raised his voice. The young who addressed me at the beginning called Linus turned around with a grin. A.A., we are really thankful for your information you know. After all, not only we were able to learn an important information like the destruction of the Assassin Guild's Northern Frontier District branch this quickly. You even brought the information about the key figure who accomplished that. That was because, you geese said that you will help me to take revenge. Foo foo, did we say that? Linus dot dot I knew that name. More importantly, the voice of the man at the back is also familiar. When I looked toward there, I saw a man whose face and body are wrapped in blood-soaked bandage. He is looking at me with a gaze filled with burning hate. A hey, hey, this man is. The beggar ha. Huh? Ash crowned. The one tasked as lookout outside the guild as well as guide. I see. So this man survived. The contact for you and Radha in the capital ran outside covered in flame. He told me of your betrayal before his death. The guys outside the guild who headed into the guild also got crushed by the cathedral's destruction. It was all your fault. I see. You When I replied emotionlessly like that, the beggar got enraged and pulled out a short sword. It seemed the one who activated the trap I set up at the entrance was the male contact who I had never even met. If the information of me leaked outside from him. It was my miss for not putting up a trap that instantly killed the victim. Even so the information that almost all of the members who were outside also died and the fact that I'm the culprit who crushed the guild had been spread is something that concerned me. I'm glad I'm able to learn it. Goopo. Wah. You. The lookout beggar suddenly vomited blood from his mouth. From behind him, one of the thieves had stabbed his stomach with a blade until it pierced through. We are thankful to you but, it's a bother that you interrupted the talk like this. Do it. When Linus snapped his fingers. Several people around the beggar stabbed his neck and chest with bladed weapons. The beggar reached out his hand at me at the end before light vanished from his eyes. Thief isn't supposed to kill isn't it? I sent a glance at the murdered beggar before muttering that. The thief's attention returned to me and Linus brushed off his front bank pretentiously. You know a lot, but that's only applied toward the ordinary people. Besides this result is only natural seeing that he tried to lay his hand on you. Dot. To me it only looked like you guys dealt with him because he didn't have any other use for you though. How did you know that I'm here? Before that, do you have the spirit here with you? Originally we were going to purchase it from the mercenary of dawn. Can you hand it to us? Of course, I shall pay the reward that should be paid to them completely to you in exchange. I see, 
so their aim is this. The beggar must have learned it from the contact. I nodded a little and showed the item just for an instant from my storage like a magic trick. Linus's eyes sparkled seeing the item. The reward? 30 large gold coins. I'm also going to give you an extra 10 coins if you sign a contract with us. It seemed that he felt there is a chance for the negotiation to go smoothly seeing me asking for the reward. A vulgar smile formed on his lips just for an instant before Linus mentioned the word contract. What do you mean, Fufu? Isn't it only natural that we want to have someone skilled like you at our side? Although you have crushed an assassin guild, the other branches are still going strong. The survivors of that branch will also continue to aim for your life. But, there is this secret pact of non-interference between the thief guild and assassin guild. There isn't really any point to the pact for the individuals but, if you become our guest, the assassin guild also won't be able to try anything with you so easily. How about it? It's not a bad offer I believe. I see now. Dot dot so it's something like that. He must be planning to tie me down under the pretext of protecting me while setting me up as an exclusive assassin of the thief guild seeing that they don't have many combat expert in their ranks. I don't think that this necklace is that expensive though. It's because it's forbidden to sell it that there are people who want it even more. It looks like you are also trying to sell it directly to the baron but, too bad. Even that baron house doesn't have any saving anymore, and even if the baron managed to obtain it, it will still end up in our possession one day. But if that's how it's going to be anyway, isn't it better for you to hand it to us right away? Dot. Linus said to hand the necklace to them and they will pay a lot of money for it. So they were lying in wait for me here thinking that I'm going to sell this necklace to Baron North. Well, I guess it's only natural for a thief whose only purpose is money to think like that. I have obtained almost all the pieces of puzzle. But there is still one more thing. What is the reason that this heirloom will still fall into the hand of the thief guild even after it has been returned to the Baron? I accelerated my thinking speed with body strengthening and restructured the information I obtained and pondered it. AA. I see. Linus. The new fiancé of the Baron's daughter Nora. Linus's eyes widened slightly when I muttered that. So you have learned until that much. Foo foo. Dot dot as expected. That's exactly why you're worthy to be one of us. It's just as you guessed. The Baron House is already within the grasp of the Thief Guild. Now, take my hand. Linus held out his hand toward me with a refreshing smile. I also responded to that with a step forward. But I don't take Linus's hand and immediately slashed Linus's neck with a hidden weapon I took out from the storage on my palm. Jaya, it was a bit shallow. Because there was a bit of space between us, it gave Linus a chance to dodge. My blade only ended up cutting Linus's face. W what are you doing? Without the thief guild's protection, you. I'm not looking for anything like that. The fiancé of Baronorf's daughter, Nora. The little brother of the second wife who came from the company that lent money to the Baron. Most likely, that company itself is affiliated with the thief guild. Did the company pulled strings in order to obtain the spirit tier without fail? Or perhaps they made use of the Baron's first wife's death in order to obtain the Baron house itself? Perhaps it was both. Even the bandit attack to the first wife was likely arranged by the Thief Guild. It's also more natural to consider that the mercenary of Dawn was already connected to the Thief Guild from the start. In that case, the misfortune that assaulted Baron North this time was schemed by the Thief Guild from the start in order to obtain money and status both. I dot dot absolutely won't join hand with you guys who killed Nora's mother for the sake of your own greed. K kill her. The opponent is just a single brat. Linus's thin veneer broke and his true vulgar nature came out as he yelled. The eight other thieves pulled out their blades and took their stance. Some among them should be feeling dissatisfied by the plan of welcoming a kid like me as guest, especially with my age and appearance. The thieves easily pulled out their weapons with their underestimation toward me completely transparent on their faces. Dot. The combat strength values of the thieves are around 150 with 350 as the highest. Most of them are rank 2 including Linus. Only three of them are definitely rank 3. One of them must be a sorcerer based on his stamina value and magic power value. Among them is a young man with the lowest combat strength staying at the very back. He looked at me with knife in hand and his expression convulsed. Must likely this man had used appraisal or appraisal crystal to see my combat strength. But he reacted too slowly. It's pointless if he doesn't warn his friends right away after he realized. Be careful, that fellow. Pain. Gaga. I shut up that man with pain before he could say anything unnecessary. Then the knife I threw stabbed between the eyebrows of that stiffened man. Wow. Be on your guard. Shut up. The thieves who were looking for an opening got serious after one of them got easily killed. They rushed to attack without caring of appearance. Stupid idiot. Don't think you can win against this many people, Ash ground. One man charged with an expert knife handling. But, he is just too slow. No matter how high his combat strength is, no matter how high his rank is, in the end he is just a thief. 
Their strength is nothing more than a skill to threaten ordinary people and throw their weight around. I didn't avert my gaze from the man's knife that lunged at me and tilted my head to dodge. Then I cut the man's neck as he passed me. Seven people remaining. Shadow snatch. I dropped a fistful of shadow on the ground and an arrow punched from below into the crotch of the man who leapt over it. Hig. I immediately stabbed a pendulum's blade into the man's throat. The blade that I quickly pulled out is accompanied by a mist of blood spraying in the air. That blade tore the face of a young man who is dumbfounded from his friend's murder. And then I leapt in that timing and pierced his brain with my black knife. That stabbed from his lower jaw. Five people remaining. Fire javelin. The man who seemed to be a sorcerer fired fire javelin. But, he is obviously too panicked. Even I will die instantly if I got hit by it but, shield, grang. The shield I chanted smashed with auditory hallucination of glass breaking from the insufficient magic power. But against a sorcery with this kind of sloppy structuring, the shield lasting just for an instant is enough. Jaya. The fire javelin that was diverted by the magic shield directly hit the thief who was approaching using stealth behind me. The man rolled around on the ground with flame covering his whole body. I jumped over him and threw away my cloak that is burning from the attack's blast to block the sight of the sorcery that is starting to chant his next spell. Wow. When I threw several knives to there, I heard a stifled scream. When the cloak fell on the ground, the sorcerer's corpse with a knife piercing his throat tumbled down. Three people remaining. This damn little girl. D-E-E-E-E. -E -E -E. The remaining two rank three lost their senses from rage and charged forward. Wait. I chanted wait and ran up the wall, jumped over the man in front, and then fired dark magic at the one behind him. Pain. Juck. I threw a knife at that man who stopped moving from pain, taking away his fighting capability. Then as I landed, the man who I jumped over leapt at me from behind with his face red from anger. Don't screw Roger. That man didn't notice the pendulum string I set up when I jumped over him. His neck is strangled by his own momentum and weight. I circled behind him in that moment and kicked the back of his head as I pulled the string. Snap. There is a sound of bone breaking and the man's neck snapped. Dot. There is nobody standing anymore when I looked around. The last one. Linus has vanished without me noticing. Dot dot so he ran. But that's also within my expectation. I kicked the jaw of the man writhing from pain and the knife stuck in his stomach. I took out a poison from my waist pouch and sprinkled it on the man's wound. Jaya. It's the imitation poison for intense pain that female thief used. Various kinds of liquids trickled out from all over the man's face. He kept shaking his head in convulsion, unable to believe the situation he is being put in. Now. I'll have you tell me a lot of things, there is no need for you to comprehend anything. But, just remember this one thing. I crushed the assassin guild because they became an enemy of master and me. And then, dot. You guys have also become my enemy. He <laughs> Linus pressed his hand on his blood-soaked face while running through a back alley. He wondered how things turned out like this. He wasn't a man who should smolder in obscurity in this kind of rural territory of a baron. Linus always harbored such feeling in his chest. Together with his big sister who was also born in the slum, they always talked about their dream and groped for a way to climb up the ladder for many years. It was fortunate that the thief guild leader of this town thought that they had talent and picked them up. Linus and his sister learned that the baron of this land possessed a rare gem called the spirit tear. He brought that information to a high ranked noble that wanted it and obtained a connection with him. With that he made a scheme to obtain money and status simultaneously. He not only made his big sister as the second wife of the baron. He also planned to obtain the baron's daughter for himself. That must be the manifestation of Linus's sense of inferiority. The plan was perfect. It was someone under the control of the Thief Guild who introduced the adventurer party mercenary of Dawn to the Baron in order to give them the request to recover the spirit here, but it was also Linus and others in the Thief Guild who lent the Baron the money for the request feat to the Assassin Guild in order to kill them. From the start, Linus and others were planning to have the mercenary of Dawn cleaned up by the Assassin Guild for the spirit here. Whether the mercenary of Dawn came directly to them in order to sell it after repelling the Assassin Guild, or even if it returned to Baron North through the Assassin Guild, all of them should fall into their hands one day, but the situation changed outside of their awareness. An unbelievable information dropped unexpectedly on them. The destruction of the Assassin Guild's branch at the Northern Frontier District. Furthermore the culprit of that was the girl who dealt with the mercenary of Dawn. Although she was an assassin, was it possible for a child to accomplish something like that? According to the survivor of the Assassin Guild who brought the information to them. Apparently that girl was a disciple of a demon race person. She cowardly scattered poison throughout the guild, and lit fire inside their headquarters to slaughter everyone. Furthermore, it seemed the spirit ear was now in the possession of that assassin Dash Crant. At that time Linus considered it as a good chance. He didn't know what was the reason the child betrayed the guild but, the Ash Crown who didn't possess any way to sell stolen items should come directly to the Baron to sell it. Even though she was just a kid, 
If she was capable of performing such cowardly act, she would surely be able to understand the benefit of coming under the umbrella of the Thief Guild. He would hint how the survivors and other branches would want to take revenge on her, and then obtained her combat strength and reputation under the pretext of protecting her. He didn't care even if the actual strength of this ash crown was actually low. Just the fact that they had the one who destroyed a branch of the Assassin Guild on their side would make the underworld to respect of the Thief Guild of this town. Dot. His plan went swimmingly at first. But Linus didn't realize that the mind and strength of a kid who could slaughter a whole guild was beyond the range of their understanding. When he met the Ash Crown for real, he saw that she was just a pretty girl around 12 years old, with a trace of childishness still remaining in her looks. Even after hearing how she crushed the Assassin Guild, the thieves got a misunderstanding due to her cute appearance. It was impossible that a girl like this was strong. Dot dot they thought. The Ash-covered girl suddenly bared her fang at Linus and his men. His comrades got killed one after another instantly the moment they became hostile. Although thieves didn't specialize in violence, that was only compared to adventurer. A lot of them were formerly thugs or born in the slum, so they were far more skilled than the likes of mountain bandits. Furthermore this time they brought ten people of rank two or three in order to give her a scare too. But, the fight ended in an instant, without even a shred of hesitation, as easily as plucking a flower at the side of road. The way she was reaping lives as though she was dancing, it was terrifying but also beautiful. In fact, the girl was beautiful, to a degree that he was so entranced that he forgot the pain of his slashed face. But, the way she plucked lives without hesitation with that appearance that could even be called as lovely looked like a god of death who didn't belong to this world. The terror from the approaching hand of death made Linus abandon his comrades who were being killed and ran away. The sun was still high in the sky. If he could run and report to the guards patrolling the streets, Linus who was a company's head clear at the surface might be saved. However, Linus also had a pride as someone who lived in the underworld. If he did something like that in a quarrel between fellow underworld residents, he would become unable to continue living in this world. He also understood that such excuse crossed his mind, and so he decided to not to run to the guards. But in reality, somewhere in his heart he realized that it was pointless even if he did something like that. That girl would definitely come to kill Linus. If necessary, she would even slaughter everyone on his way to absolutely kill him. The instant he saw the Ash Crown's eyes, Linus realized that based on his instinct as a dweller of the underworld. Dot. Oh open, open the door. He returned to the company where he served as head clerk and hanged the back door loudly. El Linus San, you're wounded. Shut up, move aside. Linus pushed aside the man who opened the back door and ran into the building. This company had been used since a long time ago by the Thief Guild of this Baron territory as a cover. The Thief Guild's base moved to here when it was decided to ensnare the Baron. Right now almost everyone here had been replaced with the Thief Guild's members. Close the shop. She is coming. He ordered the shop to be closed in panic even though it was still evening, and chased out the few workers who didn't know anything. Then he began gathering weapons from the warehouse and prepared to fight. Linus was holding his weapon tightly at the back of the store while trembling. He hadn't even got his wound treated. It made the remaining ten odd thieves to look at each other in bewilderment. Even though they were ordered to prepare to fight, the people who were good at fighting in this company had been taken out to accompany Linus. The remaining members here were only rank one or two who specialized in stealth or swindling. Furthermore Linus wasn't in a state of mind to explain the situation, so the thieves inside the shop were in confusion. It was then a man in his prime who didn't wear any clothes on his upper body to show off his muscular build appeared from the back of the shop with half-naked women clinging on him. What's going on here, Linus? Pops. That man was the leader of this Baron Territory's thief guild. He was also the one who picked the siblings from the slum and acted as their parent. Eh save me pops. That thing dot dot that woman is coming. Woman? Linus spoke in fear while clinging on him with a scared face that was soaked in blood. The thief guild's leader sighed in exasperation seeing that. Looks like you've really messed up. Dot dot can't be helped. Oi, send an errand to gather the adventurer. Dot dot pops. The leader stopped moving the moment he started giving instruction. Linus looked back at him dubiously. But, what he saw there? How there were two knives that were stuck in the leader's throat and the area around his right eye turning black from the short arrow that was lodged the maid Linus screamed reflexively. The leader's huge body fell backward and landed with a loud thud. Nobody could comprehend what had just happened from how outrageous it was. Even the prostitutes beside the leader were dumbfounded. Then everyone in that place felt a faint breeze inside the closed area. It tempted them to turn around. Question mark. Without anyone noticing. One of the roof windows had been opened. Outside of that window with the background of the ultramarine sky that was starting to darken, a girl whose hair was dirtied by ash was looking down on the thieves below with cold green eyes that froze them. Dot. 
I came to kill you all. A massacre occurred in the downtown of Baranov's territory. First nine corpses were discovered at a back alley. Several guards who inspected eight of the corpses said that they belonged to a certain company. When the soldiers headed to that company, they found the shop closed even after morning came. When they entered inside, they found the corpses of more than 20 employees including the company president and the head clerk Linus. The casualties numbered more than 30 in total. It was the biggest murder incident that ever happened in this barren territory but, proof of participation in crime and documents of the company's involvement with the thief guild were discovered inside the company, and from how almost all of the victims were killed in one attack, the incident was treated as an underworld's dispute before it could become public knowledge. Even if that company was the headquarter of this town's thief guild, Another thieves from everywhere would rush here and build the thief guild again somewhere in the town. Among them there should also be a lot of fortunate people who happened to not show themselves at the guild that day. They would say this to the new thieves who came to the town with a fearful expression. Dot. Don't get involved with the Ash Crown Princess. Several months after the thief guild in this town was destroyed, the wedding ceremony of the only daughter of the feudal lord, Nora was being held in the mansion of Baron North. The groom isn't a company's head clerk who became her new fiancé but her previous original fiancé, the third son of a barren house with whom they had feeling for each other. With this she finally managed to make her desire came true, because Nora is the only child of the baron, he entered the house of Baron North as son-in-law and from here on he would learn how to manage the territory from the current baron as the one who would become the next baron in the future. Baron North was moved to tears seeing Nora in wedding dress. There wasn't any wife accompanying him at his side. Baron North was holding a small portrait of his wife who died several years ago. The second wife who joined the family after that got divorced after the company she came from was closed down. Even before that the woman had been in a state of agitation from fear. She ran away from this territory the moment she got divorced. It was said that she lost her life from a bandit attack in a mountain while she was heading to Dandel. In the wedding ceremony, Nora shared a smile with the young man who was her childhood friend. A necklace of spirit tear that has been slightly decorated so it can't be seen what kind of gem it actually has is swaying on her chest. According to the servants who I talked with, it seemed that necklace is a memento of her deceased mother. Apparently the grandmother of her mother was a spirit summoner and she received it from a spirit. In other words, it wasn't an unsavory item that was obtained from killing a spirit like the taboo from the holy church. Dot. I made sure of Nora's happiness before quietly turning my back on it. Because of everything I did in this town, I became troubled of when and how to return to the necklace, but in the end I simply sneaked into her room and left it beside her pillow. Just in case, I left behind a note that was written with the words your mother is avenged, but thinking back now, I might have done something unnecessary. Clatter. My gaze fell toward the scorched necklace on my palm that was the other spirit here. It was something I prepared to trick the contact and I managed to retrieve it during that fight but. The spirit tear turned into mere stone as though to declare that its role had ended. This stone was something dropped by the spirit I defeated. I might have gotten burned inside that flame without this water spirit stone. I wonder why that water spirit left behind this magic stone which is supposed to be something very rare. Perhaps that spirit was seeking death. But the only one who knew the truth was only that water spirit. Dot dot it's pointless to keep thinking about it. I looked back once more for the last time before leaving this place. Dot dot Nora looked happy. The words that I left behind will become a breakpoint for her but, she shouldn't look behind anymore. At that time, Nora looked back with the same timing and our gazes accidentally met. Even though the distance between us is really far, Nora seems to remember me and her eyes widened just a little. Then she waved her hand with a wide smile. I also waved my hand a little before turning back and left. Dot. I finally turned nine in these several months. My body also grew a little bit again, but although I was able to crush an assassin guild and thief guild, I still can't be said to be truly strong. In order to fulfill my promise to some people, my strength is still lacking. I also still haven't paid back Grave who attacked me and might hurt Elena in the future. I'm also still separated from the organization that Sarah belonged to. I don't even know whether they are enemy or ally. The survivors of the Assassin Guild are also still attacking me sporadically. Because of that I still can't return back to Master's place. I'm still not strong enough to move aside everything that is trying to tie me down. But. I already stopped running away. I also stopped hiding. If someone want to kill me then come at me anytime. The stronger you guys are the stronger I'll also become. I'll fight. For the sake of my promises with Master and Elena, I'll obtain strength so that not even the nobles ties of obligation can bind me. I'll become someone who is feared even by the people of the underworld. This might be just a wild delusion of a pretentious kid. Dot dot but, I'll obtain that. For that, I'll live not as an assassin but as an adventurer. Because I want true strength. 
not just strength against human. Pake in. I threw the tag with the fake name Anya to the air and cut it apart. I'm the adventurer Arya, that's why. Dot. Come out. When I called out toward the highway that has grown dark, a black silhouette oozed out from the darkness. Most likely they are assassin from an assassin guild branch somewhere. Because they are covering their whole body, I can't appraise them accurately. Even so I can feel the strength of someone around level 4 from the atmosphere they're radiating. That assassin unsheathed a black one-handed sword. I also unsheathed my black knife, and the blades clashed at the same time. Dot. I won't run away from anything anymore. In a gloomy back alley of a town, that girl was standing with her long black wavy hair fluttering. Her purple eyes that were surrounded with horrible dark circles like a sick person narrowed gently while looking down on a slightly dirty man. That man was rolled on the ground after facing a girl who looked like she was still twelve years old. He opened his mouth with a scared expression while glob of cold sweats trickled down from all over his face. I it's true, I don't know anything more than that, believe me. I only heard about the rumor of the woman called Ash Crowned Princess from a peddler. The man was a member of the Thief Guild in the capital. How did that man fall into this kind of situation? That was because the noble daughter before him was looking for information of a certain girl. This man was simply unfortunate for knowing about that spreading rumor. The truth of that rumor wasn't certain. But it was said that girl who was said to be still in her early teens slaughtered the members of an assassin guild branch on her lonesome, and she also got into hostility against the Thief Guild on top of that. After hearing all that, most people would think of it as simply foolish talk from a drunk. But even though it was a happening from far north, this mere rumor among the peddlers and thieves spread until as far as the capital. It was an absurd story, but together with its fame, it was a fascinating enough topic for the merchants who came from the north to bring up as an idle gossip to draw the interest of their negotiation partner. There was still nobody who seriously believed in that story, whether it was those one telling the story or those hearing the story. But, that noble daughter Carla Lester was the only one who listened to it seriously before her gaze wandered to empty space in ecstasy. As I thought you're alive, dot dot Aria. If that girl had decided, then she would surely carry it out no matter what kind of obstruction got in her way. In this world that was filled with agony, Aria was the only one who recognized her existence, and gave her a promise to kill her. Dot. Carla saw a dream with her eyes still opened. What came to her mind was the graduation party of the Sorcery Academy where she was brought to by her father for only once when she was little. In that party, only nobles with rank higher than Baron and their partner got invited to the palace. They were wearing resplendent outfit, took the hand of the partner in their heart with bashful smile, and then danced brilliantly. That dreamy brilliant scene was instantly dyed with the color of blood. The people inside that scene got replaced dot dot by Carla's fiancé the Crown Prince and the sons of the high-ranked nobles. They were all lying face down in the pool of their blood. The castle town that was enveloped in flame decorated the dazzling stage. There, Carla and Aria in their gorgeous dresses were trying to kill each other with only each other and nobody else reflected in their eyes. Dot. Exclamation mark. The thief got his head grabbed with an eagle grip by Carla's fingertips that were like white fish. Crimson flame surged from the gaps of her fingers and burned the thief. A soundless scream played in the back alley. Carla let out a captivated voice into the darkness, like a girl who dreamed of a prince charming on white horse. Dot. Come to kill me quickly. Dot dot aria. Https colon slash slash bookapervert.files.wordpress.com slash 2021 slash 10 slash io09.jpg. Heroin Survival Volume 2 Chapter 20. Extra Story 1. Wish on a Star. Within the Dark. D A R K Darkness, where there is no end in sight. Dot dot. However, on the path that is leading to a certain death, you appeared like a silver winged angel. If that's what Carla wished for. I'll kill you. Dot dot a a. How lovely. If I'm going to die one day, then I want to die from being killed by Aria. Dot. The house of Count Lester is a famous house of sorcerer that has existed since the era of the old Claydale kingdom until now. Mother told my big brothers and me that our father, and grandfather, and even great grandfather were all the head of the royal sorcerers of Claydale kingdom. She raised us while telling us all the time to become a splendid noble and sorcerer. I who was born as the youngest daughter of the Count House Carla Lester had been imposed with sorcery training together with my three big brothers since I became old enough to be aware of my surrounding. My father was strict but elegant. My mother was pretty and graceful. My big brothers were overflowing with talents. However, I wasn't as talented as my brothers. Even after turning three years old I could only make a small fire. But, my brothers were kind. A lot of the servants in the mansion also consoled a failure like me. Father and mother were also strict, but brothers and the servants consoled me saying that it was because they had high expectation from me, so I was able to endure strict training. But, 
I was wrong. Everyone's kindness didn't have that kind of meaning. Carla. I'm going to give you an operation. Father suddenly said that and began using me for various experiments. I was made to drink various medicines that were created with alchemy. There were even magical seals applied on my scalp and organ that weren't visible from outside. In that state, the servants who were father's disciples showered me with magic power as a sorcery training. When I was at the death's door, I was healed so I at least didn't die under the name of light sorcery experiment. Even among all those, father's main interest was to find out what would happen to a human who obtained all elements. I desperately grappled with that draining. As my magic power continued to increase day by day, no matter how painful, sad, and difficult it was, I desperately clung on my belief that my family still loved me. As the result, I obtained all elements of sorcery when I was four years old. Father smiled slightly at that experiment result but, he was also disappointed at the same time. Because in exchange of obtaining all elements, my body was in a state where it was unclear whether I would be able to stay alive until I became adult. With that I also wouldn't be able to be used as bargaining chip for marrying to other house and obtained political connection between nobles. HMPH, so you are useless now, Carla. Even so that's fine. The experiment is over. Even if you can't have any child, I've decided to send you to the royal family as the crown prince's fiancé to form a connection with them. Your last role is to survive until the crown prince's other fiancé can give birth to his child at the very least. Don't disappoint me any more than this. Dot dot yes. Everything was wrong. Everything that I felt was just make-believe. Further wasn't someone with strict personality. He simply held no interest to anything else than sorcery and the prestigious Lester house. As I turned into someone who often slept in bed due to my broken body, with my skin turning horrible and dark circles forming around my eyes like sick person, mother would scowl when she saw me as though she was looking at something ugly. She stopped giving me a hug anymore. Mother only wanted talented and pretty child as the head of royal sorcerers to be an accessory to decorate herself. Inside the painful and difficult agony that wouldn't heal where I was only ordered to live, I only sought how to die comfortably and ended up shutting myself inside the mansion's library. Inside the library of an ancient house like Leicester, there were thousands of books regarding sorcery. Although I was seeking death, I immersed myself in reading all kind of book to avert my eyes from the approaching death. Father's disciples, the servants stopped showing smile to me after I lost my worth. They only continued to give me food to me who was shutting myself in the library as though they were just taking care of livestock. And then after almost a year passed since I shut myself in the library. Dot. Yo, Carla. You're really in this kind of place huh? Dot dot bro dot dot the. A hoarse voice came out from my lips that had almost forgotten of how to talk. It had been so long since I last met my eldest brother. The servants gossiped that he was in his last year in the sorcery academy that was attended by the noble youths and that he was the most talented person there. Bro dot dot the. Slap. My hand that reached out toward my kind brother was heartlessly slapped away by his hand. Can you please not touch me with that dirty hand? You look ugly. Even an orphan from slum still has a better look than you. W dot dot he. Are you confused? This is only natural for us though. We can't gauge our own talent if there isn't a failure like you among us siblings right? The kindness of her brothers wasn't genuine from the start. But, did he intentionally come here just to say that to his dying sister? Father said to keep you alive but, even if you're going to die sooner or later, you will be at the crown prince's side as I become the head of royal sorcerers during his generation. I can't possibly bear lowering my head to the like of you. And so, I'm thinking to make you Kala as my sorcery's practice target. That will be your final role. Dot 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 ah. In that moment something inside me completely broke. There was nobody who loved me in the family that I loved. Something like that didn't exist from the start. That's right. It was written in that book. It was also written in that book. Several books called banned books that were in that hidden shelves also had that written in them. This world, was just an ugly and horrible place. At that time, the human Carlo inside me died. I was able to learn level 3 sorcery even before turning adult. The teachers said that it has been dozens of years since there was such brilliant achievement but, it's only natural. After all I'm the eldest son of Leicester House, the family that is famed for its sorcery. Father might be angry if I kill you Carla but, surely I'll be forgiven if I tell him how indispensable someone talented like me is. Now, look, this is my source. Brother pointed his hand at me and started chanting his sorcery. Fire Javelin it was a level 3 fire sorcery that could kill human easily. But, what? The fire javelin that brother shot was stopped by the magic power that was released from my hand. Why? Is that it? Why can you only form this kind of shoddy sorcery structure? Even though everything has been explained in the writing of the books. Even though you should understand everything after experiencing the sorcery with your body. The pain of burning skin. The anguish of being chilled to the bone. Sloppy healing that is accompanied with intense pain. 
the terror of your own body breaking, the despair of your loved ones brushing away your hand, even though you can understand everything if you get hit by sorcery yourself. Just what have you been studying until now brother? Even though breaking someone is as easy as flipping a book. Even though the banned books contained a lot of sorcery solely to torture and kill human. AA dot dot my lazy and adorable brother. I love you even with how pathetic you are. It must be painful for someone pretty like you to live in a world this ugly and filthy right? I'll teach you the lesson that I received, just for a bit. Fire javelin. <laughs> Jaya, the fire javelin that I fired without chanting swallowed brother's fire sorcery. Brother was turned into a living torch. I'm sorry brother. It's my first time, so I can't adjust my strength. To burn alive like this, it must be really painful. I held back because I don't want to destroy this precious library, but I couldn't do it well. But, you're also in the wrong brother. It was so adorable how you chanted choppily like that. It made me unconsciously worked up. Please forgive this unskilled sister of yours. Brother has been burned until his lungs and he can't make any voice anymore as he writhed around. I watched him with a warm smile. What are you doing? You will burn to death if you don't cover your whole body with magic power you know. If you can't make any voice, you will feel nothing but pain unless you use sorcery without chanting you know. Even this talentless little sister of yours can do them. So my talented must be able to do better. I wonder if you can't hear me anymore. Even though I only burned him slowly without rushing. What a hopeless brother. I kept watching over brother while smiling until he can't move anymore. Then I stepped down on his head that has become ash. Then, fare thee well, brother. I want to become your sister again in the next life. Let's have a continuation of today at that time. Surely it will be fun. Right after I muttered that dot dot I wonder if they heard brother's voice. I heard multiple footsteps running toward this library. Bam. What's going on? Corpse. This shoes. Young master. You did this, to be able to identify the corpse from the remaining ankle, what capable servants, but, it's a minus point for calling your master's daughter you rudely like that, dust stone shot, I created two compositions inside my head at the same time and fired them, I blocked their sight for an instant and then smashed the servants heads with stone bullets as they stopped moving, it's great isn't it, with this, further won't scold you anymore no matter how bad of a servant all of you are, I'm glad their blood doesn't touch the books, I picked up my scorched brother and got out to the blood soaked corridor, then I began to look for mother and my other brothers who should be in this mansion, guillotine, there isn't any change to the outside of the library even though it's my first time coming out after so long, even so the scenery that I can see is different since I started growing from magic power, or perhaps, the world is looking a bit bright because I have changed. You are also thinking the same right? I asked so to the servant who is only a head now after he attacked me when we bumped with each other. But, even though I'm taking the trouble to meet with mother, I'm dirtied with soot and blood right now because of brother and this servant. Even though I have cleaned myself with clean because I was dirty, what am I going to do now? No, her daughter had gone through the trouble to go meet her while bringing some toys, so surely I'll be forgiven. Now, let's go brother, I started walking through the corridor again after talking to brother and the servant's head, and then I arrived at the courtyard while carrying brother and the servant like flower bouquet, mother who was enjoying tea at the gazebo let out a shrill voice seeing her daughter that she hasn't met for so long, why you, it's a nice timing, my two brothers are also there, my youngest big brother is cute like a girl, so he is mother's favorite, but, youngest big brother, it's really pitiful for oldest big brother and the servant that you're looking pale just from this much, I think mother will also feel sad if you look like that, that's why, iced lance, jah, the face of youngest big brother is gone due to the iced lance, seeing brother losing his head, mother and middle big brother froze in a strange posture, do you want me to lend the head of this servant in its place, I won't mind, and then, mother looked down on the head with a stiff movement like a doll, the next moment, she let out an improper scream that echoed through the mansion. Dot. My. Father. Welcome back. Dot dot Carla. You. Someone among the servants must have notified father. Father who only went home once every three days rushed home in panic. That father. He looked toward mother whose complexion is so bad. Even worse than me. Dot dot or not. Perhaps it's only about the same. He looked toward mother who is leaning on a chair and middle big brother who is nursing her with a pale face. Then father glared at me strongly. Middle big brother finally can glare at me with father's return here, but he stiffly averted his gaze when I smiled at him. Oldest big brother is gone now, so middle big brother will be the next head now. You're happy right? You can become the only son of our beloved mother, so it should be fine even if you rejoice more. Perhaps he is a shy person? This is a new discovery. Carla. Why? Did you do something like this? My, father, even though you are the one who raised me to be like this, foo foo. I laughed elegantly while covering my mouth with my hand just like a lady, 
but father's complexion turned dark red in fury. You, is it alright? I called out like that when I felt magic power gathering in father's hand. Dot dot what? If further is going to dispose me here, I'll kill brother first. Killing brother before father killing me first is possible you know? The half unconscious mother opened her eyes wide when I said something with such meaning. Brother's complexion also changed to ashen color splendidly. Further want to marry me to the crown prince as your pawn right? Are you going to restart from zero again after losing your pawn and heir at the same time here? Dot dot what do you want? Father's face turned utterly red from my words. He is gritting his teeth so hard they might break. Even so he spoke with a growl. For now. Can you allow me to do as I please? Don't worry. I swear that I'll properly marry the crown prince and carry out my duty as a noble lady splendidly. Where did you obtain the knowledge for that? What are you saying? Obviously it was from studying. The only good point of someone talentless like me is my diligence. After all I properly learned after I studied so hard like I'm going to die, literally. Dot dot do as you please. My. How delightful. Further loved Lester House and keeping appearance in the society. I thought that he would definitely agree. He is wearing a very heavy frown but, I wore a heartfelt smile from the bottom of my heart, thinking that it will give father solace. Now then, I want to take a bath, someone. After I said that and looked around, the pale looking servants simultaneously stepped back. Now there isn't any servant who acted rebelliously but, how rude of them. Dot dot how can they look at me like looking at a bloodthirsty killer? They should be able to make a small joke at least, my lady Carla. I'll prepare the bath for you. Then one old butler stepped forward from among them. If I remember right. Dot dot he is the steward Joseph I think. I remember him. Among the servants, he was the only one who ever urged me to return to my room and eat. Joseph who doesn't have long to live must be trying to take the place of the other servants as a sacrifice, but with how pale he looked, even his short remaining life will decrease even further. But. It's fine, because I think I'll be the one to die earlier than him anyway. Show me the way, Joseph. Also I don't care about their background, just gather some usable servants for me. Train them well beforehand okay? Dot dot very well. I followed behind Joseph and left that place while the gazes of everyone who is trembling in fear and father who kept standing still stabbed my back. I need to become stronger. If father, a rank 5 sorcerer seriously think to remove me, I'll die for real. Dying is my wish but... I can't die without killing father first. I'll kill my family, the servants, and everyone involved with Lester House, especially father. I need to have him die in the middle of despair from seeing his very important Lester House vanishing and gone. I'll die. There is no changing that. But, those who toyed with my life, my beloved family, and this Gladale kingdom that approved it, I'll have them accompany me in death. A A dot dot I can't wait. I wonder how many people I can kill before I die. If possible I want to slaughter the whole country including all the people in it but, what should I do so I can do that I wonder. But dot dot if possible, I don't want to die by anyone's hand. Especially by some disgusting fellow who tried to kill me in the name of justice or whatever. I absolutely don't want to be killed by someone like that. That's why as I lie down on my tidy bed that is giving off the smell of death, I made a wish to the star praying so that my prince will appear. I wish, that one day, someone lovely will kill me, believing that someone will surely stop the insane me. Dot. Three years after that dot dot I carried out the minimum amount of responsibility as noble lady while continuing to dive into the large-scale dungeon possessed by the royal family in Leicester territory. I can't dive until deep floor because I can't party with anyone. Even so my way of using sorcery has improved remarkably. It will be a bit easier if I can become rank 4. But, it's difficult with my 8 years old body even though it has grown from magic power. I'm diving into dungeon partly because I want to meet the dungeon spirit that is said to be able to grant a wish at the lowest floor. Perhaps the spirit can even change my fate. I had also met this country's crown prince, my fiancé. But he was a really cute person. To think that boy whose head is filled with flower field like that will be the next king. It's like playing house. Compared to someone like that, the princess who has the same age like me is still going to be better as the king. Even so, the chance of being able to dirty such cute prince terribly in the future gave me an incentive to keep living from here on too, just for a bit. Even so, he isn't my prince, because someone like him won't be able to stop me no matter what. One day for sure, the prince only for me that I wish to the star will surely appear. At that time, with the burning capital as the stage, we will kill each other. Surely my prince will appear. Surely. And then dot dot at the adventurer guild that I visited in a whim, I encountered my destined one. Dot. Hey, how about I show you around inside the dungeon? Heroine Survival Volume 2 Chapter 21 Extra Story 2 The Teacher and the Surly Disciple I wonder how much time has passed since I, a dark elf drifted to this country. I'm being called as an evil race by the mankind, so various things happened before I settled down here. 
But now I'm thinking that even all those things were good things. There is a child who is calling even someone like me as master. When I was with the evil race army, I only thought of myself and couldn't do anything for the youngsters there, but I managed to get some pupils after coming to this country. Well, I don't want to call one of them a disciple of mine though. He was a son of the leader of the troublesome guild that became troublesome and he strangely got attached to me after I taught him sorcery. There is also my health condition, so I took up residence in this forest at Baron Salus's territory, but after that, the idiot disciple suddenly showed up. At that time she was a woman who had just come of age so I think she was slightly older than even the guild leader's son. At first I was wary with her. Even though I had only just settled down in the forest, how did she manage to learn of my location? Sooner or later I was planning to inform a respectable merchant who I got acquainted with from the assassin guild's work, but at that time it was only the guild leader who knew of where I am. That woman said this with a smug face while I was wary like that. You're a sorcerer from the evil race right? I know all about you. You're going to help the heroine some dozen of years from now and teach her magic so teach me too, dot dot I can't describe how did I feel at that time, did she never consider me killing her from exposing my identity as evil race, she was too idiotic that I pitied her from just how idiotic she was that I unthinkingly accepted her as disciple, to be honest, I couldn't understand anything about the old home game and heroine things that she talked about but, she was really motivated dot dot though it was all just wasted efforts, she was bad at studying, even though at first she demanded me to teach her light magic, she only learned things that she was good at, thinking that she was going to die if I let her go out there like this, I also taught her short sword skill but, it took me 5 years to make her learn the skill to some degree, she complained saying that she wanted to have adventure a day be while she was still a teenage but, I didn't give a damn, after that she left to be an adventurer, and yet she would return when she got difficulty with money, and she continuously took the potions I made without permission, well, I wouldn't mind if it was just several potions but, when I pointed that she was still single no matter how much time passed, that idiot disciple said some incomprehensible excuse like I'm a mojo after all. TN, mojo equals unpopular woman. She was able to create that kind of thing with just some passing knowledge, so she should be able to achieve great success as a sorcerer if only she put serious effort, or even if she couldn't she should at least be able to become a fully fledged researcher though. But, that fellow was gone because of that passion of hers. In exchange she sent that child to my place. Dot. Master, I finished drawing water. Next is chopping wood. We're going to train after the meal, so finish it in one hour, surly disciple. Arya. She is a pitiful kid. Not only that idiot disciple twisted her, she even tried taking over her body and sent her destiny into disarray in the end. Dot dot well, the child has come to term with it so easily, to a degree that is unthinkable for a child though. The person herself isn't thinking of the hardship as hardship at all. At first I thought that she was influenced from seeing the memory of that idiot disciple but, that's not the case. I think originally she would become a strong and serious child, while her heart still remained pure. But she came to term about the adult memory as knowledge and she abandoned the pure child aspect of herself. That child is strong with her objective of becoming strong. Children normally will have their attention distracted toward new matters because of their ignorance while learning things bit by bit, but that child is taking the initiative to step on a thorny path without giving attention to any other things. That aspect differed from that idiot disciple who somewhere in her heart underestimated the matter of living despite having the same knowledge. Really dot dot she was an idiot disciple. In that regard, Arya is serious to an excessive degree, but she is lacking in a lot of things thanks to her skipping over her cultivation of aesthetic sensibility. When I noticed I also started correcting her deficiency but, that child is someone who can simply do most things after being told so the adults around her often forgot to treat her like a kid. A normal child can't possibly do something much like filling a water jug fully with daily life magic. Even wood chopping will exhaust a normal child completely midway. I too at first told her to do various things with the assumption that she wouldn't be able to do it, and yet she completed all of them without letting out a single complaint. Well, that's alright. It's a good thing after all, but this child conversely can't do normal things. In regard to food, she understands completely what her body required in order to grow, and she eats properly in accordance to that. It's a good thing, but she doesn't have any fixation with food ingredients. I'm making homemade alcohol for medicinal herb in my house but, I almost screamed when she showed to me the alcohol jug was crammed full a lot of carnivorous bees, claiming that it's good for my body. But well, there are problems but she has gotten better recently. At the beginning, even though she was the one who came here asking to be a disciple, her wariness toward me was like a wounded stray cat. I made her use the idiot disciple's room as it was but, I never that she would always sleep at the corner of room wrapped in blanket even though there is a normal bed there. Furthermore, 
I could sense her waking up just from me passing in front of the room. Just how bad the environment she was living in until now. Dot dot. Now then, let's eat the creative cuisine of the surly disciple again today. Dot. Then, we're going to train inside the forest today. Follow me surly disciple. Dot dot. Roger. Arya's reply came slightly slower when I talked about going into the forest. I never told her about it but... The child has noticed that my body is unfit. As one's magic power grow bigger and they become able to use elemental sorcery, magic stone based on the element will form in the heart. Animal that has magic stone in their body is generally called monster. The bigger the magic stone, the bigger the monster's body will become. Monster also instinctually know that they will become stronger by strengthening their magic stone. So they ended up seeking human with magic power to become their prey. Even if monster doesn't has element, they can obtain great magic power by fattening their magic stone and body simultaneously. But such monster terrification never happened to human. So human can't obtain more magic power past a certain degree if their magic stone has no element. Human's magic power is increased by obtaining elemental magic stone. That's why human is thinking that obtaining a lot of elements is a proof of excellence. But the magic stone will swell up each time the magic stone increase its elements which cause a pressure to the heart. It's fine if a human has one or two elements. Even three won't pose a problem if the owner isn't a warrior type. But, having more than four elements will cause the owner to be unable to do any strenuous activity. And if a magic stone with four elements is formed during childhood, some might die just from that. If someone do a stupid thing like getting all elements, they will surely have a short life where they are constantly in pain. Even I who has four elements ended up in this state where I can't fight for long thanks to continuously fighting for dozens of years in the battlefield. What's with that face? I'm alright so look sharp. Yes, I won't have any problem if it's just hunting low ranked monster inside a forest. When Arya came here, she already had the strength to defeat a rank 2 monster by herself. She compensated for her small body and low status with intelligence and sorcery. She also fought in a way that wasn't like a child using her childlike body. She is strong for a kid but, as expected there is a limit to it. It seemed Arya managed to get some proper meal in the place of that princess who she considered as the same kind. Even so she is thin compared to children her age. Her increased magic particles acted as nutrient in the place of the nutrition she lacked until now to make her grow rapidly. Even so she was still as light as the slum children. Perhaps because I told her to always use meat when cooking, her thinness has improved considerably since coming here. Right now I'm only making her to do nothing but the basic, but her body should grow even more when her skill in sorcery and close quarter combat leveled up. The reason why human can grow rapidly when their magic power increased during childhood is still not understood but, perhaps it's the same reason why a monster is enlarged when their magic stone swelled up. Animal that turned to monster will have long lifespan. So human with high magic power being able to retain their youthful look might be because the body of human who obtained magic power turned to something close to an elf like me. Arya is saying that her body is getting heavier from getting some meat in her body and her center of gravity changing. I think that's most likely because her secondary sex characteristic is starting to grow from her body obtaining sufficient nutrient other than just magic particles. For these several months, her shoulders and waist has gotten much more rounder. I'm a dark elf so I don't understand in detail how much the body of human race should grow but, isn't that child growing too quickly? It's said that normally a human child can grow from magic power to have an appearance of three years older at most. But, just like how there can be difference in growth between different children but, she looked like a boy when she first came here, but I think that she might look completely like a girl when she have her next growth spurt. Dot. I'm a bit uneasy now. I only ever had raised my young little sister. And even that little sister was entrusted to my clan until now. So I don't know the right way to raise a girl who is growing mature. In this first place, this child has skipped over learning a lot of things that a mother would usually teach her daughter, so she has no girl common sense. It seems she has the knowledge that came from the experience of that idiot disciple, but I don't think she can comprehend it fully, and I also can't imagine that idiot disciple had gone through a decent period as a girl. What should I do so that this girl can have the feeling of shame of the average people? Perhaps after she has her next growth spurt. The people around her will look at her as a young woman even though she is 8 year old in the inside. Even though her way of thinking is far from a normal year old and instead like a bloodthirsty veteran mercenary, her heart to feel shame is no different than a toddler. Furthermore, this child, she is really pretty in the standard of human right? If that kind of girl carelessly exposed her arms and legs, the brats who are still in the cusp of manhood will easily go off track of their life path won't they? Physically, I can't just dismiss this concern just because she is still a kid. This child has something that draws everyone's eye to her. But well, perhaps it's a good thing in a sense. After all if she grew up innocently like she originally was, 
She might cause the young nobles to get crazy in the head with her appearance. I already became like a doting parent toward her even though I have only met her for several months. It made me laugh. Dot. Master. Oops. I got distracted there. Arya's whispering voice dragged me back into reality. Arya who is in front of me used hand signals that meant front, enemy, and caution to call my attention. These hand signals are used by adventurer scouts. Due to its convenience, not only the adventurer guild, even mercenary guild, thief guild, and assassin guild are also using it. The adventurer who taught Arya about it only taught her the simple signs, but I have been teaching her the signs for more practical battle. Well, that means I'm the superior teacher here compared to that adventurer. Surly disciple, go, Roger. Arya reacted to my voice and soundlessly leapt forward. The opponents are two demon wolves. Perhaps they are parent and child or mates. Anyway, there isn't any presence of their children that I can sense within my detection range. Most likely, they are individuals that strayed from their pack to make child. Demon Wolf is a wolf that turned into monster from magic particle, so they are two sizes bigger than normal wolf. They got bigger in proportion to their strength and brutality, but their mode of life itself isn't any different from when they were animal. They are rank 2 monster. Growl. One of the demon wolf let out a growl. It might heard the faint sound of grass being stepped on. Arya threw her hidden weapon in that instant. The demon wolf growled and dodged, but the hidden weapon changed its trajectory and slashed the demon wolf's leg. Gah. The other demon wolf noticed that they are under attack and immediately assaulted Arya. Feel. Jain. The demon wolf's physical ability is superior than Arya. But, the demon wolf that leapt as fast as an arrow felt the sensation of its eyes being touched by Arya's magic and it faltered for a moment. Arya put her hand on it as though to pinch its nose as she rolled on its back to dodge while putting string around its neck. From there Arya strangled its neck while riding on its back and her hand stabbed the demon wolf's neck with her black knife. Pain. Jayan. The first demon wolf that was about to leap from the side got hit by pain. Arya leapt at the frozen demon wolf and swung her knife in a large arc. Thrust. The battle technique of short sword that Aryan unleashed lopped off the demon wolf's head. Not even a minute has passed since she initiated the fight. It was a rational ambush and annihilation. Arya has fought a powerful enemy despite still a kid. The bloodshed that she had survived is different. Dot dot how is it? Well, good job. If there is anything to correct, at best it's only about the way you use feel. I'll teach you are the spot that you can aim with that magic. Dog species's nose is more sensitive than their eyes. You should study about each monster's trait. Got it. Arya nodded with a composure that is unbelievable coming from a kid who has just fought two monsters. I drew back the magic power that I was pulling in my hand back to my body. Guess there wasn't even any need for that. The hidden weapon and string that Arya used are something that I had in my house and told her to use after hearing about her ability. The string was made from a spider monster but its conduciveness for magic power isn't really good. It will be better if I procure a specially made string for her. It will also serve as training if I made Arya hunt for the material. Really? Her performance was truly too excellent for a kid. Arya has no strength. Her reach is also short. Even just a single blow might kill her. Even her only strong point. Her speed is only at the level that just barely matched an adult. Even so she compensated for those with intellect and sorcery and her guts that enabled her to suppress her emotion to defeat a superior enemy. If it's Arya then she will be able to do it. Not just sorcery, I'm also hammering bit by bit into her the technique of war demon that I had tempered in the battlefield for more than a hundred years. Right now she is still unable to make the technique her own but, when Arya's competency reached rank 3, she should become able to fight even me if it's just in close quarter combat. I was unable to master martial art thanks to the magic stone in my heart, but, if Arya can keep growing at this rate, she should be able to realize the ideal in my mind. The genuine war demon who possessed both high level sorcery and martial art and then, she might even be able to finally combine light and darkness that I was incapable to achieve. Dot dot surly disciple. What? I won't let you bring back the wolf's meat even if you stare that hard at them. Dot dot got it. Dot. Even Arya who was like a stray cat and didn't feel like a kid at all has gotten really used with a life here. This feeling of achievement is the same like when you have finally managed to tame a wild animal by feeding it. Even though at first she never gotten into a deep sleep, recently it seems she has finally managed to feel assurance. She became able to sleep soundly when I am there. I approached the sleeping Arya and sat down beside the bed. She is a kid who isn't like a kid. Even so as expected she is a kid in the end. Actually she is still in an age where she should be pampered by parents. But Arya was living by pushing down that loneliness to the bottom of her heart and put a lid on it using knowledge. I heard that the princess who is the same kind with Arya is also like that. The noble society really is a harsh world for children. I gently caressed the sleeping Arya's hair. Then Arya clung on my hand that is caressing her hair although she is still not awake. Dot. 
I can't hope to have children, but dot dot perhaps this is what a mother who has daughter feel. I'm feeling apologetic to Arya's actual mother for feeling like this but dot dot can she forgive me at least just for now? Rest well dot dot I won't let anyone hurt you while you are here. 